<laughs> Microphone check one 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 two. See, there we go. Oh shit, what's cracking? What's up, man? Chilling, man. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Last minute pee run downstairs got me got me uh, winded. Shit turned me on. Hearing you jiggle downstairs, <laughs> baby. Man, where do we start with your story, man? Shit, man. Um, Keep it close like this. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's that one, two, one, two. Pull it under. It's a lot easier. Hi. There you go. <laughs> man, my story's a trip, man. Um, I I really think it's 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 super unique because like a lot of people think I'm Mexican, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. I grew up in West Dallas, grew, you know, in an all Mexican neighborhood, and all my friends were essays, mm-hmm. and it totally like sculpted my youth and to where I was gonna go yeah. in life. You Where know? in West Dallas? Um, Singleton and Bernal. Singleton. Ledbetter, oh, Ledbetter shit. twelve, yeah, seven five two one two. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's the hood hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best elotes and hamburgers and tacos in town, man. <laughs> Pepe, shout out, what's up? Like those dudes get down. Yeah. So like, but I didn't know I was different back then. Like we grew up around model, building model cars. Like low riders were like a regular thing in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You used to have to go down and walk to the corner store to get low rider magazine. Yeah. And like that was like that was like Christmas every month, you know. And like that's the shit that kind of like put me in the direction I was going. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, my homie Oscar and Albert, growing up with those guys, those were my neighbors. And, like, their uncle had, like, Volkswagen trikes and, like, you know, all this, like, bikes and shit. And, like, I was like, fuck, man, like, that's cool. And my dad was a jet engine mechanic. So he'd always, like, bring home, like, bearings or, like, little bullshit. Like, I had to build my own bicycle and model cars. And so that's kind of set up, like, the route that I was going to take in life, you know? And I started building lowrider bikes and got in lowrider cars. I had an 85 Regal in high school, and, like, that was, like, yeah. on switches, you know? That's, that's what year? Like, a G-Body one? Oh, yeah, 85, yeah, yeah. 85 G-Body dude, that's Regal. My, that's my shit right there. Dude, the door never closed all the way, so if you, like, three-wheeled <laughs> fucked up or it came down, it would open, and, like, your chick had to grab you and shit. Yeah. So it was, like, hood shit since the beginning, but we've worked, we've gotten past doors opening on us. So... Like that was like my upbringing. Like low riders, low riders was the foundation that went into everything else. Mm-hmm. And when I was going through high school, we were working on our cars. Yeah, you know, I didn't really get into bikes and shit yet <clears throat> until, I mean, we're kind of similar in age. I'm about to be 35. Yeah. And then Monster Garage came out, or a motorcycle mania came out. You know, when I was yeah. sophomore, freshman, whatever in high school, right? And I was like, fuck, man, like, you can make money working on motorcycles. Thought I was never even, like, mm. I never even thought of that shit. And, like, I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to play sports. I, the music I listened to, everybody hated. So, like, <laughs> I, every, like, my whole life was, like, I was like, fuck, man, I'm going to do this shit, you know? And so I started riding bikes and, like, got into it. And I was turning 18. I remember graduating high school. And uh, a close friend of mine, my buddy Oscar and Alberts, their, their cousin Mike, he passed away in, in a dirt bike accident, right? Yeah. And <clears throat> go to his wake. It's fucked up. I'm, I'm 18 years old. Just got out of high school. I was working a summer job and shit. And go back to the house after the, after, the, after the memorial, whatever. And I had a ZX-10 at the time. And I was like, because I always loved street bikes. Street bikes are still yeah. like my shit. Just because they were, me and, me and my buddy Jimmy, his brother Rudy, like, he had a badass ZX-12, was, like, slammed, slam, polished out. wheels, stretched out, but, like, stock paint job, but, like, super clean. Like, yeah. his style really influenced a lot of my style, you know, at that age. And so, like, and I was like, man, I'm going to go cruise my bike around. Fuck, you're 18. You got, you know, you got a brand new bike. You got wheels and shit. You were you riding around on a bike at 18? Oh, yeah. Fuck, fuck yeah. yeah. I learned how to ride, you know, when I was, like, six, six, 16, 17, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, my buddies, like. His dad had a Sportster, and then after watching that shit and getting an influence, like, they wanted to build a chopper. Because, I mean, 05, like, not even, 04, 03, 02, fuck, man, there was, like, all kinds of county customs and county choppers, like yeah. like how tattoo shops are now, you know? Like, yeah. that shit went through with the bike phase. So, like, we're like, fuck, man, we could get the Jammer catalog. Back then, Jammer was still around. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I mean, drag, I didn't know about drag because drag sells to dealers only, but the fucking um, JP... Cycles, JP and cycles. what was it? Us? Uh, what was it? Uh, Custom, Custom Chrome. Chrome. Custom yeah. Chrome. And the V Twin used to, because V Twin had all like, the mm-hmm. old cool parts. 
And so, like, we built the sports, got a Paco frame, and, like, built the sports chopper, and, like, that kind of, like, you know, got my blood flowing into doing this shit. Well, <clears throat> I went out for a ride, man, and got smoked. Like, remember we used to meet up at Tall Cabana and shit off Lower Greenville back yep, in the day? Yep. Okay, that's where I was going to go. So I'm going down Ross, and, you know, when you're, when you're like, getting into bikes, like, it's all about the bikes. Because, like, you used to people like, oh, man, you'll get pussy now. You're riding fucking motorcycles and this. And, like, for me, like, that bike was, like, part of me. It was my family. It was my, it was my identity. Yeah. It was something that I had that was mine that no one else could fuck with. You're not riding, you're not riding it. You're not working on it. It's my shit. And, like, being a Pakistani kid growing up in a Mexican neighborhood and then moving to, like, Irving in high school, like, my identity was fucked up. Yeah. You know, I didn't know if I was supposed to be a Muslim or supposed to go to a Catholic church and stand up in 15s or, like, how to you know, drive my Nova because, you know, I was, I was into all this shit. Yeah. But it was never – you never really belonged to anything or fit in anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, at that time of your life, though, you're, you're not really supposed to fit into anything. See, you're just supposed to be a sponge and absorb all these different influences. I'm first generation here. Yeah. You know, my parents from Pakistan, and, like, I grew up in, in the hood, and, like, no one, no one, like, no one really influenced my shit except for my neighbors. Because, like, my dad wasn't giving me Guns N' Roses records, or my mom wasn't like, yeah. hey, this is, like, the movies we went to in high school. Like, no, my mom was living in Pakistan fucking washing clothes over a cliff and shit. Like, you know, this shit, like, <laughs> they didn't give a fuck about that. They were stoked yeah. to be here, and, like, that's the American dream. And I'm so, like, so stoked that they did it, you know? Because yeah. it gave me a fucking opportunity to, like, I live my dreams, man. And that's not a lot of shit people can say. Like, fuck yeah, there's been a shitload of mistakes. Yeah. No regrets. No regrets on a lot of shit because we fuck Rag up. Regrets. Regrets. Yeah. K, like my buddy Williams got tattooed on him. K N O. No regrets. Yeah. And uh, it's my favorite tattoo he has. But like, but there was there was so much shit. But I was like, fuck, it suck, you know. So, fuck, where are we going with this? Well, shit? I mean, we what get, you were saying though, like at at that time, the Monster Garage, uh, yeah. just eat, like a lot of the cultures were starting to get publicized on TV. Right. right, the the alternate. I, th- I really feel like I, I feel like everybody's scared to say this, but Fast and the Furious, that first one, when did that come out later? Oh one, no shit. Oh one, one. damn R. P. That first, Walker. that first Fast and the Furious, man, it, it kind of it ex- it was the first thing. Like I grew up in a household where we worked on muscle cars and all that shit. It okay. never it never appealed to me. Right, it was old man shit. Right, the muscle cars, the muscle cars. All right, right? Don't, I love them now. I would love to have one. Right. But, Coming out of high school, being influ- influenced by all the rap music I grew up around and all the different cultures I grew around, a '69 Camaro was not in my you can't fucking trunk budget. Bang on that shit, yeah, you can't so, swing on this. So you I mean, it was just a Camaro, bro. All doing? of a sudden, you know, Fast and Furious comes out, and you could be a cool dude in a car in a cheap ass car, a fucking eighteen hundred dollar Integra. You know, fuck it, go yeah. to Pet Boys, get all the decals. And so oh, you're rolling, homie. For me, it it showed me it made the car culture cool to me because it be, it, it showed me a cheaper an way to get in, you an know? opportunity yeah. to kind of express it without because yeah because like muscle car shows the good guys and all that shit yeah ninety thousand dollar Camaro even when we were fifteen there yeah. was still twenty grand you know twenty grand now ain't shit but twenty grand then was like. Fuck, I'm never yeah. going to be this guy, yeah, you save know? Save up for the rest of your life to finally start living at 30? Fuck. <laughs> it's a house fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, fuck, that one was all you wrecked twice by now, you know? Exactly. So, yeah, there was that thing that, like, Fast and the Furious, it showed a lot, uh, I guess, my generation that you can get into cars, too, and there's other options rather than having some fucking top fuel dragster or some muscle car or even, like... At the time, you know, WS6 Trans Ams were, were hot. Dude, there was a lot of different Regal cars. Road. Were you going to the drag yeah. races on Regal? That was my life, man. Oh, man. Dude. If, if I didn't go. That brings back, man. I'm like reminiscing now. Yeah, going know? to Regal Row and Newberry and all these fucking street what? racing pl- places we one, used to go to. You go to you go to Regal, then you go to Farmer's Branch, right? And then That was, was Newberry. Okay. And then. Man, that one was always a trip because the Farmer's Branch cops couldn't really fuck with you if you went yeah. that way. And the Dallas cops, they're too busy fucking at the Jack Shack down the street. There was uh, there was some strategic shit going on oh, with the yeah. street racing back in the day. But 
you know, after the Fast and Furious, like the, it, it Did changed. Did your car ever not start when the cops came? Uh, no, I was uh, <laughs> I was good on that. <laughs> Dude, we were in a 79 Cutlass one time, me and my homie Jimmy, and like, I don't even know why the fuck we're out there in this hoopty, right? We're, we, we're from you go now. watch it. You go hang out. We were running this thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I don't know if we like rigged up like a shot of nitrous or some shit, yeah. to, but for some reason we're fucking around, right? And I remember the, we like we parked, we just ran, and like the hoods all smoking and shit, and like the lights come up, and you know when lights come up, like hoody hoo, master yeah. shit, everybody go, so everybody's like splitting, and I'm sitting there like, eh, eh, trying to start this motherfucker and nothing, and my boy goes, hey man, chill, 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 so I just stop and just kind of chill. And that cop just, like, drove right past us like it was a broke-down car. I was like, shit, man, incognito, don't even matter. <laughs> Made it that day. Well, I think back in the day, man, like, those cops would just come to break it up, if anything. Yeah. And then they'd, like, look for, like, that one. I don't know. It, it was one of those deals, like, growing up. There wasn't a lot of wrecks back. I mean, I'm uh, sure that shit happened. But I mean, uh, every week there would, there there would be shit. Like, there was not like people dude, were getting killed. Yeah, it wasn't like going to fucking, like, I live off Lake June and Jim Miller now in the Grove, you know, which is, yeah. an, I'm an idiot, but it's, I love living there. Because my neighbor in the alley, fucking, you know, whatever. But there's there wasn't dudes doing donuts and fucking Chevy Silverados in the middle of the fucking drag strip, yeah, you know, yeah. back then. That shit that's going on right now, that whole, like, street takeover shit where they do donuts in, like, the intersections. I'm not saying. I'm not against it. I'm not I'm against not it because, it. you know, what we were doing back then, if we were knew, our age then, we would think that what we were doing was, was stupid. Tight. We'd have those fucking edge of haircuts and shit. And I, all, yeah. <laughs> the cut cut? Yeah. The fucking Edgar cut? Yeah. I don't know, man. Hey, like, shout out to my homies at the O'Reilly's. All my Edgar's. They hooked me up with my fucking ignition control unit. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I came through. But no, that, uh, like I said, that, that... That movie, it, it exposed that I could get into the car and, and racing scene in some kind of way. When did Gone in 60 Seconds come out? Around the same time. Because that movie was more of an impact on me than Fast and Furious was. Yeah. Because I got the, the Super was cool, but I didn't know shit about the Supras. I didn't, I didn't fuck that. But when Eleanor came out and that, like, that fucked me up. Because yeah. Steve, I, I researched that shit. Cause Steve Sanford designed that car, and Steve Sanford's a, a black dude, you know? And mm. I was like, holy shit, this dude's on this level. And I didn't know who the fuck Steve Sanford was. Yeah. And then I found out who's built that car. And back then, this was before overhauling and all that. Like, it's a crazy fucking circle on how that yeah. worked. And, like, that, like, because the detail, and that was a movie car. Yeah. You know, because even though Fast and Furious cars, you can watch the movies. And, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't really watch till later. But yeah. I watched, you know, Go Baby Go and, like, the fucking, the yeah. nitrous and all that shit. Like, I was, I was, my, I was more into that one. But Boulevard Nights before any of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, was like. That was major to me. Even American Me, the El Camino, when that guy yeah. was cruising, like that car on the Kragers, like that 70s era has always stuck with me. So, but like when you're 15 and 16, you don't really pay attention to it until later. But like, yeah. but I got away, like out of low riding, not out of low riding. I was just, what I was just growing as a person then. As, as where your taste take you, you know? Like, you don't fucking eat spaghetti your whole life if you're a chef. Yeah. You taste spaghetti, all right, this is good. All right, let me try the steak. But then you always find yourself at what, because that's, sometimes I think people talk shit about guys that go out of their element to create something else. Yeah. You know? And it's looked down upon in a lot of terms, which, fuck that, man. People like, that look down on that stuff are the people that are, uh, they're, they're, they've already plateaued. They've already, they're complacent peaked, in right? where they're at. You know, the people, you know, all creativity comes from influence. So the more influences you add to your, your, your who you are, right? It change like that's how we've seen. You know, we were talking before these these mics turned on about how these scenes in the motorcycle world have evolved and came. Yeah. Technically, you know, people get super fucking uh, fact checking on us real quick on these things, but at the same time. We can kind of remember when scenes in the motorcycle world started, like styles of bikes. Oh, absolutely, built. You know absolutely. What I'm saying? Look, and it's, it, I mean, it's looking back now, we're old and we can say that shit, you know. And it's like, fuck, well, I've been in the game. I'm 34 years old. I started fucking sweeping shops when I was like 14 years old, but I started in a Harley dealer when I was 19. Yeah, you know. So it's like you go from like they when I, I wanted to work on bikes, I went to the Harley dealer in Grand Prairie when it was. You know, when it was a small shop, and I was like, hey, man, they had, like, a bike night or some shit. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, hey, what do I do? I want to work on bikes and shit. And they were like, oh, you got to go to this school in Arizona. And I was like, fucking school, man, you <laughs> yeah. know? But, but this was outlaw shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 fire shit, man. We're just, you know, because 
you read Easy Rider, you know, and they make it seem like, oh, it's just you and the boys hanging out drinking beer, and next thing you know, oh, there's this bitch in fucking Chopper. No, yeah. the shit takes a lot of fucking work, man. Yeah. A lot of fucking work. And the nicer the shit is, the harder you got to work. And then you, you always got to push yourself to elevate to do better shit. Uh, but what I was saying, when... Before I went to MMI, like, I got smoked on the way to that Taco Cabana. Yeah. You know, I broke my back, separated my spine from my fucking skull and shit. Like, there's x-rays. Like, I looked down the other day because the anniversary just came up, and it, like, fucked me up. It's been 15, 16 years. I was like, fuck, man. Like, there's a reason shit happens, and you're here. And, like, I get all spiritual sometimes when I'm like, oh, you're supposed to. But fuck all that. Yeah. But that wreck had a learning how to walk in at 18 and, like, I got a plate in my fucking neck, broken teeth, but it's like, it's almost like, like your merit badge. Like, fuck yeah. man. Like I'm going to keep doing this shit. And that's stupid. A lot of it's hard headed and stubborn, but that's what makes us who the fuck we are. Yeah. That's why I took a fucking 35 year old motorcycle to Sturgis this year because why do it on a new one? You know? <laughs> and it made it like I built a motor two weeks before I went, I blew it up. And then, but I wanted to go to a Sturgis on my FXR, and I wanted to take the stupid picture in front of the sign and at Yellowstone and be a <laughs> tourist. And I was like, my buddy Derek went with me, and he's got a bitch in little road glide. He put an RP fairing on his shit, and it's nice. And, like, he went with me, and I was like, fuck, dude. Like, it was my first time going to Sturgis, and I was like, man, every night it's bike night here. You know, and it's like yeah, it's trashier night. the longer it goes on. And it was, it was like heaven for a bit. But I was like, damn, I, I wish, like, on Sunday some lowriders cruise down Main Street and shit. But it wasn't going to happen, you know? It's a different vibe up there, man. But, you know, when you broke your back, like, how was, like, what, what was the main thing going through your head that said – I'm staying with bikes instead of giving it up then so early. I mean, because you were, what, 19, 18 at the time? Dude, I was 18 years old. I was 18 years old. I had to learn how to fucking walk in. And I'm like, like I was in the hospital for a month. Like, the girl I was dating, like, broke up with me on in ICU on Thanksgiving. Like, that's a <laughs> true story. Bitch. Like, no, 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 no. She had her. It took courage to do that, you know? For the longest time, I was like, what a fucking asshole. But then you learn, like, hey, man, like, that took guts to be like, I don't know. It's a piece of shit move, right? Fuck it's, that motherfucker. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah. She could have waited. She could have just, Her like, mom was super nice to me, though. She yeah. she saw potential. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know what, but, but she, but, uh, but, you know, and then, like, my mom, like, my dad was real sick at the time. He was going through cancer and shit. Like, I didn't know he had cancer at the time. Like, he, like, fought it for a long time. But, like, my mom came up and, like, just to see your mom cry and, like, I was like, fuck, man, this ain't going to beat me. Like, like me and my yeah. family aren't real close. Me and my brother are super close. He's the shit. But, like, me and my mom and my my dad. My dad passed when I was 22. But, like, I was first generation. And I came out. I started getting sleeved out when I was, like, 17, you know? Yeah. So, like, it was just a transition. And I was just like, I, I'm not, this ain't going to beat me. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to conquer this shit. I'm going to come back. Like, I don't have a choice. Like, either you just give up and you get your fucking blue card and you park where you want to eat jelly beans for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. or you shut the fuck up, you wake up every morning, you do what you got to do, you watch your little YouTube yoga videos, you fucking stretch it out, yeah. and, like, you make the shit happen. Because, like, I'm not going to depend on anybody. I'm going to go out swinging, you know? Yeah. Like, fuck that ball four, you know? you're gonna We're hitting home runs or we're fucking striking out. So that's, that's like, my mentality on life. Like, you fucking hit it, and... But... It taught me passion about a lot of shit, too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when people meet me that I fuck with heavy, like, I can understand where it's too much because I know what it feels like to wake up in a fucking hospital bed where the guy next to you just fucking flatlined. Mm -hmm. And then you look over to the other side, and that motherfucker just flatlined. And you're sitting here drinking your potassium drink because you're about to go into surgery, and I'm looking at the ICU nurse like, hey, I'm going to make it, though, right? <laughs> you know? And she's like, shh. Yeah, because another motherfucker just died, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, that at 19 or at 18 years old taught me a lot. Because, man, like, my homies died in the streets when I was younger, gangbanging. I wasn't gangbanging. I didn't do any of that shit. I'm not hard. Those guys were. They were selling dope, stealing cars. I sold a couple radios here and there and shit, and I figured out I was good at it. <laughs> so I was like, I should probably, like, go, like, do it. I'm going to go, like, try to figure out how to make money doing this shit. I don't want to go to prison. Yeah. I wasn't built for that shit. And um, I never wanted to. Well, I was... Let me stop you real quick. You know what really changed the game for stealing radios is when they started when making the decks when it come out. Well, when they like <laughs> the whole fucking dash is a radio now. Like you can't take that out. When we put... started taking the whole trucks, <laughs> <laughs> which is fucked up. It's fucked up. I mean, I, I, it's it's not something. Hey, to that, it's part of life, man. Hey, get full coverage, homie. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's 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 the fucking 
it's the avenue that led you to where I'm at, you know? And it was just guidance. Like if not to blame who I was, I was a kid, but it was just who the fuck I was around. Like you walk like a duck, you talk like a duck, you're a fucking duck, you know, yeah. soar with the eagles or fucking just swim with the fishes. And I like to fly with the eagles, but you don't know that shit. Yeah. My, my parents were hardworking people. They didn't have time to really understand what was going on in my generation or like, hey, man, where are these fucking rims come from in your room? Well, you said uh, you're first generation, so probably like they're used to like their whole culture being what's oh, on yeah. the streets, right? Arranged where marriages from. and fucking you're out of the house yeah. by 18. You and know? so you come here and like you go outside on uh, on a neighborhood street and you're indoctrinated with so many different oh, dude. life choices, basically. My mom, my I, I respect my mom. so We disagree on a lot of shit. But it was like, man, she got married, and she was in Pakistan, and then just like my dad was already here, and her, and her, my my mom's, my my dad was friends with her dad, and then they arranged the marriage, and then she's just here, yeah. Like your whole like fuck, man. Like, like she that. didn't pick any of that shit. Yeah, and she, you know, my mom's a lunch lady, like super humble, like she's one of the greatest people, and. I, I think about that shit when mm. I go to work or when I do something like, hey, fuck, man, like, there's people, not that, you know, that they count on me. Or, like, I help my mom out and shit. Like, fuck, yeah, I'll fucking yeah. pay her electric bill, whatever I need. Like, she needs money, break her off, whatever. But my brother is a really saint of a fucking person. Yeah. He does more than I do. But the fact that she was able to do that shit, like, I don't want to fuck it up. And I don't have kids yet or any of that shit, but I put my career first before everything because, like, Everything they did to sacrifice for me being here and for me to be able to do what the fuck I yeah. want to do, like, I can't I can't take all the credit for that shit. Like, they made it to where I could do this. They made it to where I didn't have to fucking get a job at 15 and support a household of nine yeah, motherfuckers, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, I thank them so much, and it, and it humbles me to, like, to, to actually, because this is actually the first time I really even thought about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, how much, like, they did, but... But then you got to take your own shit over, too. So, like, what mm. am I going to do? I'm sitting there in a hospital bed. I was like, am I going to go to a wild tech? Because I was going to go to the Navy. Uh -huh. I was like, I got my, got my, got graduate high school and shit. And I was like, I'm going to go to the fucking Navy, fucking get a GI Bill. I didn't want to go to the other shit. I like the ocean. I want to go to Japan. And I want to, you know, the Navy, Navy guys get the best tattoos, too, you know? Yeah. So, and the recruiter was, like, cool as fuck. So I was like, I'm, I'm gonna go do this shit, and like before any of that, like, like I'm not a real uh, religious person. I'm a very spiritual person. I believe in a higher power, and like you do good comes good. Yeah. Like, universe kind of like that shit. Like it, it's been proven to me in my life that it works out that way, and you can pay attention to it or you can't. Oh, I 100 percent believe you in know that what shit. I mean? Yeah. Just, just ain't the, it's free to be fucking nice, man. I always, it costs you nothing. I don't know if I ever told this story, but basically, when I was into my street racing car days, uh, what'd you have? I had a uh, so terrible at WS six. No, 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 no. We, uh, I, I was part of a group. I know we didn't. I wish though. Pussies. We had a fucking car club called No Sympathy here in town, and it was. Was it, it no diggity the rivals? <laughs> <laughs> but we had um, we were known for having really really fast imports before all the before you could go buy a WRX and you shit had a like that. Dog? I did. I, I you had R thirty two. No no no. Was it blue? Can I finish? <laughs> That's what she said. Right. <laughs> no, I'm good. Later. <laughs> so in the early two thousands, uh, I, I got a real awesome opportunity to go work at a shop and we were the first people bringing in uh front clips from uh import cars so we okay. were bringing front clips from like uh the or actually rear clips for the mr2s because they had turbo motors back and in toyota right yeah toyotas All right. and we bring uh the sr20 uh motors and the rb26 motors from the front clips of uh skylines speaking chinese just but, fast ass fucking motors from right. Japanese cars that aren't available in American cars, and you could bring these things right over. Side dry shit, Ooh, yeah, yeah. they're stunning. So we would do all that like stuff. Tokyo Drift, but before exactly. Hell yeah, uh, it's like more like Midnight Club. Oh, oh, <laughs> that was more of a Need for Speed guy myself. Yeah. So uh, I used to hang out in this group, and uh, we'd always hang out in uh, in Grand Prairie. I forget the name of the street, uh, the the neighborhood, but it was like you know where the White or the lake is right there. What was it? Uh, what the Great Southwest, it? like Joe nah, Pool. Not Joe Pool. It's the other one, the little lake by uh, in Grand Prairie. Oh, Park. by the tollway. Yeah, that goes over four hundred eight, right? 
that goes into like the, oh, the University of Dallas or some shit. Yeah, it's right by that. What is that fucking lake called? I can't remember. I know there's 50 cent toll to go, and I never yeah, made it. I never have either. <laughs> Let's cover so my there's, plate a, up, go around the there's a neighborhood when you cross that bridge into Grand Prairie just to the right of that, and we used to hang out over there's there. A, there's a good fried chicken plate. I think Lisa's chicken's over there or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so one night, uh, one of the homies, we'd always hang out on the street, Avenue C. We'd just hang out there every night. All of us with our cars was a couple of Because they had a bunch of corner stores and shit, right? Yeah, drive through yeah. beer stores. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. okay. So we would just hang out over there, and then one day one of our homies came through and says, hey, man, there's a uh, there's a car with some, uh, was it Ibach or e- whatever? E- Eatneys, Eatsies or some shit? Some, it's, it, Etnies, I, that's borrow, a shoe, right? We used to borrow a lot of wheels from cars back in the day, so they all sound the same. You know? So we, uh, and I don't know where, who had it, but somebody had walkie-talkies. We did a full on. A Those, full did you on. have the sprint phones? No, that's because we Nextel. had sprint phones in high school. I mean, a couple of. Us I'm like had four them. years, five, six years older than you. Five years older. Okay. Than you. That's when I knew I didn't want to be a teacher because we were sitting there like chirping each other and shit, uh-huh. and like they would get so mad, and we're like sophomores in high school, like. Put your fucking phones away. We're like, what do you mean? You can't walk and talk with your friends? No. And we, man, we all, I think I made a teacher quit almost one time because we're just making, we're just fucking asshole kids. <laughs> asshole Which kids. high school did you go to in Irving? Uh, I went to a couple. I went to Winfrey. I used to go eat lunch in Nemitz. I went to MacArthur for a while. I dropped out for a while. And I thought I was going to, like, figure my life out and be an artist and shit. And then, like, I, like, like work on cars because I think I, I look at mechanics as artists because yeah, it, yeah. it's an art form, man, to me. It's very spiritual. And, um, and then I went back to school and I graduated from – I took like six months off, went to Winfrey, got caught up in all my shit, and then went and graduated with my class. So I was like, you guys are fucking idiots. Like, I did this the right way, you know, because I yeah. – But I went to – it wasn't the right way. I went to work. I went to work, and if I were to go back, like, fuck, I would have went to college. Like, if I had kids and shit, I would totally push them to go to college just to experience it. Yeah, the experience is something you don't realize growing up. Like, uh, like I was saying to you earlier, the more exposure to the different things that you can you can be exposed to before you're 25 is really what really helps shape uh, all the things that you could become. In my opinion, for you sure, know what I'm saying? for sure. So, and like it, I said, and, and for me, like I, I was in a like my kid now is more of that YouTube kid. You hand him an iPad, and he's fucking, you yeah, know, he's they, on they, a different yeah, level. Yeah, but. When we were growing up, or at least there wasn't YouTube. There wasn't that, but there was Lowrider magazine. There was magazines, yeah. and then there was TV shows that went along with it, and occasionally a movie, right? Like the Horse magazine was like my bible for the longest yeah. time. Like I had a poster of Chopper Dave's bike, Super Freak, on my wall as a kid, and like that bike to me, like man, it like shaped, it like shaped like uh, Jesse's bike, that Rustin one. Uh, Mountain Creek Lake, that's what it was. Oh shit, so we fucking oh <laughs> yo was love you. Oh shit, he said my bad. Sup winners. Thanks, Moose. Corey, great to see you was on the pod. Corey thinks I'm such a great person. I got him fooled. I'm pretty good. I'm just playing Corey. <laughs> Ryan. Ryan. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Ryan's a kid I worked at at West Coast Choppers with, man. He was he came on as a teenager and like he's really coming on to his own. Like For the, real. Yeah, fuck yeah, I'm proud of that kid, you know? Um, there's my brother. Shit, what's up, man? What's up, Austin? Hell yeah. But yeah, Juan that's Harlow. A, that's my buddy from the lodge. Shout out to Wax at 80, man. FLT. <laughs> I, I was wanting to be in a gang, but I wasn't tough enough. So I went and joined the Odd Fellows Lodge where we could help people and like give money back to the community. And it's been way better for me. For real. Yeah, fuck yeah. Cause like, is it kind of, is Odd Fellows kind of like the whole. Uh, it's kind of like Mason shit, but it, it's like way cooler because we're all tattooed and we all ride motorcycles for the most part. Yeah. But it brings, a, a, not all of us, but it brings. A, Oliver and Aaron Finnan like got me into that shit, and uh, it's Oliver's fault I ever got a job at West Coast Shoppers. It is. Yeah, you want to hear this story? Yeah, how do you? This is good. So Oliver Pecker, right? Yeah, my buddy Oliver. I love that motherfucker. So, so we're Fourth um, of July. Fuck, I don't even know what year. All, all, after like high school, everything kind of runs together unless yeah. someone gets pregnant or dies. So <laughs> that's kind of how I base time on. But no one got pregnant. And there was a member show class magazine had a release party at a bar in Austin. I don't, I don't know if that bar is there anymore. I can't remember the name. Little Darlin no, that was, this was before little Darlin. You know? it, was, it was on Weberville. Um, I mean, it's like, a, it's, a, it's a metal bar. Somebody will chime in on that shit. Hey, what's up, Joel? How's my dogs chilling? Um, I'm my roommate. He's cool as fuck. But, um, 
I can't remember the name of the bar. But anyway, they were show class was having like a magazine release party, right? And it was for July weekend. And Oliver's like, hey, we're going to ride down there. Do you want to go? Whatever. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'll go down there. Those guys go down there for, first. I worked a half day or whatever. Ride down there. Um, my buddy Luke, I was in a car club called Them for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And uh, they're them, still the, the one that does the invasion. They did the show? invasion, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still cracking. There's a bunch of good guys in that club still. Um, I just, I'm not really into that. That's not really my shit anymore. Car yeah. clubs are car clubs. I'm more of a bike guy, but clubs like that, it's a time and place, and certain type of people are into that shit. Yeah. Uh, it's not really for me anymore. It was at the time. So, well, my buddy Luke, who worked at Austin Speed Shop. He was a damn member from California at the time, and then me and him were friends. So, Luke is Luke the one that used to do all the metal fab yeah, work Luke that, that worked with uh, with Pat with Pat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Luke, royalty. If anybody ever sees Luke Turchio, they should stop. Is it Lost Luke on uh, Los Instagram? Luke. Yeah, Lost, yeah, Lost Luke. Lost, like they should, that dude's fucking raw, dude. Dude, they should, I, I've painted tins from this guy. Perfection. I was like, wow, like blew my fucking mind when when, when Perfection. the when I got the tins from this dude, the rear fender, just everything. I was like, I'm s I don't even want to paint these motherfuckers. They're yeah, so nice. For sure. Re- hands down one of the nicest shit I've ever seen. Uh Luke's uh Luke should be his he should be on Mount Rushmore of fucking of builders, man. He's really good. I go down there to his to his magazine release party. I see Luke. He's sitting with Pat and this dude Dan's with him, Daniel Heeman. And um Start bullshitting, hanging out, drinking the shit, and uh, stage numbers with Dan because he's working at the shop now. Pat and Luke, they're about to leave, to go to New Orleans to do Royal T. So, my buddy Dan, he puts me on about a month or so later. Danny calls me up. He goes, Hey, man, we're looking for a mechanic, and I'm working at Dream Machines at the time. And I was a Harley mechanic for a long time, worked at the dealership, and got burned out on that shit. And uh, my buddy Jason Quigley, one of the most solid dudes ever, yeah. will hook. Give the shirt off his back to anybody. One of the mm-hmm. best guys. He fucking, I was working for him. My buddy Dan calls me. He goes, hey, man, they're looking for a mechanic down here at West Coast. Do you want to come down and work? And I was like, fuck, man. You know, because I was working on a bunch of bikes around the area. I, still, I always did side shit and, like, build bikes on the side. But I was more of a mechanic, like a factory mechanic guy. I, my shit, I love doing transmission work. Mm-hmm. Like, five-speed, six-speed, four-speed. I love doing transmission work. And, um... But I was always like a stock drivetrain kind of guy, heavy, heavy drivetrain shit, you know, splitting cases, doing motors, shit like that. He hits me up to go work down there. He's like, do you want to come be a mechanic? We're looking for a factory mechanic. I'm like, fuck it. Why not? Yeah. You know, this is West Coast Choppers. Jesse's been my fucking idol. You know, one of the builders I... Cole is my favorite builder of all time, Cole Foster. Mm -hmm. Like, his style is my... That's it. We'll go to that story later. But so, so I'm like, fuck yeah, man. I go down there. My buddy Dan, he, he in fabrication. He built some yeah. of the nicest fucking frames. One of the he best had the, He had that that post that was fucking awesome where he was like, took a picture in like like elementary school with a West Coast chopper yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then next thing yeah. you know, he's, he like literally, like, let me, let me re say that again. He, he the took, way the way I started following him was because Jesse posted it. Yeah, and it was a picture of him in like elementary school or some shit with a West Coast chopper shirt. So here's a story about that. That's his, fucking awesome. His dude. mom Tammy, who was a fucking saint, made his pie cake for Danny's birthday when I was in Indy with him last. Um, he goes, she dresses him up in like a button down and shit to go to school. He puts the fucking shirt in his backpack, goes to picture day, right before they're about to fucking take the pictures, pulls it out and puts it on. And like, that's like seventh grade Danny, you know, like wow. that's his picture. And it was like, fuck man, like that's the shit. So like when I moved to Austin, you know, I got the job or whatever. I didn't, we all do like a one week trial when you go down there and if you fucking suck later, if you're cool, you stick around. And, um, Went down there, my, you know, met Mike Mike down there, Mike Chavez. He was a cool dude. Pat and Luke had already split. And, uh, man, fuck Dan. Dude, I can't say more good things about him. He put me up in his place. Going to Austin was, was a bitch trying to find a place to live and shit. He let me stay with him. You know, we bounced. He's the one who taught me how to weld. For real? Yeah. It, that dude, he used to work on Forces team. Like, that dude is an amazing fucking fabricator. I don't think he gets enough credit now. But that shit used to mean something to me. But for the ones that know, they know. Real motherfuckers realize real shit. Yeah. So, like, it's not up for the masses to figure out who's fucking cool. As long as we all know what the fuck's up, 
we're going to bounce it off each other, you know? Yeah, yeah. Winners hang with winners. Like, Brady ain't hanging out with fucking the guy on yeah, the goddamn Jaguars and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, fuck party, Jacksonville. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Fred Durst, what's up? No. Nah, like, I got a lot of homies in Jacksonville. So yeah. Just, it was a good Lake uh, Smith and Rogers, shout out to the Tash Shop. So, like, but, like, you know, you, you know, you kind of, like, and those guys took me in. You know, this dude Anthony from Connecticut moved down. Um, master fucking machinist. You know, Jesse took me under his wing a little bit. Like, everybody was, like, fucking flowing. Like, we had a really good vibe for a while, you know? And then, like, everything has an expiration date. So, before that, though, like, the whole resurgence of West Coast choppers here in Texas, like, because when he first moved here, he was like, the West Coast was done. It was right. just, like, the Austin Speed Shop. Right. And then, you know, that, I guess that just the desire to create again, like, what was the vibe? I mean... I don't even know what what question to ask right now, but it's like it seems like West Coast Choppers is that that doctorate degree in custom motorcycle. I feel like it set the standard for a lot of shit because you go to MMI, right? You go to right. MMI, you do all your Harley shit, but then there's so many fucking big names in our industry that has that's ran not ran through. That's the wrong word, but they they've I've been through. They've had been, a been down the school. They did a knots. stint. Yeah. So yeah. One of the things like Jesse did, man. This was like. Jesse did this to me a couple of times, and I, I, I learned to, like, feel his aura at a certain time, right? Yeah. I was, it was Christmas, and I'm like, bro, I, you know, my parents don't celebrate Christmas. So I don't ever go back home. The whole shop's empty. I'm working on my gas tank, and I'm, like, tigging the top of it in. And, like, he, he, the first time he did it, it scared the fucking shit out of me because I thought I was by myself. And the shop dog, Kane, which I love to death, is the biggest goober in the fucking world. And, of course, he sees Dad. He ain't going to do shit. But he'd come up behind you and like, you know, those fucking Bailey tables and shit, the five tables. Yeah. They'll come up behind you with a fucking hammer and just go, Long Beach welding test, motherfucker, and just slam the fucking table. And like, you'd be like, oh, God damn. You know, you, the first time it was like, fuck, you know, you fuck your shit up. And you like, ha, 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 go to the room, get a corn dog, leave or whatever. And then I was like, and then for some reason I could feel his energy the next time he did it. Because he's a powerful motherfucker, man. Yeah. You know, the guy's, the guy's doing his shit. Whatever your opinion about him is, he's a fucking leader in the industry. Like, oh, yeah. hands down, yeah. the guy set the standard for a lot of shit. But you got to look at his pedigree, through. Like, he went through, like, Boyd shit. You know, he worked at Boyd's and, like, did all that. Little John Butera, who is, like, one of the greatest builders of all time that no one even knows who Little John is. Like, you know. The dude out of Florida, right? No, no. Little John um, was in, he was working for Boyd's. He passed away already. Oh, okay, But, like, yeah. he was doing, like, IndyCar chassis, like, CNC machines. Like, the rocker, a lot of... People's opinion on that bike, whatever the fuck it is, that dude like see, like designed that bike in his garage and sold the fucking shit to Harley. You know, like it was, yeah. Like, and to a point, <laughs> it gets it gets shooken up. Mm. But I'm all fuck the factory, so you know how I feel. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know if that hurts. It's, your it, shit. Anytime you could like design something and Harley digs it, that's cool. But you know, the rocker just we rip it off. Like we always talk about later. how the rocker seat was just a couple years too late in the chopper that thing. That bike was cool because it had like it had machine parts on it. The wheels were bitching. I like that bike. I wasn't a big fan of fat bikes and shit, but I mean, it was it was cool for what it was, man. And um, but like that era, that era kind of like kind of shaped his shit, and he kind of like the guys that we all grew up, like I came up with, you know, like shaped my shit. And like this is years later now, and this is where I'm at now. But it's because I owe a lot of thanks to all those guys that said it, you know, before. Yeah. You know, Chopper Dave, my buddy Rob, the Sinners guys, you know, Cole Foster. Like, I've, I'm, i like, personal friends with these fucking guys now. And it's, like, and it, it they're just bike guys, man. Yeah. Like, it's just, you're just in the bikes together, and you just talk motorcycles. And he, it, it's not a big dick competition. Like, if, it's it's wild to talk to Dave about just, like, working on my shovel head. I'm, like, hey, man, where do you think I should set this? And then sometimes it blows my mind because I'm still a fan. I'm still a fan of the game. It's mm -hmm. like you get guys like, you know, Michael Irvin is one of my favorite NFL players. So is Deion Sanders. Yeah. You know, Ken Griffey is like my favorite baseball player, him and Jeter. But like these guys that, are, that leave the game, they're still fans of the game. And like, I feel like I'm about, I don't think I've peaked or hit my primary no. and that shit. But I feel like once you do shit to a certain level, it gets, you get put under a microscope. So like everything you do either has to be like inner style or like, um, like you're only allowed to do this shit, and that's what people put yeah. bike. Builders do you not in. feel like that? That's kind of like the what's what's happened with social media and being a bike builder. 
oh, or yeah. by customizer. Like, if you think about when, like, like let's just say the guys of the '90s that were that were cutting their teeth, like J- when Jesse James was cutting his teeth in this right. industry, there was you know you could he, he could it try a lot of, of shit. You it know was what I mean? Word of mouth and bike night. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, we all go through the same kind of motions. It's just like when who, who weathers the storm more? Who well, fucking, there's not like like. You're, the goal wasn't to get on TV in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The goal wasn't to be famous back then. How do you think that ruined bike building, though? It didn't, because the real motherfuckers that are building bikes are still building bikes. The guys that are still going to do it are still going to do it. Yeah. I think it, it ruined, like, the aftermarket a little bit. It ruined, But it, it's all perspective, too. Some people might think it was great for it. I don't give a fuck. I'm still going to work on bikes in my garage. I'm still going to work on bikes... I don't give a fuck if I'm in 100 magazines or in zero. Like, I love what the fuck I do. Like, to me, it's a religious experience. Like, yeah. you know, my boy Jacob, he just brought his, he brings his bikes to me. He brought his shovel head. Randy painted it, chemical candy. Beautiful fucking paint job. To a fucking shack in, in Pleasant Grove in the hood where there's a bitch shooting up in the fucking alley. No bullshit. I'll show yeah. you. Yeah, she's all the pictures and yeah, shit. Yeah, fucking awesome. You know? And I'm like, hey, you want some strawberry? And I, you, back then, I'd be like, shooting him with a water hose. But now I'm like, hey, do you need any strawberry milk or anything? Like, I don't want you to be hurt. It's cold outside. Here's yeah. a blanket. But like, that's that's my life now, you know? But I, well, I just wonder because, like, it, it, it's so much different. You got to pee? Yeah. Gotta All right. Pee. You go right pee. Back. Hurry up. I know, no, no, no. All right. Hey, don't spike this. I mean, you can if you want to. I'll just talk to the, uh, I'll talk to the YouTube listeners right quick while you go. No, everybody sucks. Oh, I just fuck with them. <laughs> uh, Loki, what's up, man? I need to get you in here on this podcast. Uh, you are a killer in what you do. Eddie, for real. What's up? You coming back next week? We do that mushroom podcast you were talking about. <laughs> uh, Awas had to go pee, so he'll be back real, real soon. Thank you guys for checking this out. And uh, yeah, it's awkward now. You down? Cause uh, we still need a couple. Uh, this Friday. Anyway. Big sexy, what's up, brother? <laughs> I don't know if you guys, uh, maybe I'll let you see real quick, but uh, basically we have, I'll show you this side of the, the room real quick. You see all your words. He's going to get back, and I'm going to have to go piss. It's all right, man. Take that there. Yeah, welcome back. All right, sorry about that. It's all good. No, but I shake hands with president. <laughs> like dad jokes, man. That shit always that shit cracks me up. No, nah, man. There's a uh, there's. Was I, Loki I, on there? I heard you say, "What's up, Loki?" Yeah. Oh, my buddy Tom. What's up? Hey, Tom Tillamentes. That dude is one of the hardest fucking Harley mechanics in the area in Texas. He's out probably. of here. Yeah, that motherfucker, badass. Yeah, I mean, I, I've really wanted to do more. I wanted to find more of the guys that are local that are. You know, doing rat shit. I got and stuff. that good stuff for you. Is that my neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> I 
No, but I, I, I wanted to find plans. more dudes that are around here that are doing bad thing, badass things in the in the bike world and stuff, and try to bring them on. And fuck yeah, man! It's uh, it's, I mean, there's no shortage of content opportunities for for a podcast, right? Right. The 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 industry is massive, right? But Texas over the last what would you say year since since COVID for sure has kind of been a funnel for a lot of the motorcycle culture to stop being here because we never got shut down. We were able to keep running. Yeah, because, like, everything kind of goes through here, you know? Yeah. Like, you got guys from the Midwest coming down, East Coast guys, Texas guys coming down. Uh, what's up, Bishop? Anything for <laughs> Selena? You know Derek Bishop? FXR King I don't, Dallas? I, I don't know him 100%. Like, I, I feel Ooh. like I've shook his hand before, but we don't know each other, know each other. He's, a, he's a brother in Wax 80 with me, and he is... Uh, he's one of the best dudes, man. He uh, Didn't, is he the one that used to work at Brass Tax and everything, or, is, no, 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 no. or he worked at Harley? He worked at Harley. That's right. He worked yeah. at Harley. He had that FXRP that ninety four. Yeah, yeah. That then I, I know. Yeah, yeah. I think I know it's of in him. The 100%. bizarre book. Wasn't yeah. he a people's champ? Something or did not Derek? I mean, he's my champion, but he's not like a people's <laughs> champ. He's a country's champ. He's a solid, solid brother. Um, I think his one of his bikes is in Nick's book. Oh, and uh, the dude, Bizarre. That, dude, that book is fucking wealth of knowledge. Yeah, and it's fucking... I'm, I was so stoked when he gave me a, a, a red copy. Hell yeah. Did he sign it? Yeah. Hell yeah. He signed it, but he scribbled <laughs> his name out. Like, he just fucked up my book. <laughs> now it's worth more because of fuck up. It says, Four J's, thanks for all the help. Hell yeah. Nick Henzo. Dude, yeah, shout I, to Nick. Dude, like, when he, he flew here to do this podcast when this book got released, and then he brought me a copy... And the fact that I got a red copy, I was like, "Ah, oh, man, it's Hell fucking yeah. amazing, man!" That's how I felt when Loki tattooed me. He was like, "What do you want for your birthday?" I'm like, "I don't know, man. Just your presence is like good enough for me." He's like, "You want a portrait?" I was like, "Fuck yeah!" He's like, "What do you want to do?" I was like, "I was gonna do like Bob from from La Bamba," then I was like, "I don't want a dude on me, you know?" And I was like, "Man, let's do Selena." Fuck yeah, because that was like, man, my childhood crush, man. I remember when Selena died in my neighborhood. Yeah. It was a fucking national tragedy. There were purple bumper stickers that said, rest in peace, Selena. I still dream about those motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just bombarded. And, like, the homie got down on my stomach and just, like, killed it, man. Yeah. Um, Dude, his, hands down, like, Loki's artistic ability is, I mean, he's, he's been, he, he went from striping to tattooing and then... His airbrush work, like... Dude, like, well, fish to water. Yeah. Fish to water. So, check this shit out. Um, my homeboy, Steven, my homeboy, JP. Steven just... Man, he's a fucking hitter. He just opened his barbershop up at the fucking Statler, right? Yeah. Well, so, like, shit. we're all talking about homies from the gutter, right? So, my boy goes to the Pegasus barbershop at the Statler, opens it up, and I'm like, salute to that shit, because we and Loki are hanging out there, and we don't look like we fucking belong there, but, like, my boy's got his spot, you know? Meet him, J, our boy JP. Happy birthday, JP. Um, and Loki, we went to Pain or Die in L.A. For Danny D stuff? For Danny D yeah. shit. Recipes Danny D. And it was the last, I think it was the last Pain or Die that happened. Was Danny it 19 just, or 20? It was right before COVID. I think it was Pain or Die 5? Maybe right before, maybe 20? What are we in, 21? Maybe 19? Yeah. yeah. It's because like we couldn't go, they didn't go like, one last year. Maybe yeah, I feel 20. like I shut down at 20. Yeah. But that was on Loki because, like, Loki, we used to, we try to go to lunch every Friday, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, hell yeah, you're welcome, bro. And, um, we try to go to lunch every Friday. We go to, we either go to fucking, uh, what's that fucking shithole called? The tur Wild Turkey, right in Royal Lane. Because this shop's kind of over there in North Dallas, and I'm at Dream Machines, right? <laughs> but the, they have these, like, white wings. They're, like, wrapped in bacon and like the methed out waitress is kind of hot to me so i'm in so i'm like hey, yeah. you're into it yeah see, i'm not into it but like i want i'm in, like interested and in see you wouldn't say no i would definitely would say no because like oh, shit. the last chick you want to fuck you don't want that you don't want that chick to be it you know like you die and like dave Chappelle's next to you because he died in a car crash he's like oh shit nigga i see what you fuck and i'm like oh fuck you know <laughs> i don't want that to happen but anyway god bless her she, uh, there's these little white wings that I love from there. So either we go to fucking, either there or we go to Mama Daughter's Diners on Harry Hines. Um, we were there one night and I was like, dude, we got to go to Japan and shit, man. We got we to gotta do this. He's like, well, you want to go to LA for, for Bain or Die? And I was like, well, I always wanted to go to Grand National Roaster Show, you know? Mm -hmm. I'd never been in like, that's like lifestyle car club to me. Like reading about 
all these cars, you know, Hollywood, Las Vegas, um, what's his man? Twilight Zone, that 62 Impala is one of my favorite, Mike Lopez's car, like mm-hmm. is probably my favorite low rider of all time. It's, it's definitely top five, but there's not a list. It changes, you know? Yeah. But like Twilight Zone and like Lifestyle Car Club, I mean, there's, you know, Joe, Joe Ray, like, I remember looking at the Las Vegas car when I was 10 years old and being like, holy fuck. Like, you got a fucking roulette table and a dash. It's like, man, Tanya, you, like, you, you don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> you know, I just remember the lady with the peacock hat on the hood and shit. And, like, like, like that. And I got to meet Joe Ray out there, you know. But, but when we get to, the, we get to, we go out there. He's like, you want to go to fucking, we go to L.A. Yeah. I hate flying. I'm claustrophobic. I don't know who the fuck worked on that plane. I don't know what kind of mood that pilot's in. Like, I think about all these scenarios. And I don't think, I know they don't really, they don't really add up. But like I, I would rather drive. Yeah. And I was like, hell yeah, dude, let's take let's do, Loki. I help Loki. Me, here's how me and him met. Yeah. Before all this shit, I was I took. I was working at a dealership that got bought out. It was a mom and pop dealership, and it got bought out by a car dealership or one of those corporations that buy out dealerships and turn them yeah. into whatever. Which dealership was it? Um, went in Fort Worth, and I don't want to go on blast and yeah, put yeah, that down. Yeah. Um, I don't want to talk shit either. It's not negative. It was just me personally, the shit that I had to do. And I was like, I think I was like 24, 25 at the time. And I was like, kind of like, man, is this what I'm going to do? Like, do I just want to work a hard, I want to be a Harley mechanic all the time. Cause like the guys that I was working with, like, I just felt like it was a job to them and it wasn't, I don't know. It wasn't like fun. You know? Yeah. Their passion wasn't bleeding over into the way yeah, you they felt about riding it. To work yeah. every day. And like when I was in Arizona, going to MMI, my, my, my buddy drew, you know, he, was just, he ended up being a Salinas boy and shit. Like, we, we worked at the dealership together, washed bikes, but, like, everybody fucking hung out. Everybody went to the bar afterwards. Everybody rode bikes. Like, it was a cool fucking place to work. Chandler yeah. Harley. Jimmy fucking Carroza. Goddamn, he looked, like, he looked animal from the Muffets. Was my service manager. God bless him. I love him, you know? Like, we had a great time. And, uh, like, that was, like, kind of, like, what I was in. And, like, my buddy Drew, he put me on a lot of game. He was from Salinas. He is from Salinas. He lives in Vegas now. He's one of my best friends. We still we Kansas. Just, yeah, Salinas, Salinas, Kansas. S- Salinas, Salinas, Hans, huh? Where's Salinas? California. California. Okay. From. Yeah. Uh, the Bay, like not the Bay, but like Salinas. Salinas. We're Dead End Magazine, Jose, and all those. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Susan, yeah. All those guys are from. And uh, well, I got lucky as fuck. You know, Drew is from Salinas, and like he had like that Jason Jesse, that that Cole Foster, like that whole vibe, that. Like, I wasn't used to. I'm from Texas. I'm, you know, like, they weren't rocking Pendleton's and shit out here. I didn't know about that shit, you mm-hmm. know? We didn't, we, nobody was wearing bands here 20 years ago. Yeah. And so, like, instead of coming back to back to Dallas and shit for Thanksgiving or Christmas, I would just go to Drew's house in Salinas. And re- his mom just passed away from cancer. Rest in peace to his mom, Cindy. I love you to death, Cindy. Thank you for everything you ever did for me. But I would go to fucking Salinas and, like, we'd fuck around and he like, this was the coolest story. We're at his grandma's house, right? And it, I'm still in MMI. We're both still in MMI. And like his grandma lived two blocks away from Cole Foster. Like the fucking odds, right? Yeah. And I mean, here we're just drinking fucking Miller High Life's. And I got a picture of this. This is how this shit happens, right? So there's a, we're drinking High Life's in front of Granny's house. I think Granny went to the casino or whatever. And this is me and Drew. And uh, fucking. Hi, Tapta. Hi, Derek. Almost bedtime. Go to bed, homie. What up, Kurt? And uh, so, like, here comes this bobber, man. Like, this little, like, you can tell it's like a chopper, right? Low slung, and, like, you can see it kind of the outline in the, in the street light. And it's, like, bobbing, like, the headlight's, like, on a springer. So, it's, like, kind of bobbing down the street. Yeah. And then it, like, dies right in front of Granny's house. And then I'll look at Drew, and I'll, I'll look over, and I go, and we're drinking 40s, right? We're like, Hey, four, are you Cole Foster? <laughs> he goes, hey, yeah. I was like, shit, man. I'm like, you know, born in East LA, shit. We're like, I was like, fuck. I was like, hey, man, you we go over there and I can check his bike out and shit. And Cole was a fucking saint, man. This dude was like, hey, are you dudes like from here? And like, Drew's like, oh, man, I live right here. And granted, it's been a long time. This story's kind of fuzzy. But like, that was like one of my first introductions to one of my heroes, you know, which I'm totally blessed because people. They're always like, don't ever meet your heroes, blah, blah, blah. But, fuck, I've worked for mine, and I've met most of mine. And 
you know, Chopper Dave's one of my biggest fucking heroes and influences in my life, and he's like, they've all been solid, you know. But but Cole was like fucking cool, man. And I was like, and like I don't really do this shit anymore, and I wish I would do it more. I, I don't know if it's like ego or respect thing, where I don't really take pictures with a lot of my friends, which I'm trying to get better at. And I know what you mean, yeah. Because I just think it's kind of lame sometimes to like fuck up the moment or whatever. But but when I was 19, like Cole was standing right there, and I was like, hey man, will you take a picture with us? And like one of True's homies ha- happened to be there, and he took a picture of me, Cole, and True in front of his panhead. And uh, I got it, like, it's been years now, but it still hangs in my house. And I look at that shit like, fuck, man, like, you came, like, you always, I always try to keep myself humble and, like, remember where the fuck the shit came from and, like, who the fuck brought you here and, like, your friends that helped you out, you know. Um, it, it's, you don't do it on your own. A oh, lot yeah, of motherfuckers, 100%. like, a lot of people were like, oh, I'm self-made, self-made this. So I'm like... Okay, you know, everybody needs help. I don't, if that's your point of view, I used to be like, fuck that, that's wrong. But, like, growing up, like, being getting older and more mature, I'm like, you know, if that's your point of view, I respect it, whatever. I don't want that to be my point of view. I want to fucking put on all the people that helped me put on, that put me on, you know, mm-hmm. or, like, we're fucking nice to me. And, like, just just homies. Like, when we met Cole, man, like, that shit was like, like, that dude treated us like we were his fucking friends, you know? And... Drew ended up working for him and being a Salinas boy. And, like, you know, I fucking fucked. I met, uh, hooked up with Cole back at Grand National Show when I went there last time and saw him. And, like, but it's, like, it's mad love. Like, these relationships, they they flourish. Like, they keep going into something, you know. Um, One of the things I would tell you uh, or I would say is that, like, those relationships happen when you put yourself out there. And what you did is you put yourself out there when you chose Dude, to. A lot of it's just like, yeah, you're right. When you chose to leave here to go do MMI, to meet those people outside of your circle. In my And then take that chance to go even further. Yeah, my friends were dying going to prison. Yeah. Like, you know, like I didn't want to go to prison. I didn't think that was uh, no disrespect to all homies that are locked up listening. I hope you get free all they, the free they twin. The, you know they get I mean? the podcast in there. They need to yeah. sign up for my Patreon, man. Hey, I, I hit him up on Snapchat. He's like, hey, my boy twin's like, hey, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, fuck all that. Anyway, they don't get nothing in there. No, no, all restricted. Yeah. But, uh, but like, you're like, I had to, man. Like, there wasn't a choice. Like, fuck, man, I almost died. Like, I'm just coming out of, I'm learning how to walk in. Like, I'm riding my buddy Oscar's dad's bike with a back brace on going to shoot shotguns because I'm like, I ain't a bitch. Like, that has been a mentality for a long time. <laughs> I ain't no, and that comes from you listening to UGK. Like, you know, never let ho ass niggas ride. Like, I ain't never going to be that dude. Like, I'm always going to be 100, you know? And that's why, like, the boys that fuck with me now, shit, man, my boy Brent, he's a Majestic out of North Texas. Shout out to Majestic's Primo and those dudes. Like, those guys, the 100, if I'm having a bad day, my boy Brent, and this dude's a rock star. You know, $100,000 car. You've seen Brent's car. Six, sugar Free 64, Canary Yellow, Drop Top. It's been a while since I've been in the, in the, the lowrider well, scene, yeah. Fuck, like, low rider, I, like, that's my comfort zone. That's my turkey and gravy. Like, if I'm, like, if I need to read some shit or if I need to, like, come back to find my zen or, like, if I'm working on a bike, like I'll look at an old magazine, of Lowrider. Or like I love the shit. culture, man. Like I love oh, the dude, culture, hundred uh, percent. Whenever I got a chance to go travel with Tours Empire, and I got to work with those guys, yeah, I loved it, man. But the thing for me was is that I do love the cars and I love everything around it. But when people find out you airbrush, they they treat you differently. Like they want you to, and and you have to tell people no a lot. Or, or I'm not sorry, I'm not interested. Oh, my money's not good for you. Like, I don't want to be in that. And that was what was happening when I kind of started getting away from the lowrider scene. To go into bikes and Yeah, shit. because what happened, like, realistically what happened in the lowrider scene with the paint is. Like, what it, era is this? So, we're talking, like, 09, 10, 11, 12 era. Okay. Things. Because I think it's, like, pulling things towards really the other direction changed. now. Things went from, like. Airbrush heavy, where people wanted murals and they wanted all this shit, and then try to get those points, man. And then yeah, the the points, and then you got guys like fucking Fonzie and Fonzie's sick though. uh, I think a lot of a lot of really high end airbrush guys. They they would get booked out for uh, two years, right? Yeah, Loki's one of my best friends, and I'm like, hey man, you do this, and he'll do it for me. I'm not putting you out there, yeah. But like, I, I like I respect his hustle, and like. Now, if, like, he does some shit for me, I'm, like, fucking so appreciative. Like, I love but him to death, you I know? wonder, though. I wonder if because the 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 top air – and I wasn't one of the top air – the top 
OG at that time airbrush guys in the lowrider scene. They got so booked that things kind of transitioned more to the leafing and striping world. Well, I because think, it was more available at the time in 2011 and 12. I think it comes full circle. Like everything comes full circle. Well, I know I, I do agree to that. But what I'm trying to say is everything that like this time too, it, right? There's always a cause and effect. So the you reason think the guys why they wanted airbrush, then they wanted like striping because the airbrush wasn't. Available? I mean, everybody always striped, right? No, no, no. There was a bunch of shitty stripers for a long time. Yeah, but, but then like homie started doing some major. They shit. They would do like these constant murals on these things, right? And then. It would get to where they were booked, and I feel like more people would go the 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 leaf route. And plus, leaf, was, leafing got easier. It did get easier. See, I can't speak on that shit because I don't do that. So shit. back in the day, when people were using real gold and real silver, it was a more complicated process where you're using velvet. And then it got to the point where dudes out there figured out how to do the fucking like sandpaper and the goddamn fake leaf. And oh, that shit, shit I don't that's, even know. See, that's like out of my realm. I, I mean, that's the only way I got it. Is because I did the fake shit. You know what I'm okay. saying? It's real stuff. Don't get me wrong. Right, but the, <laughs> but the, it's it's the not technique on how the it's, technique became how it's easier. Put. It became more uh, accessible it, accessible to to people and uh, and I, I feel like and, and I, this is an opinion. This isn't a fact, and this is something I would. It's all facts gladly. on this show. All no, facts. this is all feelings, no facts. <laughs> all yeah. feelings, no all facts. feelings, no facts. Oh, uh, man. I feel like what happened was is it. I've been in the motorcycle industry for almost 22 years now, right? All right. So when I see things, I always look at it like I dive in deeper. Like, what caused this? What changed this? And it's usually a supply and demand kind of thing. Supply and demand causes something to oh, change. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Supply and demand is what created the chopper movement of the late 90s and early 2000s. Oh, yeah. Everybody wanted a chopper. Everybody flat black was selling, Everybody you know, wanted a Harley but couldn't get one, so they built them. They tried. <laughs> that tried. was it. They're in the in the late nineties, you could not buy a Harley. You had to get on a waiting. Oh list. yeah, Terminator came out right. Yeah, Terminator, Fat Boys. Uh, yeah, Brian Bosworth like, out there fucking ripping around Stone, Stone Cold. Cold. Yeah, yeah. it so, hurts me to say this. I want to say it was because of Charlie Sheen on an FXR in Major League. And I think that did it, but I no. But it I totally mean, the, the, it's cause and effect, like. The the people wanted to get into bikes, but the 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 market to get a Harley was hard. So the right it opened the doors and, for custom choppers. But that to was be like made. what mid nineties, and then like I mean I wasn't around for that era. I was like in fourth grade and shit. But like monster or a motorcycle mania came out with like oh one or oh two or some shit. Yeah. Oh, one of those years, and that just like transitioned. And then if you couldn't buy a chopper, it was it fucking blows my mind that some of those bikes were going for like West Coast choppers still going for six figures. You know, getting built. But, like, Iron Horse and, like, Big Dog and, like, all these companies stemmed off of, like, one two-hour program because there wasn't social media. There wasn't another outlet. There wasn't any of that shit. Like, you got all your information from that shit. So now that there is all these other avenues, I think it makes it better for guys like us. Well, think about it like this. When when Iron Horse and Big Dog and Borget and all the and, and Redneck Choppers and, hell, even Big Bear Choppers, right? right. When these chopper guys Big were going. Bear performance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could. What do you do with this? You just shave it down. All right. <laughs> you could literally go to a Harley dealership and say, I want a, I want a new soft tail. And it's like, all right, well, there's a six-month waiting list. Uh, or, and you don't get to pick any of the colors. We just whatever shows up from Harley, right? Or you can go to one of these other companies, and you can get on a six month waiting list and pick every aspect of the bike: the what wheels, the paint job, the chrome or, or powder coat, whatever you wanted to do. For sure, it 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 made an opportunity. What fucked up that world is a multiple to a multitude of things, but it's also the fact that, like you said with the tattoo analogy earlier. Every fucking buddy decided to be a fucking custom bike builder. Dude, so many and they tried scratchers to get and tattooing and in everybody bike wanted to be their own uh, manufacturer. I get, dude, I see it bummed out on that shit. Like, you see motherfuckers that their bikes ain't worth a fuck, or they like ripped off one of your home. Like, you have homies that do badass shit, and you see some guy that totally rips their shit off, and then like, oh, they're getting recognition from it. Like, I used to get so bummed on that shit, but now I'm just like. Hey, fuck it, man. Once that shit breaks, they'll come to one of us. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And it's been it's happening. Sure, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, keep 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 building, man. Fuck, you'll make me more money. The, the only reason I... So... Not that I, my shit's the greatest of all time. My shit that, breaks, right? too. I feel like uh, if you're doing anything badass, people are going to copy you, period. That sucks. You should be influenced. You shouldn't imitate. 
But that's the thing is like people, you know, everybody that's growing up in this thing, I can't tell you how many people have knocked off an OG Abel portrait type Dude, Southside, art. Was that Southside car that 57 OG Abel did? The fucking the, the yeah. side mirrors on? Dude, Abel's a fucking, yeah. Abel's the shit. I think Loki's on that. Loki's on that. his own thing. Dude, I mean, here's a story I met Loki. I was working at a fucking, I, uh, I was working at the hardware dealer. I quit the dealership. I was going to figure out my life. My friend Mark at the time was working at an antique fire truck restoration place in West Dallas off of Chalk Hill. Mm-hmm. The North Texas Fire Truck Museum. Have you ever been there? I have not, but Chalk it's, Hill is crazy if it's over there. Everything, everywhere I go is fucking sketch as fuck for some reason. I, I should be a ghost. We used to sh- shoot race over there, too. <laughs> On the back side, the yeah. other side, they raided that fucking shop that they all of that. Uh, you know, yeah, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> Don't be a snitch. <laughs> <laughs> shit, any snitching if it already happened. Those yeah, guys are right. doing right. time already. Um, but, but I, I was so I took some time off and I went to go work at this antique fire truck restoration place. You know, and I really like I started doing metal work and welding and like honing my skills in there. And that's where I met Loki. Dude, we were like, man, I was like 24, 25 maybe. Like, and it's crazy because I'm about to be 35. So, like, me and that homie cut back 10 years. But, like, he he gold leafed. He had a sick ass fucking, like, Fleetwood Cadillac. Oh, what up, Chad? My buddy Chad from Roaster Shop used to work. They worked just together. That's a building motherfucker. He's on, uh, he's working for Joe now. What's up, Jose? Uh, Joe Martin. Joe now. Martin, yeah. Yeah, Chad's the shit. Nice. Uh, tell, hey, Chad, tell Joe to fucking. Text me back. No, nah, I don't have his number. Uh, Tell him to message hey, take, me back. Cause take, I, text I've, the homie Shorty. Shorty will text you back. No, yeah, uh, Shorty's my, my dude. Shorty's my boy, dude. I've been wanting to what have Joe on the podcast for a minute because... Joel or Shorty? No, Joe L is... I have a long... Are you talking dude, about Joe? Joe L. The, the, the guy. Yeah. yeah Joe's the, the shit. Joe's the guy. The cooker. The fucking, the egg guy. The fucking cooking the Well, meat. Shorty... And Joel. Joel used to work with me at another shop in Duncanville. All right. And, uh, but I... I grew up in Duncanville, and okay. so did Joe Martin's first shop was in Duncanville. Yeah, six seven. Yeah, so I grew up right around Joe. See, there's so much history just in this metroplex of builders, and so I, I we just uh, need to love each other and go to dinner. I remember, I remember night. a couple of years ago, Hold like hands uh, and shit. Yeah, we do. If we just had like a fucking Open like pockets with holes in them. But I've always wanted to have Joe on the podcast because he was a big influence of my career and the fact that we grew up close. And I've had interactions with him early on in my career. For sure. Joel's- when I started getting, like, sport bike love and, like, in the whole sport bike scene, I was building bikes and being in magazines. Yeah. I reached out to him about building custom things for it. And rightfully so, he's like, man, I got bigger fish to fry. Like, I'm, we're, we're building. You hear that, Jose? Yeah, we're we're doing we're doing big boy, big boy shit. shit. Yeah, like I well, don't want to fucking make an exhaust well, system doing, for a sport bike. Yeah, Get the fuck they were out of here! Fucking, they were doing bikes for Scarface and shit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And Joe's, but Joe Jose, I call him Jose. That's my boy. Super fucking humble. Man, when I walk into a shop, it's like meeting an old friend. Shorty's yeah. the same way. You know, they show you mad fucking love, man. Yeah, Shorty's a good dude. He he's up here. Mike not Chavez too far. in my white tee. Hell yeah. Tom Tom did a bunch of shit for that. What do you say? History's crazy. I almost went to work for Jed Six Seven Shop polishing pipes. Yeah, I mean, dude, there, but there's Tom, so, you did much... so much better in life. You're, you're already where you're supposed to be, dude. If you think about it, like you were just saying, man, there's so much fucking history in Dallas Fort Worth, man. Yeah, like, man. so many, so dude. many guys. Have branched off to be a part of some of these these bigger name brands. I'll never leave Dallas though. Like I had opportunities when I left Jesse's and shit to go to California or go work at wherever. But I'm a Dallas hood rat. Like I need to be in the gutter in Dallas. Yeah. You know, like Triple D's my shit. I listen to Dallas rappers. Like I live in the hood. Like I I can't. When I was in Austin, I, I I never felt like it was my shit. Yeah. You know, I was always visiting the whole time I worked there. My buddy Anthony's from Connecticut, and he's like, he works here. He's a machinist. He's still at West Coast. And he's like a super family guy. And like, I love him to death, man. Him and his chick, Britt. Because they'd always make me, they always cook big meals and like made me feel like I was part of their family. But I'm like, no, nah, man, like, y'all never partied at fucking DMX and shit. Y'all never been in a drive by. DMX. Like, hey, oh, oh, yeah, shit. you know. <laughs> What's up, Ernest? Like, we were doing like wild wow. ass shit, you yeah. know? Like, in Austin, it's such a laid back town and it's not. I mean, it's Austin has changed vibe. a lot. So I, the first time I, I ever been back in three years, dude. The first time I ever saw, I never, I didn't even meet you. But the first time I ever saw, you, like, you had a green Dyna. I still got it. So the green Dyna, I can't remember if it was Texas Hills one or two. 
I think it was one at uh, Proof and Cooper. You showed up to. Yeah. Because that's the time that Jesse James came down on his fucking Busa. Yeah. We were having a fucking yeah, Dino she, FXR yeah, scene. Yeah, Jesse hits because his RT was at the shop. And he's like, hey, fucker, you coming to this? And I was like, I don't know. You said it was lame. We didn't know where we were going to go. So I'm just at the shop fucking around. He's like, come on. I was like, I'm going to take your FXR. He goes, yeah, that's real cool. Take an FXR to a Dino show. I was like, what'd you take? The Busa? And I was like, all right, I was going to bring I was just gonna Well, we all talked about this. Like, you know, because there were the, as soon as Jesse showed up on his uh, Busa. I think it was sick as fuck. Yeah, it was sick. I, let me get to I my point. Us. It was sick, but. It was, su- it was such a Jesse James thing to do. I know, but that's not, To come that's to the him. FXR Dyna thing that is taking place in his, like, bar Backyard, that he hangs yeah. out at. And he shows up to it, and quickly, the whole back lot is like, Jesse James is here. He's sitting at the bar. He wrote a Busa here. <laughs> like, everybody was saying it, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I think yeah, I... We try to put this shit together. Like, and then just, but, I mean, it's... I don't know, like... I feel like if I was if I was ever on that level too, I'd probably and I had forty bikes in the fucking garage to pick from. I'd probably be I'd like, "Jump on a shovel head." Yeah, it's like wherever the most odd, like <laughs> which was the, the which opposite was of yeah. situation. Yeah, I get it. It's trolling at its best. <laughs> Real life trolling. Yeah. Real life trolling beats internet trolling for sure. Nine times out of ten. But I mean, you know, it's uh, man. I I I wonder how hard it is for maybe him to. Be so involved in this world of motorcycles and still not take place in the in the local things it's, or in the small like you don't I mean, see you, do shit. you don't see um, Jesse James has he, he has no presence at Sturgis anymore he has no presence in a there. lot of things it's but still there but like you got to remember man like yeah. like you fucking you do your shit and like he's done it and like he's over it so now it's time for the other shit to happen you know true true I, I agree um, to that. 100%. One of my friends, Rob Fortier, he was uh, editor of, I think, Rod and Custom for the longest time. And, like, he went through all that shit. And now he's, like, doing the classic truck shit. You know, like, you evolve into what you want to do. So it's not it's not like a it, – it hinders it hinders me because I miss reading his articles on, like – because his, his 54 Chevy was fucking beautiful, phenomenal. Yeah. But now he's, like, he's he's evolved into doing his other shit. So you just got – like, you just got to ride the times out. You know, like, Indian Larry was – one of my favorite builders of all time. I always love Larry's shit. And, like, his attitude and, like, his mantras and, like, how he viewed doing shit, but he passed. You know, like, you just have to move on from that. Like, you kind of evolve from that shit. And we well, gotta, I got to piss. I got to piss, too. Right. How are you going to beat me to it the second time? Man, because once you break the seal. I don't know how to pause the live events, don't so. Don't pause it. Just people leave. I'll come back. Everybody gets pissed. I got a P2, so you guys got to wait. Hey guys, what's up? Jacob, what's up, buddy?
Jacob, are you watching this? Hey. I think there's a watch party going on at West Coast Choppers right now. <laughs> I got this from uh, my buddy Jacob. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, I got mad love, man. I got mad love. Awesome. Mad love for those cats down there, man. What's up, Joe Russell? Hey, Bobby! Hey, you ever seen Bobby's picture? Yeah, Bobby's fucking killing hey, Bobby's it. Bobby's his shit. He's one of my, my favorite. Job is in my white tee. Homie, you know what's up? What's cracking, son? Man, uh, Double cup what are we up. talking about? Uh, Getting pussy riding motorcycle? Yeah. <laughs> I do not get pussy riding. Oh, riding man, just wait, man. Your fucking bikes and shit. Church's going to be over it. Nothing but dudes. Hey, bro. No. All in the DMs and shit. We're going to have to break out the Coke. Coca Cola. Cola. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, like I said, there's just a there's so much that goes on uh, in Texas, and there's so many people that that are coming here and doing badass shit. Uh, whether it's the lowrider, I mean, if you think about it, man, the lowrider community or scene or genre or whatever the fuck you want to kind of talk, it I influences got, this. So. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one thing I want to talk about, man, when I started doing like metal work before I moved to, moved to Austin to go work at West Coast, mm. um, my boy Loki was building Disco Lady. The yeah. 76 Monte Carlo. Yeah, that's Dude, fucking on clean. True Spokes, man, that car is, that car, it's one of my favorite cars. Yeah. I'm just not saying that because it's my friend. <laughs> but, it, like, it needed a lot of fucking work, that car. And, like, he trusted me to, like, weld the quarter panel and, like, do all this shit to it. And I wasn't there to finish it. And one of the reasons I left, like, I didn't, I didn't want to work in big shops anymore was my boy got married, right? And... Me and Chad and Joe and and um, and Anthony and Mikey, we were working on a SEMA truck to go to SEMA. And, like, you know, when SEMA happens. It's all hands on deck. Everything shuts down. Yeah. Like, you got to go. You got to do this shit, right? Yeah. And it was, like, one of my first SEMA builds. And, like, my boy was getting married. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, I can't. I can't take. I'm, I'm not big. Like, I'm a traditionalist. Like a motherfucker, but I have super commitment issues on a lot of shit. Yeah. So, like, for me to, com like, but I respect people that get married because, like, they're literally taking a vow to each other. And I, I respect the fuck out of that because it's something I don't think I can do, you know? <laughs> so, my boy got married and I. You single? Ladies, he's single. Shit. <laughs> and, uh, and I fucking. <laughs> Yeah, all dudes. All dudes. <laughs> we bring all the boys to the yard, yeah. bro. Uh, hey, no milkshakes hey. needed, right? Just nest yeah. quick. And um, and like I missed his wedding, man. You know, and like I was so bummed that I missed it that I was like, a part of me didn't want to fucking do that shit anymore. Like I wanted to be more in control of my shit. And I was there for three years. I did what I had to do. I love all those guys there. I love Jesse. Like, Alexis, at the time, like, you know, she still yeah. shows me mad love. I love Alexis to death. Like, we were family. Like, I spent Thanksgiving with those guys. Christmases, you know? Birthdays. You know, my buddy Anthony brought me a fucking birthday cake. I still have the candles from it because it meant the fucking world to me. Yeah. Birthdays mean a shitload to me because I spent one in a neck brace and a back brace. Yeah. And not knowing if I was going to walk again. So, I'm a super birthday person. And so... Like, after that, man, like, my friends are starting to go into rehab that I was hanging out with. And I was like, man, this shit. Like my, and every time I go back to Dallas, like, my mom's getting older. And, like, I was like, man, like, you need to figure, you need to go back to Dallas. Like, everything's telling you to go back home. And, you know, shit got weird for a while. But I moved back. And it was, I called my buddy Jason, you know. I was like, hey, I'm going to give you first chance of refusal. Um, I don't really know what I want to do yet. I knew I wanted to be still work on bikes. But I wanted the freedom to, like, do custom shit on my own. But I needed the, um, and this is where I battle with a lot of shit. I needed, like, the the security of having a paycheck and knowing I could work somewhere and have insurance. Because I like getting my teeth clean twice a year. And, like, I have. Must be nice. It is, you know. And, uh, but I've broken my back twice and I got a plate in my fucking neck and three surgical steel rods in my back. And, like, hooks and I've broken ribs and, like. I'm like, there's going to come a like, Sometimes I wake up and I can't move my right leg. Like, it's fucking serious. And I'm like, I want to go work for myself and I want to try to do my own shit and I want to, like, go down that avenue. 
But I'm like, what happens if you got to fucking go to surgery or in bull? Like, I, I think about this shit and it fucks me. I don't, I don't know if I'm like over cautious. No, I, I think what, I think what you're just a pussy and don't no, want to no, no. for myself. I think what's, uh, cause I know what it's like. I think what walk. you're, you're probably dealing with the same thing that I, I think I went through at some point. I, I want to confidently say I'm past that, but I think there's still a feeling of that. The one thing that really made me feel okay with my decisions, it's like, I think that we, I'm sorry, we have a fight or flight situation where we feel like we have to keep doing the hardest things. Like, if you're not do, yeah, a part of those SEMA builds. if you don't SEMA do the hardest builds, shit, you're soft, Yeah, right? if you're not a part of those SEMA builds every year, then you fell off. If you're not a part of this bike build or or if you're not in this I, fucking thing. If but, you're not doing top magazine cover bikes. If, yeah. If, look, dude, I, I did dude, a fucking old. You know how many people didn't get famous in our industry till they were 45? Dude, fuck being famous. I just want to build no, no, no. quality shit. Look, hey, you know, I get it. Who gives a shit? Like fame, you know, it's the, punk rock, right? Right. Let's not be famous. But the, here's okay, the deal. Look at it now. Like the guys that are famous in the industry. I don't. Like, would you buy their shit? No. Nah, Is well, that for like Brian Clock? His windshield's real nice. But yeah. Well, <laughs> this is the funny thing about fame. Fame comes with hard work. If but you like motorcycle, if you, okay. If you build things and you have a, if you have a legacy of a career over the time, that's gonna fame is is a byproduct of your hard work over time. Right. It doesn't mean that you make the best shit or blah blah blah. No one's ever gonna make the best shit. And, and yeah. who knows? That's You'll make always, some nice shit. The best shit is always gonna be it's relative to the time and who is is right. buying or viewing it. You look at PM wheels now from the nineties, yeah. or even like three spoke Boyd wheels, right? Like eighteen inch Boyd wheels, the Tri Stars, they're they're hot as fuck right now, but. You couldn't get rid of them five years ago, and now they're repopping them in twenty twos. The thing about being famous, it, it all comes to certain. Go ahead. Famous is like a weird thing, right? Because if you try to be famous, then it's it's a it's, it's a, a t-shirt strike. brand. It's a t shirt brand. <laughs> Sticks and flannel, right? Hi, Travis. Uh, <laughs> if, if you, uh, but I mean, at the same time, like if you if you hate the idea of fame and people because of you know like people that are. F- viewing you and me and everybody else through social media and whatever channels they get us on, right. they don't understand. They don't see the whole backstory. They don't know if we've did the 15 year, uh, pre credentials to be famous yet or not. Right. Or if we're all doing it for a t-shirt brand or whatever the case may be, they don't get that. Right. So when people talk shit about people that are becoming famous for what they've spent that's their, their whole own, life, that's their own insecurities, man. Yeah. But here's the deal. You know, if anybody in the bike world, it, it, if you can work on motorcycles, right, or or pinstripe lowriders or airbrush lowriders or custom paint, if you can do any of the shit that we get to do for a living oh, and be stoked about it. So blessed. But then I can also take care of my family, and I can know <laughs> that I have a paycheck coming in and all these other fucking things. Yeah. Like, who gives a fuck whether or not I'm famous or not? If I am famous, cool. I get more opportunities, and I get to eat, and my family gets to eat. Oh, and, dude, and it, for sure, for sure. But if you're chasing fame, that's different. There's a lot of that. Clout chasing, fame chasing. Like, there's a lot of that. But those people weed themselves out in a couple of years. We're still here. We're still doing this shit. Like, your shop's beautiful, bro. Like, the shit, the setup you got. You're, I appreciate the, fuck, the shit that you're doing right now. You're putting people on. You're giving people an opportunity. Like, I didn't start last week. But nobody needs to fucking know that shit. I don't yeah. go out there saying, yeah, established 19. I don't give a fuck about that shit. People that know that know. You respect me, and I respect the fuck out of you. Yeah. You've been doing this shit. You're pulling out. Like, dog, you just p- painted fucking uh, Pam C on a helmet. On a Simpson helmet. Like, man, like, I'm with, like, trill shit. Hell yeah. like, th- like, that's the shit I grew up listening to, and I'm stoked to see, like, that flavor being brought into this industry. Yeah. And that's some... My homie says, sock check, Bato. <laughs> it's Modelo time full of shit. Uh, but, like, but like what we were saying earlier, we were talking before we got on the mics and shit, it's like, I think we're bringing a new flavor in the generation. Like, motherfuckers were eating Top Ramen with just salt and water for so long, and now we're here with soy sauce and hot sauce and Franks and Chile Verde. And like, it's Manulo now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's like, so, but, but it's not that, like, I'm not going to... The generation before me, the guys that I looked up to, a lot of the guys were cool, but a lot of the motherfuckers were jealous. And a lot, you learn that later. Snakes in the grass. You cut your grass, you see where the snakes are. Not that it fucks with me. It used to fuck with me. It used to, like, man, 
are these guys real? Are they taken away? Are they trying to shit on you? Let me well, ask you this, though. Do you think that our heroes got to grow up the way we got to grow up with them? No, they grew up better. But they, uh, were, they didn't have heroes. They didn't. They didn't have heroes. Because there was no one to set they, the bar to. I, I feel like Jesse James and all these fucking guys of the early 2000s and late 90s that, that made a fucking step, statement, they were the first of... They were, they were, they were, uh, they, you know, they Dude, were the first. Cole, Cole is one of my favorite. Chopper Dave is one of my favorite builders of all time. He's on my top three list. It's like the bikes he've done, and like me and him are friends now, and it blows my fucking mind. Like I remember looking at, you know, was it Ripper Magazine from Japan? Like Dave's in it. Like going, you know, who didn't love the Chopper Dave fucking spot in show class though? Ah, uh, dude, <laughs> shit, <laughs> the shit. The but, like best. Being, being like. Shout out to Aki, too, at Hawk Killers. Like, those guys are the shit. And, like, being able to, like, fuck with those cats now. Yeah. And, like, not even those. I don't think I'm on the same level with these fucking dudes. My boy Pat, Royal T, phenomenal fucking Walter. That's my boy. And I'm like, man, I'm, like, these, you fuck with me, homie? Like, you're on some other shit. I like, thought he fucked with me, but he hasn't answered my text messages, so I'm calling him out again. Did he leave you on red? He left me on red. Yeah. Uh, Pat, Royal T, come on, brother. Patty's like, Patty's asleep. Yeah, he's like, oh, I got a real job now. <laughs> he's like, but that's my boy. But like yeah. these guys, but I mean, you, you've done the same shit. You know, the guys that you fucked with and there's people that'll fuck with you and like you think you're doing some shit and then you're like, oh, hey man, this guy was just like talking shit about you ripping off all your shit. You know, you hear it through the grapevine and that shit, that's the part that sucks about the industry. Yeah. But like those guys need to be like, they get weaned out. They'll go start being a chef or like go be a tattoo apprentice or they'll whatever else is fucking cool that's coming up. They'll get out of the industry. I've been doing this shit dude, since I was 19 years old. Like you've been doing this shit for a minute. Yeah. Like we're not going to change. 21. And, hell yeah. So in like five years, we're, we'll be having the same conversation. But the, the difference is I've been blessed with a lot of guys. They've helped me. Yeah. You know, I've been shit on by some dudes and like, but the good outweighs the bad. For sure. And yeah. so I want to influence other cats around me to be like, to be better than I am. The microphone. You know, to be better than I am. Because it's not, it's not a competition to me anymore. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, for sure. It used to be about being better. But what the fuck's a scale? You know, you know what? Let me, when you're hopping, there's let a me scale. Ask you this, like Let's a, get 62 inches off a single pump. <laughs> you know, but in like building... You know, my boy Jordan Dickinson, Union Speed and Cycle in Minnesota, those motherfuckers built some of the cleanest fucking shit ever. Super clean builds. But that dude's one of the most humblest fucking guys I've ever met in my life. You know, you know my boy Stone Fab, he's out of California, Fresno. He's a truck guy. He fucks with me. He hits, like, I respect this guy, and he hits me up asking me questions about his Don and shit. I'm like, dog, you're killing it in the game. He's like, yeah, but I don't know this shit. You know, yeah, help me out. in front of you. He's like, help me out. And I'm like, go. all right, I'll help you out. He helps me out, you know. Mad Jap and shit, he's killing it out there. Eh. There's, you know, there's, 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 I think he's doing good. Uh, he's, he's doing different... good. He's just a fucking dick. Uh, I like, I like him. Yeah. He's my buddy. Well, me and him had a falling out, so that's one. I'll hold his hand for you next time when you see him. I'll bring uh, you guys together. I want to bring everyone together. I do. I, I would love to bring him together. Or No, he was a sponsor of this podcast for a little while. Oh, uh, dude, his bikes were in the horse all the time. Yeah. Wish the he, horse was the Bible for the was a better dude. Time. Wish he was a better dude on the back end. Hey, man. But anyway, <laughs> that's just me. That's my personal experience with him. Uh, I had some incense spreading around. I, yeah. It's like, yeah. I, dude, if, it, it, as much as me and him have a beef, if he wanted to come here and sit in here. Dale. Dale. Okay. Dale, if he wanted to come in here and sit and have a podcast and, and be real, I would do that 100%. Dale, you not just that? for Not just for the gram or for the fucking YouTube or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Just, just for the fact of, like, talking about. The issue that we have because it's very unique. Okay. Very unique situation when the performance bagger thing came along and he got into it and I was kind of a guy on the on the front runner with him. But See, on that I don't note, know that shit. Yeah, on I mean it, it's 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 gay. All right. That's all it is. It's gay. It's stupid. It's bullshit. I wish get rid of it. But uh <laughs> at the same time, um you know, when you were talking about like all the people that you shout out, like that helps you get to here and the Dude, everybody respect, has, man. But in their own way, even if they were dicks to me, they helped me because, yeah. like you said, it puts I, a chip on your way, shoulder. But, you know, I, I, you know, build, building this podcast and and the success it's had, 
the su- success that it's had. Sorry, this crown uh, apples <laughs> <kicking>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what you know? Yeah, you double cup, love. You be feeling better. I don't think that I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you this right now. Speak to me. There is not. It, there's not a. It, there's not a price I wouldn't pay that if if I can afford it to sit here with Gary. Queen, yeah, I love Gary Queen. Um, if I could, if I could sit right here on this podcast table, uh, which I haven't had a chance to speak like this. Yeah, period, I know you and Gary. Twelve had, years. I know you and Gary got mad history, and um, man, I, Gary's been my guy. I love Gary Queen to death. Other side customs, man. He painted my green Dinah. Yeah, you know, phenomenal job. We trade work. Um, I've never had an issue with Gary. I know he's got an issue with you. But here's how I view that shit. Like, if someone's going to get mad at me for their personal belief for somebody else, that's on them. Yeah. I don't have an issue with you. You've been my boy. You, you fucking, you cut for me. We got to, like, you put up the bike night on. And, like, you do shit in Dallas that puts bikes out there for people to go meet out, like-minded motherfuckers. Where else are you going to find a low rider with fucking bags and an FXR T fairing on it? Yeah. You know, at the same place with two other bikes. Like, dudes go hang out and they talk shit. You know, I met Moose at one of your fucking things, you know? Like, I met dudes. Like, it, it just brings the community together. Um, in, my, in the back of my head, I knew it was probably going to bum Gary out that I was going to come do this shit and, like, talk to you. But also, I'm a fucking man. I'm mm-hmm. going to take that shit. But I yeah. love Gary Death. I, if he's listening to this shit, I want him to know I love him. And yeah, I love him to death, too, man. And that's the problem. That That is the biggest issue is that and I don't know y'all's beef. Uh, yeah, I don't do I don't fucking know our beef. Man, to be real with you, I have no fucking clue. I I I I've in the in the 232 episodes of this podcast that I've put out there, I have mentioned him quite a few times. I've I've even done a Dude, podcast. He's a, he's, a, he's a killer in the paint scene. He is you know? 100% like in the lowrider scene too, Almost, his uh, yeah, lowriders, everything. The, the paint Gary scene, kills right? it. He does. Like he's a phenomenal painter. Like oh, if you paint in Texas, at some point you come through this man's yeah, fucking you fuck shop. With Gary you know Queen. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, if you've worked on bikes or been around the shit, if you're good enough, you will fuck with his shit. You've been at his shop. I've worked at bikes at his shop. That's what happens. It's it's so strange because like for me, it's like I've had so much of my life was working next to this man and uh, working around him and being influenced by him. Uh, I mean, so much of my life, I wouldn't be who I am without this. Absolutely. Me either. You know what I'm saying? But that comes with everyone that's had a piece. Everyone's an ingredient in the pie you're baking, right? Usually, usually in the, in the, like, this is what's weird, right? This is probably being a little bit too much, but the extra, I came, when I met Gary, you know, my dad got locked up for, uh, Trying to be a for drug dealer happens. or whatever the fuck. For being a gangster. And doing gangster yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, white dude that's privileged <laughs> gangster. Okay. He we was get still it. doing gangster shit. Yeah, whatever. Right. But I was trying to make Gary, it tough. I was trying to make it tough. Gary, tough. when I got a job with him wet sanding parts, right? He was the most father like figure I've ever had. And not to say that yeah, in hindsight, yeah, the things that I gained from him were not good advice for a an inexperienced, like I gained cockiness from him, is what I gained, right? But it's how you interpret. But it's how you interpret. It's it because I did. Yeah, the dude was running around a prowler, right? He was running a prowler in two thousand four, yeah, and a fucking the sickest boost I've ever seen in my life, and a fucking bagger before baggers were baggers, right? right? The fucking the killer clown bike, exactly. Which one. I'm yeah, fortunate yeah. that I got to airbrush some of those parts. Yeah, I got on there. to work on that bitch. Hell so yeah. there's this dude was like, and still this to this day, like. Like I, I, I have no fucking hate for this man. Like I, I fucking love this dude. I just it's so fucking painful to have somebody that you care so much about and re- and revere and you just want to show the world because unfortunately I've grown to be more known nationwide than he has. And that's right. I, I, I'm sorry that sounds arrogant, but it just is what it's I, I use social media to the to the best of my ability. That's right. what I did. Well, I want the world to know about this fucking bad motherfucker out of Dallas, Texas, that not only influenced a lot of people in the motorcycle world, but the lowrider culture as well within Texas. For sure. And if I can help this dude be more, if I could help his legacy, that's all I want to do. Now, we have beef. We have issues that, that I, Shit, I don't you understand. That beef. Have a carne asada, Holmes. Dude, you know I, I mean? dude let's, you know, like let's I would. back, yeah. I don't know, man. To me, that's a, uh, that's a dream podcast. 
And I don't even know if he would even want to do a pod. I, I've asked a million times. Like everyone's like, I hit him up when his his mother passed and said, "Hey, I'm I'm so sorry." For sure. Uh, and then I, two weeks later, I'm like, "Hey, man, you want to do the podcast?" And he's like, crickets. "Hey, when, when, you it's, know what I'm when it's sometimes, man, um, people go through transitions and like it can be one sided, but you never know what the other person is going through, you know, or what their mentality is or what their perspective is. So like, if you reach out to someone, um, it's and you take it as a hit to like, hey, if like me and you ever had a falling out or whatever, and I was like, hey, Jace, what's going on? And I don't hear from you. I don't know what the fuck's going on in your life. I never take that shit personally. You know, when, when the time is right, when that person's supposed to be back in your life, they'll come back in your life or yeah. they won't. Like, I'm a very firm believer, like everyone has an expiration date. Either they die or they move or you move on. Like, think about the kids you hang out with at the lunchroom in seventh grade that you beatbox with your pencils or whatever. I can't remember those motherfuckers' names. But at that time, those were my homies, right? Yeah. And God knows what happened to them. But it was that expiration date. But in fate and, like, the universe and, like, what's supposed to be in your path, I believe, totally will come back in your path. So, like, you're putting that energy out there. I think I think we as people, like, have so much. Like, you ever, like, really wanted something really bad? And you're like, fuck, I need that, like... I remember the Simpson helmets, right? Just put Simpson out there. I wanted a Simpson. I got to get one. And I was like, fuck, they're like 400 bucks, this and that, this and that. All right. You manifest it. And yeah. you work your ass off. Little do you know, in the in hindsight, tw- hindsight things, like, yeah, you worked your ass off, you saved your money, you got it. But you can also be like a spiritual thing where you're like, you manifested it, you thought about it, you meditated on it. And that's kind of how I live my life now, mm-hmm. you know? And so, like, with whoever you have beef with or, like, the shit that got fucked up in the past, people you've been homies with, man, even if you're not a religious person, you just kind of, like, I pray for, you pray for enemies because I can take care of my friends type shit, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, if I don't have any enemies, you know, like, I used to, like, get worked up in your own head about, like, using energy that you should be putting towards something productive, but you're worried about some other shit that doesn't even fucking matter. Granted, I would love for you and Gary to get like, cause you guys would be monsters in the industry. Cause like you're at a phenomenal level and Gary's an OG, you know, mm-hmm. that dude's, he's a fucking he's master. OG, 100%. He's a fucking master. And maybe it's not the right time, but the universe decides that shit. I just don't want the right time to be whenever he's fucking dead. And I'm sitting at his funeral. It could be, you know, it could not, be. And that's, that's what scares me. You're not, you shouldn't be scared. You sh- it should be a blessing, you know, because it's not it's not for you to decide, you know. Like when we went to me and when Loki was like, "Hey, go with me," you know, me, Steven, and JP. When we went to LA for Pain or Die, like that was Loki shit. We were there to support our boy, and that's the, like those three guys are like one of my core friends, you know. Uh, besides my buddy Rafa that I've known since I was like in third grade, like pre, I've like, known him for thirty years. Like that's my Rafa's my boy. I go to to drink beers, kick back over a fire because he's got like. We'll go into that in a second. But with my other boys, like, you know, Loki took us. We went out there. That was his shit. Yeah. Like, I wanted to go support my boy, my boy JP, Steven. Like, we went to support him. And we didn't know that was going to be Danny's last time out here. Yeah. You know, Panty Raid, that 6.6 Impala, that was one of my fucking favorite cars of all time. I don't even like 6.6 Impalas. They're too boxy for me. But that paint job. 65 is my best, my right, favorite one. Yeah, fastback with the triple lights. <laughs> yeah. 65 is different. That's my favorite one. Yeah, but 66 is they got different tail ends and shit, and it's kind of forgotten here because the 67 is a more of a fastback. Yeah, yeah. But, like, Danny's car, like, man, I remember in Low Rider Magazine and, like, this and that, and, like, it didn't mean as much to me as it did for, for those guys to be there, you know? Because I, I got to go to Dave's shop, and Dave took me to Rolling Sand's shop, and, like, that fucking blew my mind, you know? Yeah. And But that was, like, on a different level. My buddy Oliver, fucking saint. True Tattoo used to be in Hollywood before all the COVID shit happened. It got shut down. But I was like, hey, Oliver, uh, is there a bike out here you got I can ride? Hey, yeah, buddy. Just fucking go to True. Fucking Ian will hook you up. I go there. I don't know anybody in the tattoo shop. I'm like, hey, Oliver said there's a bike for me I can use. Yeah, it's all dead in the fucking corner and shit. Ian Jones, my boy, he's down here now. He puts a charger on and we jump it off. And I get to go ride the PCH on his shit, you nice. know? Like that's, but like, that's where I'm at in life now. Like I know the people that I have around me and the people, like I'm very selective on who I fuck with. Like I had a major choice. You asked me to do this and I was, I feel privileged as fuck to come out here. Cause it's an honor to do this. 
like Thank you me. know the people that have been on here like you put a lot of effort into this i don't know if like you run a paint shop you work your ass off and free this is an this is another job some people just do podcasts for a fucking living but the guys that aren't in here right now they can't see all the fucking effort that you put in this yeah like this is badass like thank you for having me i'm fucking stoked to be thank here. you for being here absolutely man you know but like i don't think enough of us go through life thanking each other or appreciating the moments that we're in yeah you know, I agree. when I go to lunch with Loki or I go to lunch with Steven or if Steven's cutting my hair or like, you know, me and my, my buddy Rafa, I don't like going out on the weekends. I like going to bike night on Tuesday. I might go to bike night on Thursday, but I like going to bike nights and I like going to dinner with this girl, Crystal, and or I like fucking fucking hang out with my buddy Raphael. And I've known him since fucking like third grade and shit. And we'll have like a little bonfire. We'll drink with L's and shit, talk shit. But I bounce ideas because you got to have real motherfuckers around you. Mm -hmm. And... Not that I'm not accessible, but like I'm sure you're in the same boat, and this is not an ego trip whatsoever. Starve your ego, feed your soul. My buddy Zombie Joe tat that, tatted that on Loki's leg, and I always thought that was one of the greatest things because I'm like, you know, that's that speaks major shit. I always wanted to like fuck with motherfuckers that were fucking riding the same wave I am. Yeah. You ever see surfers and shit? And if they're off on the sun, uh, different waves, they all fucking beef and shit. But I wanted all my homies to be on the same pier, the same beach, and just, like, have, like, mahalo, man. Like, fucking yeah. tranquility. I think it, it – once you get over the – over any – all that shit, like, fuck, man. Just break bread with your homies, well, you know? I mean, what, what you're talking about is about, like, 100%, like – when you're when you're when you're cutthroat, we've all been in that part of our industry. Like oh, so yeah, we're talking about that, sure. where like we in the early in the in the two thousands, we didn't have social media to our advantage, so we looked at every brand or everybody. Like that the did magazines we, were the social media, but yeah. everyone was trying to get on biker build off back. Then. Everybody that did what we did, they were like they were our opposition, right? Right. And then as social media kind of uh, broadened the horizons of opportunity, yeah, because now you don't need discovery. We to don't need anybody. that anymore, right? Yeah. And so I don't. Uh, there's no reason there's no reason for me to be in competition with anybody in Dallas. No. I'm a, I'm in no competition with anybody in America, right? Right. You got your own style. You you too, right? Exactly. Why why people that come to me to build a bike aren't going to go to somebody else because they but like let's, my shit. Let's go before that. Why would you be okay with meeting your hero who is the comp you're his competition. You're right. the young guy he that you want to be on his level. Right. Do we ever realize when we become the guy that we're a hero for somebody else? I think if you realize that shit, you've lost what you're looking for. I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't realize that. But I mean, at the same time, if you if you have a lot of dudes hitting you up saying like, "Hey, man, what you're doing is fucking badass. I want to do what you do one day." Like, I didn't choose that. Like that that individual but saw that what just I means did. You're doing something right. Right. I don't think, but like if you if you start changing who you are to be a hero for somebody, then that's you're not in for the right yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. You're, you're it, fucking trying like, to be a. I don't want to be my heroes. Like there's shit that they do that I would never even fucking do. It's I don't, don't want to meet Jesse James. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chango Blanco and the red fucking stainless bike were one of my fucking favorite bikes of all time. Cole's blue bike is up there. There's there, I've got a list of like my top bikes and shit. But everyone, there. It's not a ranking, like it's not a ranking to me. It used to kind of, it used to be a competition, but like I think everyone's kind of like stepped their fucking, <laughs> everyone's like stepped their level up so far. Because the internet, I think that's one the good thing that came out of social media. You start seeing guys that are doing better shit than you, and you're like, oh shit, I gotta fucking yeah, polish up. Let me ask you this though. Let me ask you this. Better than you. That that concept, right? We have the like aesthetics. Oh, uh, we have, yeah, welds, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, if it holds, it holds, right? To certain people. You come from the paint world. I come from like fabrication. Yeah, I, and I, I, I fucking body work Joe Martin shit before. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Joe, but come on, bro. <laughs> I've body worked that shit before. <laughs> At the at the Where's same time, shot glass? yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but what I'm saying is like, what up, Nick? What up, Steven? We're what all up, we're all on this uh, we're all on this fucking uh, this this struggle together, man. Like it's uh, yeah, we're all eating from the same buffet, man, and I like sushi. You know what I mean? <laughs> and everyone's hands have been in it. 
That's the bike industry, right? I'll be at the wind buffet, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, oh, fuck. I'll be there. I'm going. I want to talk about this shit. I totally forgot. Um, so my buddy Carlos, uh, him, Pat, Danger, you know Danger Dan? Yeah, never animal. heard of him. Animal, never heard right? Of him. These guys built this fucking like iron head, iron head sportster dirt bike. Crazy fucking thing, right? Carlos and Pat, they hit me up like, hey, man, you want to go tune this fucking thing? I'm like, wait, the Mint 400, I'm not a desert guy. I'm a fucking Jefferson Boulevard Sunday wonder, guy. You know, let me say, I wonder if it's the same paint job that, that Carlos asked me to do. Why and, did you do it? Uh, because he doesn't answer text messages. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy because it's like, hey, let me, <laughs> hey, bro, uh, can you do a flame job? I love that flame job you done last but Can you do it on this one? I'm like, yeah, yeah, let me do it. Yeah. Hey, man, I need an exhaust. I'll pay you full retail. Right. Him and Pat. Yeah. And then I see uh, Carlos posting pictures of a, of a flame job on this new tank that <laughs> I originally painted, but he never let me finish it hey, because man, he's he, fucking. Sometimes shit happens. Just Here's the deal. We're, I love Carlos to death. I love Carlos. Yeah. Carlos Bumwine. Fuck but, yeah, my guy. He pissed me off when I begged him to do this podcast, and he wouldn't he do it. Why? He wouldn't do it. I did it. Because he's a fucking little whatever. <laughs> he's a goddamn privileged welder is what he is. Where, and then, on, and then next in. thing you know, he jumps on the fucking Danger Dance podcast, which is a great podcast, by the way. But Carlos is my boy. All right. We hung out. We we He taught me how to TIG weld. Yeah. We hung out. We have a lot of great stories. Yeah. So he just, like, ghosted me to do Danger's podcast, which is fine. Danger's yeah. podcast is the shit. But... Now I'm like, hey man, I need an exhaust. I'm building my bike. I'm doing a frame off on my bagger, and I'm like, yeah. I, I want to exhaust. And I'm both texting Pat and fucking. Uh, Dude, uh, they're busy, man. You're I don't shit. give a f- no. They're not. I, they have a I, they have I, a nine to five, dude. Why You're their friend, and you need to let them know that I'm fucking ready for my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I am there. I'm gonna keep friends. fucking with them. They are my friends, but they're good people. They're the, good mint, people. the mint 400. We're gonna go. We're taking this fucking iron head to Vegas. I'm 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 driving out with Dan November 29th or some shit. Yeah, to fucking ride this iron head in the desert. And That's just pretty badass, though. Dude, I've never been out there. So I'm looking. I have a buddy that used to film for that shit. No he used shit. To run the camera on that. Dude, shit. that the trophy trucks to me are one of the most beautiful machines ever made. Because the the welds on them, the fabrication, the suspension, the geometry, the math, the motors, everything that goes into these trucks is like you build a drag car that's got to go 400 miles or a thousand miles or whatever, and it's gonna get beat the fuck out of. Like if you've never been around a trophy truck in yeah. real life. Have you, you have, right? Uh, or have you? Well, it's not really that popular here in Texas. Right, right. So. Right. Um, I got lucky. More of the Arizona Jesse era. had one. And so, like, I got to be around his truck. And, like, this, you know, Joe worked on that thing a lot. Joe Russell, he's a fucking phenomenal dude. Um, there was, like, that shit blew my fucking mind. Like, you know, just the, just the shit that goes into him. So, when those guys hit me up about, because Carlos was like, hey, will you come, like, tune this bike out? I was like, yeah, I'll come tune it out. And, you know, I got forked with the carburetor, worked on a little bit. Me and Dan took it out to Trophy Club last week, fucked with it, and got it kind of dialed in, ready for the race. And I was like, fuck, man, I want to go. But I hate flying. I Because Carlos is flying. I think Pat's flying. I was You're like, bougie. I mean, I'm bougie, too. You know, you no, see my. You, you, this is a fresh pro club white tee, <laughs> homie shit. <laughs> <laughs> it is fresh as fuck. Yeah, haven't fucking, you watched it yet, huh? I just, I bought it from the gas station. Like, that's where I get my clothes from. <laughs> <laughs> it's, make, it's clean though. Hell I, yeah, I, I give you that. So like, so the fucking, um, so like, I was like, fuck, I want to go out to this shit, man. And you know, I, I try to take at least one vacation a year. Yeah. Like, I think no matter what you do, you should take time away from whatever the fuck you're doing, and go do some other shit that you wouldn't do. Like, just experience it. The older I'm getting, the more I value experience over anything else. So I was like, hey, Dan. Let me drive with you. I'd rather drive with you to go fucking out to Vegas. And he's like, fuck yeah, come on with me. You know, and I mean, you've been around Dan. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Uh, <laughs> but we got to go to like New Mexico and then like do all this shit. And then I hopefully I can see my buddy Drew, uh, his, his daughter Dookie. It's her birthday. I think they're going to Disneyland the first week, but hopefully I could see him. But happy birthday, Dookie, if I don't see you. 
Um, but the Mint 400, like uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, like the first scene when they're cruising up is for the Mint 400. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm really looking. And shout out to Jason Quigley, man. Like, I was like, hey, man, I got to take a week off in November to go fucking race So Iron Jason, Head. does he run a... Uh, he runs Dream, Dream Machines. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is a weird place for me to work because I feel like, I feel like I, I could be doing different shit. But it's like comfort, and I like who I work for. Mm -hmm. I don't get bummed out about going to work every day. I'm not a self motivator, so I couldn't work for myself. Like I need the candle under my ass to where I get off work, and then my house is set up like a shop. Like my garage in my house, that's where I do full builds. Like my boys bring me panhead. I just finished Josh Williams's chrome frame fifty five panhead. Um, chopper and it's like it's period i don't know if you've seen it but like i like i built it to where it looked like it came out of 55 like it looks sick mm -hmm. and i'm in love with it you know and he's been riding it like my best sex messages are like when my homies hit me up like yo dude i put 150 miles on this thing today i'm like fuck yeah i only put 10 i was scared to ride it <laughs> you know because i'm not an old chopper guy like yeah. i like fast fucking like i like fxrs and shit i like dinas i'm not a big bagger guy but my FL, I like FLs, like FL pans, FL shovels, like Denver Dan, one of my fucking heroes, which I'm friend, like best hugger in the world besides Chopper Dave. Like Rob's not a hugger, but those other guys. But like FL pans, like I, I just that nostalgic look. Like you, you, if you look at a '55 pan that's still got like the big fenders and the big tins and all that shit on it, yeah. it takes you to that era. You know, you look yep. at a chopper. And, like, you feel like a badass. You kind of get, like, you kind of get a little bit of nostalgic. But, like, when you, have you ever been in, like, an AMCA swap meet, like, to Oli or any of that shit? I haven't been to any of those things, but I understand what you're talking about. You've been though. to Davenport? No. Uh, uh, dude, you get a chance, man. Like, even if it's not in your realm, like, those guys are, like, tr like purist. And it's, like, it's, like, finding the first motherfucker that, like, did mushrooms, you know, like they love, they eat, breathe, sleep, shit, Harley Davidson motorcycles from that era. I was lucky enough, man, when all over was filming Ink Master, I flew out to Jersey to go, because I, you know, take a week, I take a, a week vacation every year. I don't give a fuck what I do. I need to take that week off just to do some shit. And that year, Oliver was filming season whatever. And I was like, hey, buddy, I'm going to come see you for a little bit. He's like, yeah, come on. And, you know, went out there and Oli Oli swap meet was like that weekend. He had his fucking RV in Jersey, and if you've ever driven with Oliver Peck, it is fucking sketch. Next next time he'll carpool when we go to lunch, and dude, he'll kill I, us. I just so Oliver is another Oliver is like Jesse James for me. Jesse James is like another tier. Right, yeah. but Oliver's a dude that uh, being here from Dallas and and finding out more about him, uh, I always been a fan. I I never asked him to do the podcast because I was nervous. Oh, dude, dude, hit him up, man. He's I, I mean, I did, but yeah. I mean, he came in and we had a great time. And fuck he, yeah, he said he wanted sarsaparilla fucking uh, uh, <laughs> uh, root beer, and I, me and my wife went on a fucking scavenger hunt in North Texas trying to find sarsaparillas. And I just want whiskey and seven up. Yeah, it's so much easier. They sell yes. that down the street. I'm easy, yeah. But you know, what I mean, like it's one of those things. It's like you, you know. I'm, I'm in a unique opportunity where I finally... He's definitely... I, I'm talking to you in a sense where I have major respect for you and, you and what you've done. Thanks, man. But we're also in the same... We're the, we're the same class. Yeah, because we're hood we're motherfuckers same. and still eat barbecue at fucking yeah, Odom's. We, we you know fucking I mean? graduated from yeah, the, the, the Dallas Fort Worth scene at sure. the same time, right? But then when you get a chance to sit down with somebody that you've uh, revered and, and thought about for years, right? And how would you interview them? How would you... How would you like me and you could talk about when you showed up, and I'm like, "Hey, man, Fast and Furious," and and yeah, because yeah, like, we can relate. We, we can relate. Yeah, but I, I can't relate. I, if Jesse was in here, right? Yeah. Hey, man, big, like I'm a fan at that yeah, point. I can yeah, never yeah. be this dude's like. So when Sander Bullet came, <laughs> I can never be that guy, right? <laughs> oh, Sandy, I would love to do that. I would. I, I, I'm sure it would work great for fucking uh, E News or whatever the fuck, you know. Jesse's a homie though. Like he's he's down, man. He's got his faults. We all got our fucking faults, man. But uh, he, uh, I think that if I ever was got good a chance, to me, man. if I ever got a chance to, you know, I don't even want to say that because it's it's not the. Place. But with, but with Oliver, like going back to Oliver, man. I mean, my my friend Raphael, his daughter's twelve years old, right? And like, 
me and him grew up together. You know, we fucking high school together. Like we were, we were boys. Like his mom's like calls me son and shit. I yeah. you know, just went to his fucking uh, his niece's fifteen. Well, his daughter's birthday is Thursday, right? And like, it it's crazy. Like you talking about like famous people in that perspective. Like those guys watch Ink Master and they watch um, Netflix and all that shit. And like Oliver's famous to them. Just like Je- Jesse was famous to me, and so I worked. Dude, for my him. daughter was like, "Do you know Oliver?" Dude, it's a my trip. daughter. Yeah, I was like, I lied. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but and it, then like a year later, he's on the podcast. Well, yeah, yeah, now I know him. <laughs> yeah, but dude, like it's, I, I need to get over this shit because like, so my my buddy's daughter's birthday is on Thursday, you know, and I love her to death. You know, she's 12 years old. And, she's, and like I, me and Rafa, we I told her I was like, "Fuck, man! Like you're giving her the shit that we didn't have as kids. Like our parents didn't give us confidence. They didn't tell us we could do whatever we want. They didn't like push us. Like not to their fault. They were busy making ends meet, you know. Yeah. But we benefited from that shit. And so now we push the next generation. So like his daughter's birthday is Thursday, and I was like bought her a pair of vans and i'm like hey all because she's a fan you know and i was like i mean we're all fans and i was like hey oliver we signed these shoes for me and i was like why did it take so much to ask your friend to sign a pair of shoes yeah, I'm like that's weird, my ego right? that's, that's my weird. ego though it'd be hard you know what i mean uh, but it, it shouldn't was... be it shouldn't be though right like in person in hindsight it shouldn't be hard because like that's my boy but I think that maybe you would you would feel like I don't know I understand what you're saying though because 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 you, you, you always feel like you're being watched or you're being judged for what you do when you get to a certain level of doing shit you feel like there's shit that you can't like you maybe you don't do. want to be that person that is that person to them but if I was like super famous I, you know I'd be like fuck dude, yeah hook all dude. my homies up you know dude I I. I literally have dreams you know how like some people dream about uh, like what would they do if they had a million dollars. Was right. that hookers and cocaine? Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe. <laughs> guy, no, I would. I'd buy like every set of true smoked and Dayton's ever. And just dude, I've up. literally, I, I've literally had these thoughts, like, and, and unfortunately, in this, in this, what's podcast up, Oscar? With you, uh, I've thought about what would it be like if I would have accumulated the, uh, reach and power, not power, just the fucking like the respect that Jesse James has gotten. Right? Yeah, but with all that respect, there's also like. The, the other side of it, you know, like that poor dude, like, I mean, not that poor I dude, know, but like, like so many motherfuckers are like, fuck that motherfucker. Like all, if Oliver doesn't stop and say hi to someone at the movie theater when we're buying popcorn, then it's like, fuck him. I don't want to be that guy. It's unfair. You know it's what unfair. I mean? But, but he never, he never does it. He's insane about it. He He's really good about it. But I mean, at Jesse's, the same time, I think Jesse got dealt a different type of cards. You make and your it, own bed. You he know? does. Yeah, you yeah. Make your own bed. But I feel like I mean, in in the world of bikes, right? In right. this world, this, this world that me and you fucking make a living in, I'm totally blessed to make. This a living motherfucker in. can like drop a dime on anybody in our scene and give them an and give them a shout out or give them a fucking anything that that makes them relevant. For sure, that quick. You know and, what I mean? And it's a trip to still be relevant after all this. I mean, time. you got to think like. There are so many motherfuckers out there that are talented as fuck that are mechanics. Dude, who's, who's one of your favorite guys right now? My favorite guys? Yeah, one of your favorite builders right now. Uh, probably Al Emerson is my favorite really? builder. Sosa is up there for me right now, Chris, because he helped that dog out. Like you say <laughs> A that dog. Dude, okay. Hey, shout out one time to Buddha and the Bull Dog Rescue. Yeah. Like I'm a big pit bull advocate. Because I kind of feel like I like we're we're kind of pit bulls. I thought we were talking about building bikes. I I am. I, I am. mean, because if we were talking about dogs, I would say probably a dog charity. That I like, love dog charities. Yeah, but, me but, too. but so to save that dog from getting died, from from, from getting died, from getting died. Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit. Yeah. No, but you know, but so is a great dude too. He is. Yeah. But. Um, Bob, I gotta shout out Bobby Haas and Haas Moto Museum here in Texas, dude. I've wanted to meet the guy. He died. I know he died, but Rest he... in peace, Bobby. Uh, they just did this last weekend, a fucking film thing. For yeah, the, have you seen it yet? They, no, I no, see I, it. man. Uh, it's hard for me to sit through movies. <laughs> I, love, I love movies, but what's <laughs> really complicated is that there are so many tiers and levels of this motorcycle life. Have you been live. to the museum yet? No. Do you know Sparky that works there? He worked no. at Strokers Forever? Dude. Great guy. I know everybody in the world, but nobody in Dallas. 
Yeah, and me. You, I know Gary, I know uh, Rick Fairless. That's about it. I hope this full sock checks what? <laughs> he said, I, look, I'm kind of a fool right now. He's like, he's like sock, sock check. Fool. Fool's going wild. Dude. Um, dude. It's it's hard to know. The hospital it's, it's hard, is badass. It's hard to know people in Dallas, though. Like, because... Shit, man, we gotta. Like, I go to bike night with you. That's how we fuck around. I don't fuck. I don't go lunch with you. We don't fucking like text each other and shit. Yeah. When we go to fucking bike night. Like, bike night to me, it's one of the. It's I love it for it's some a pure reason. experience. Yeah, yeah, because like the motherfuckers that are gonna be there are riding their bikes and they want to go there to talk about motorcycles. Like I work on motorcycles all day. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I think about is my FXR. Like I love that fucking bike, you know. And then, but then. Like, you go to bike night, you talk about bikes, you do this shit, and that's where me and you fuck around. Like, our our friendship goes from a pure love or something we both have. So, when it comes to, like... Like, me and you couldn't sit down and watch Lion King together. No. We We'd just, be like, hey, man, do you see, do you see this one on Insta, uh, <laughs> yeah. this, this bike on Instagram? Do you think this... Yeah, we would... No, fuck no. My attention span is not that long. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can watch a Cowboys game, but trust me, every every, like... Not that I'm a super bike dude or anything, but, like, my love, like, my passion, like, fuck, man, I can work on bikes for 10 hours. I can go to work 7 in the morning, work all day, get off at 6, go home. If I'm not going to dinner or anything, I'll go to my garage and I'll fuck around till 10 o'clock. You know, like, you're a 9 to 5 or you're a 5 to 9 or, like, I, I used to not be a fan of getting up early, but... <clears throat> You get older, and it's like it's the, it's, it's the coolest it's the coolest yeah. thing to do. Like I love drinking my cup of coffee and like just like listening to the hood rat fucking roosters in the neighborhood or the tweakers. Yeah. Like you don't know which one's what, you know. I've I, woken up in fucking uh, southeast Dallas before. I, I know I it's like the, I think the bum in the alley gave uh, gave my dog fleas. Man, I gotta go get him checked <laughs> out because <laughs> everything was good and like that bum like wheelchaired in and I, my dog's all scratching and shit. I was like. Fuck, man, I got to get my dog checked out. I'm going to take the bum with me. I'm like, hey, man, you want to go with us to the vet? Get her a fucking <laughs> shot, too. Too shit. But, uh, I think she wanted to, like, get blowjobs and shit, and I was like, man, if my dick falls off because of that shit, I'm like, fuck that. It's like that whole, uh... And I'm all like, is this where you want to be when Jesus comes back? Get <laughs> blowjobs by bums? No, I'm, like, trying to get him strawberry milk and shit. <laughs> That's what I'm at in life. 20-year-old me, I'm like, you pussy. But now at 34, I'm like... Do you need a blanket? <laughs> you need a blanket? <laughs> oh, the, I just came. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sleep in the alley. It's okay. I won't call the cops. So you want, can you get some food? You help her make, make a clubhouse? Dude. Like, hey, I got these boxes and tape. I would. Let's make one. But, like, hey, so, like, my other neighbor, he lives in his car across the street from my house. I consider him my neighbor because he lives there. <laughs> but, like, I got to pay a tax to him, man. Because, like, I buy him cigarettes and shit. Or I'm like, hey, you, you want your house safe, though? Yeah, my shit ain't been broken in. Well, there was a drive by the neighborhood, and like my garage has a couple bullet holes in it now. But like I went there, and so nobody gave me a rain check on when that shit was gonna happen or a hoodie hoo. I didn't know what was going on. But when there's raids, yeah, you know, well, flipping pigeons, <laughs> yeah, like the fucking hood call and shit. But like I didn't get shot. So, but when there's, I mean, I'll send you pictures of the bullet holes. But like nothing got fucked up. So I was like, all right, cool. So, but like you just you get back to your like you can't. Fuck with the motherfuckers in your hood. Those bums have been there. They got like well, they have the, they have the the cure for coronavirus in their blood. Yeah, guaranteed. When, when we started doing the bike night in Deep Ellum, we became friends with the bums that that hanged out there the most. Yeah, and some of them got to a point where like we <laughs> yeah, all like, got so close with them that they they would watch our bikes on uh, any day of the week. They knew us. Dude, we'd uh, hook them up. We'd get them beer. We get them just food. Just be cool with them, man. They're yeah, people. Just be cool. They're just on hard times, man. The dudes, yeah, they're, they're, there's a Some level of them. There's a level to bumming, right? <laughs> yeah, Some of it's like it's annoying. Shit. Shout out Nipsey. But, you know, if you if you are bumming at a, at a situation where, like, you could be of service to me. Right. Then I'm going to help you out. If you're just here asking for a penny or a dollar, uh, nobody asks for pennies anymore. I need a ride, homie, to where, you know, down the street. <laughs> I've been in this situation before. <laughs> Hell no. It, you know, like, we had one dude that, in Deep Ellum. His name was Dom. And the mother, the, what was the guy with the dreads in Deep Ellum? He cut it off recently. It might have been Dom. He's like a weird, like, like bolo-looking motherfucker. We had this one dude that would hang out at our bike night, 
And he would because we see the bike nights at Anvil. Anvil, dude, shout out Anvil. Yeah, Anvil Pub. Fuck, Rest man. in peace. Anvil's gone, dude. Uh, there, there are What's people up, from Locke? all over What's the up, country. Jerry? There are people up, from Pops? all over the country that I brought. They would come here to do the podcast, and they'd ride here. They travel here. Hell yeah! And I would take them to Anvil because that was our fucking spot. Dude, Reno's jamming though. Reno's Reno's is fucking. It's a good no spot. One, no one fucks with their shit at Reno's. If we Reno's is a better spot than Anvil was, wish, but I Anvil wish, had a better vibe. Like, because the bar was. If a I'm bringing more people alive. here from fucking California, all over the country, because that's what happened. Yeah, people would come here. <laughs> Reno's. Yeah, Reno's is like, uh, you know, like you might get the. You got to piss again. Yeah, now dude, I'm come on. Let's you got to put a bathroom up here. Just, just yeah. yeah no, on. no, just don't do that. No, I'm sorry. Hurry, I got to pee too again. You guys having fun? Here's the deal, guys. When he gets back, I'm going to piss. So maybe you guys should ask some questions to Awas. That way, when he gets back, he can answer to you guys. And uh, it will kind of help facilitate the situation of this not taking place for about three minutes, if you can. Shit, all right. Let's see here. Day for the Fast Life camp out. What would you build right now with no budget and no limits? Ooh. Hmm. Oh, last day in taco shop. Hell yeah. Homies for sure. If I were to build a bike right now, no budget, no limits, man, I don't know. I'm getting older. I'd probably do like an RT, just candy painted, crazy. <laughs> Dan, Dan versus Shrek, who wins? My favorite part of my Epic Star is the orange paint because one year only, and it's 85 numbers matching motor transmission frame. Lost what is about it. it brings so much love and joy. That me and Derek Bishop worked on it together. And it, it came from homies. Like, I bought it from my buddy Josh Williams. And there's a lot of love in that bike. Ugh. Like, all the avenues that came down for me to get it were, were awesome. I think Shrek wins. You ever had uh, your whiskey with Tobo Chico? Is that ranch water or is that tequila? Uh, I think you have tequila to be ranch water. Right. It fucks, though. Oh, dude, I'm not, I'm not against it. Let's go get Slurpees. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Cano? Man. Oh, Cano, yeah. He's a, dude, he's a cool fucking guy. He, he's a like he's guy. like a fucking... Uh, Super nice guy. I, I like nice people. <laughs> Surprise, Chris, right? is, Chris is in our group chat. He's uh, one of our... He, he has such a fucking warming co uh, personality... That when you're around him, you can't be mad. 100%. That's how Derek is, Bishop. 
But Christopher, for sure. For sure. Bro. What's up, homie? You having fun? Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go fucking live on this bitch. On my IG, so people can ask me questions and shit. I like it. That tempo is fucking hitting. Let's go. So what I use? Are you a big Slurpee guy? I'm not a Slurpee guy. Uh, I like smoothies. I I got a Tiki Loco for my smoothie. Have you been Tiki? Uh, We used to go get their fucking. uh, You know, it's a it's a vegan spot. I know. It's so we would go get there. They have like a what what those things called with like the it's like. It's kind of like a. What's, what are those fucking Little Debbie's oatmeal cream pies? <laughs> oh, shit. Dude, Audra makes yeah. the, the best. Because they're like they're like the ice cream sandwiches, but it's like a fucking oatmeal cookie. Oatmeal yeah, Tiki cream Loco pie. and Deep Ella, man. Fucking get that shit. Hey, I just went live on my IG. If you're following me, hit me up with some questions, man. We'll fucking uh, we'll get some questions answered. I hope you guys are enjoying this. What's up, Pompa? What's up, JP? What's up, Tabitha? What's up, Mark? So the uh, <laughs> I got a stack schedule, man. Like with this podcast thing, like yeah, hell you know, yeah. You came through. Uh, What's up, Papa? Really wanted to do a podcast with you. It's been it's. We talked about this months ago, man. Yeah, I know. We really it did. Just, it's just like that last conversation we had at bike night. Really was like the fucking. What's up, JP? I was working on fucking. I was working on Josh's panhead, man, and like. Like so, when we're when you're doing a custom build for a customer, what's up, Nick? When you're doing a, a custom build for like a customer, like you got to get everything like hi Derek, like you want to get everything like perfected, right? Yeah. Like, like you can't leave the shop until there's like 200 test miles on it, and like the brakes bled with no bubbles left. Like everything's got to be perfect, yeah, right? No. But when you build something like for the homies, and it's kind of like more laid back, and like. It reminds you of like why you build bikes, yeah, or why you're in this industry. Like, I love it's Josh. less stressful, dude. What's up, Dusty? Dude, I went. My buddy Dusty's a firefighter out of Waxahachie, man, and like riding bikes with him, man, it's just shit. Cause like you're riding with an EMT, so like nothing's gonna fuck. So you, you. want to wreck? Yeah, I mean you don't. You never <laughs> want to, but like you know, it's like something happens. It's kind of like if like, you roll with a cop and you wanted to break the law a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no rolling no cops. No, no. Hey, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> fucking, you know, Uno out of fucking Austin. Yeah, Rick, he's a good fucking dude, man. He's uh, he just retired. Well, actually, out I don't, Austin I don't PD. know. Uh, is that who you're talking about? No, right no, there? I was talking about my buddy Dusty. Yeah. Um, hey, what's up, Harlow? He's a sick ass pan knucklehead, panhead. Fuck, I've been drinking. I like this. I like where this is going now. Fucking salty, baby. <laughs> and then, uh, fuck, what the fuck are we talking about? Ask me something. <laughs> you went live, dude. I know. I, I, I thought went, they were going to ask you something. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey I'm, who, I'm, who, I'm who on live. Motherfuckers. Yeah, I'm on live. Yo, you guys checking out the uh, Fast Life podcast right now. Uh, my man over here, Awas, is, What's here. Cracking, he baby? is a special guest for our shit. So do you guys have some great questions for him? Because if so, uh, we, we, need to, we need to ask those. We need to find out for the YouTubers <laughs> in the world. So Hell, yeah. Let's crack it. What's up, Joel? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's a. Uh, Did, were you a Slurpee guy? Dude, I don't think I ever was. Like, even when they were, because they've always been free to me. Our, our generation is a Red Bull generation. Uh, my think was about a it. Generation. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. You know, we're fortunate. We're, we're talking about Dallas natives right now. Did you ever play for a Slurpee, though? Because I would just go in with the cup, get whatever I wanted, and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> I got a story for that. So, but let me let me tell you this first, real quick. We're from Dallas, and so is Seven Eleven. Seven Eleven is an OG Dallas native. It's from here. So it's right? margaritas. I will, I'm gonna Google that to make margaritas sure you're right. Margaritas are from Dallas. Yeah, yeah. So, but what I want to say is Put like the cat uh, back on the Chico. Oh, the bubbles. Give me the, you're right. Hey, thanks, Serge <laughs> Juice. You you 100, homie. You for sure. Um, All the bubbles were escaping. They treat that shit like it's whiskey. Uh, <laughs> So in some cultures, it's in some cultures, <laughs> I think that uh, I think that my generation we grew up like because Red Bull came out like in 03, 04, right? Do you like? I don't, I'm not a I'm not a Red Bull fan, 
But yeah, energy drinks is part of our 20s. What's your go-to shot? Shot? Yeah, if you're taking a shot. Fucking sex on the beach. No way. Dude, What's in I don't shit? like shots. No? Okay. Hey, so if I was going to do a shot, it would have to be something. I'm uh, trying to figure out. I'm trying to write your Tinder right now. So. <laughs> I think that uh, gonna be pissed. I'm I could joking. do I could do any kind of whiskey shot. I can't do like <laughs> tequilas and shit like that. Oh, I do Jameson. I, Esplan, I can do Jameson shots. That's Esplan, my that's my my go to over there. Is there any in there? A uh, little bit. I I have like four bottles at this. Let's do a shot. Come on, fuck it. Get some Jamo. My buddy Ben Siever got me on that Espel and shit. Oh shit! Hey, there's a party in here. Let's see here. Bobby, when a was gonna grow a big gray beard to go with all his wise words. Man, dude, I'm gonna I gotta grow a beard because my brother's getting married uh-huh. and like he's marrying a package Pakistani woman and she's an amazing woman and they're gonna have a great marriage. But I don't wanna be I gotta choose my words. I like how you like how you so wisely. Um I don't wanna be in any wedding picture where my mom's gotta talk shit about neck tattoos. Cause yeah. I would feel horrible. So I will be growing a beard. For my brother's wedding, he's getting married in March. You definitely have like a vibe, like you definitely drive a '64 Impala right now. <laughs> That's definitely like the face that I have. It doesn't come off like, uh, you know, like I'm fucking selling Slurpees. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a pool! I drank whiskey Jameson with Jesse's monkey one time at a Christmas party. There's a video of that. And like the, I guess so many people were so pissed off about that shit. It's the only thing I can do shot wise. Oh, man. I've never been a shot guy. Uh, hey, Carlos, join. Hi, Carlos. Oh, hey, Carlos. <laughs> hey, call me. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Carlos. No, I love you, Carlos. Fuck you, Carlos. No, he's... I'll, I'll hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking in the eyes, motherfucker. Dude, wait, there was a... The people that have been listening to this podcast since day one, um, there are stories that Carlos is a part of from, like... Carlos so, is intense. I love him. Carlos is amazing. And it's why it, busts, it, it pissed me off so much that he wouldn't do my podcast for so long and then one day he him and Dan are both flat track guys and so they fucking Dude, they're riders they though. docked they <laughs> docked and now they're boys and so he does his podcast first Jace when we join Rough Riders dude uh <laughs> Dun, 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 Shut dun, dun, down, open up shop. Oh, <laughs> yo, that's a rough ride. Damn, dude. Hey, guess what? <laughs> I prospect for Rust Rider. Did rough you really? Rider. Yes, I what did. What happened? Then he got you out. <laughs> Suns came out, and you're like, fuck it, I'm going to work on bikes now. <laughs> no, dude. Uh, 2005. Um, I, yeah, I prospected for Rough Riders. I was trying I didn't to. I had a prospect for like Jet Bike Club. Yeah, you did. Uh, Dude, was Lawrence Fishburne there? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I started prospecting. I was hanging out with everybody. I actually got to meet some. Uh, some. I didn't meet DMX. Ja Rule. I mean, no, because he's not. He's not a rough rider. I no, thought. Fuck no. They. Oh, he thought he was a little beefed. brother. They beefed. Oh, Jeffrey Atkins. <laughs> um, there was some. There was some stunt guys out. Hold on. Uh, Ask Jace if he ever got those West Best Extenders. I've been making it. <laughs> wow. So on my live, I got a question from my buddy Carlos. Ask Jace if he ever got those Best Extenders. I've been mailing him quarterly. Those those chains that go between the vests. <laughs> you mean the fucking Sturge Specials, baby? Sturge, the Bob Seger babies. Come on, my buddy, my buddy Drew. Drew, how Kenyonis. sick would this have been if you, Carlos, and Patrick was on this this podcast? I, I asked Patty, and I think that was busy. They're a bunch of bitches. That's why they're on this podcast. No, bitches. Ooh. Love you guys. Ooh. <laughs> Shut him down, open up shot. Hey, what's up, Matt? <laughs> Dude, North Texas T bars. Matt took a sick ass picture in my FXR the other night. Bike night is going strong without y'all. Jim, no, it's not. Ass honky. No, I it's- hope y'all are fucking watching this shit at bike night <laughs> on the big screen at Reno's. What's up, 138 Matt? What's up, baby? Dude, it's a. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's. We should have went to bike. I, I fucked up. Like, cause, yeah. okay, so, so like on Mondays, 
Wax Hatchy, Wax 80, the lodge we meet on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. So like I, I'm like the noble grand right now. So like I hate missing meetings. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, can we do it on Tuesday? No, I don't. I don't mind. I've, I've been but, trying to take a dude, break from like, bike night. What? Uh, okay, yeah. Good. You could. You could. Uh, we started this bike night with North Texas T bars. We started this thing in 2018, and I've on it since 2018 to today. Actually, till two weeks ago. What I up, could, look? What up? Chunk. I can say that I've missed five bike nights in fucking three years, four years. Every week. Yeah, because every week. At least Ferris Wheelers had fucking barbecue and shit. Uh, Ferris Wheelers was a good fucking uh, place to go during the pandemic. But Ask Jace how many more followers he needs before his signature curve becomes an autograph. <laughs> Who is that? Is that fucking Carlos? <laughs> <laughs> First off, I don't signature anything, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> I love Carlos. I love Carlos. And him, dude, him, that's the guys I want to fuck. Dude, he has this fucking you gotta joke. Fuck with this. He has this joke that was so funny. He, Carlos is the most driest humor motherfucker in the world. Yes. And he's like, he's a great person. <laughs> <laughs> so she's about to Uber to bike night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I used to Uber to bike night. That's what Matt said. Yeah. Why? Why are you got so many haters? Why? why they don't like, hate me. They why just, are they roasting they you? They hate right me because they ain't me, bro. Ain't me, <laughs> so why? Uh, why y'all roasting Jace right now? Oh, why? No, you know, fuck it. Keep it coming because it's entertainment. So uh, in 2017. Me, Carlos, and a whole lot of... I, I just built that bike, the the FXR up there, right? And all right. Uh, we all go to fucking um, Rot Rally because they invited all these people and What's Carlos... What's your favorite part about Rot Rally? None of it. You don't like the parade through Congress to downtown? You didn't do that little fucking... No, that shit's gay as AIDS. First off, do you know the person that's a part of the new Rot Rally? There's a new Rot Rally? Yeah. This year, it apparently somebody from... Uh, Austin Speed Shot bought rot, rot Rally. We humbling up in here. What the fuck is that, V? Uh, you, you hang out with That's what people. Matt said. That's your painter, right? <laughs> 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 if you guys could have seen Jason's face right now. Now, <clears throat> your, I, your boys, your, your West Coast Chopper dudes, they the apparently they bought. Uh, no shit. Somebody, somebody apparently bought Rot Rally from Austin Speed Shop. That's what I got. Lone Star, Lone, you talking about Lone Star Roundup? Lone Star Rally is uh, Galveston. The Galveston, yeah. yeah. What are you talking about? Rot Rally is Austin. Yeah, you and think the shop bought that? No, not the shop. Somebody there that worked there bought that rally because Patrick, somebody at Patrick's uh, or actually at Dump Roti? Truck, Dump Truck was working there. Not no more. Uh, not no more. Oh, I heard. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Um, JC, a football fan? What? <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> want to see if we're going to go watch Cowboys game this weekend. No. Okay. I, I, I'll watch the Cowboys when they get to the playoffs and they get past the first round. See, Gary will like you again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to involve myself in their bullshit until they get past. <laughs> This a is this is where people should stop watch or start watching right now because we're fucking hammered. <laughs> yeah, dude. Welcome to my fucking shit show. What's up, Anthony? Oh shit! <laughs> You're doing a bad job at that. Yeah, fuck it. I try to wave at somebody. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rob Rally uh, is a shit show now. Did you go last year? No. Did you go to Lone Star? No. Did you go to Sturgis? You went yes, to Sturgis? I go to Sturgis every year. Dude, Sturgis is shit, right? That, that's the, the best. fucking mecca. Um, when, when I fucking... Dude, I went to Sturgis for the first time um, last year, and I took my FXR. Yeah. Like, I, I've been wanting to go to Sturgis forever, but I never wanted to go on like some bullshit-ass bike. Like, I didn't want to rent a bagger or, like, buy a road glide or, like, not that there's anything against it. Just me personally. I have, like, personal standards for myself, which I think There's an experience are, of riding an FXR to Sturgis. Yeah. Like, I feel like, uh, I feel, I feel like, 
It's a, it, I'm a better person because I wrote an epic Star Wars series. What I'm gonna say? No, here's the deal. I, I I am on your level. I'm on your boat, right there. If you're gonna what go search boat, like banana boat. Yeah, if that's what it is, that's what you want to call your FXR. I didn't get off my banana boat. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Riding, riding an FXR to Sturgis. We we've been current with like viewers. They haven't left yet. Yeah. I don't understand. Now they're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Calm down. If you start talking to them, they fucking leave. If you just don't act like they're not there. But no, if you riding an FXR to Sturgis is a, uh, it's a religious experience. It one hundred percent. Okay, it really is. So it really fucking. So I, is. I'd never been to Sturgis before. My buddy Derek was like. You know, me and him work together now. He's a phenomenal fucking mechanic. He's like, we're going to go to Sturgis. So I'm like, I never thought it was a possibility. You know, because you always because I've been in bike shops my whole life and shit. And I was always like, you always work through Sturgis. You work at the bike rush. You get the shit ready. And I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to go. My buddy Josh gave me a killer fucking deal, all right, on this FXR. He had red tins on it. My buddy Bishop had the orange tins on it. Take another shot. Eddie Farrell. All right, Eddie Farrell is for you. And if you meet him, he's going to be back here in town. He's, he's one of our is homies he, from Cali. Does he Cali. know Derek Farrell? No, he <laughs> So the you know joke Derek is Farrell? that he's the drug connect. <laughs> <laughs> he he changed his name because I snitched him out last time, but now I had to snitch him out again. <laughs> hey, Eddie, bring the fucking mushrooms or don't fucking come, dude. Bring the baby powder, you know what I'm He's a about? fucking... He's an awesome dude. And, uh... So, I was like, all right, Serious I'm going to go to Sturgis. I'm going to go to Sturgis, right? <laughs> Do I got to send you five bucks? I <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm going to go to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, man. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. So, I went out there, but I was like, man, my boy's got a fucking... Road, Road King with the RT fairing, built his whole bike up and shit. Um, two weeks before that, I blew my fucking motor up. Sometimes I get emotional and I take it out on my motorcycle. So I don't fight people. I don't talk shit to people. But if I'm mad, I go beat the, f I go ride the fuck out of my bikes, man. Dallas Tollway, 635 Tollway, that bridge. Yeah. You flip, dude, if, you, if you're from Dallas and you haven't been underneath 635, that Tollway, you can max your shit out. You will not. You will not max it out. Yeah. On a bike that I've been on, my FXR, I'm fucking pushing it right. Starts makes a weird pinging noise. Starts blowing white smoke, and I'm like, God, fuck, fuck. Pull over, go to the gas station, check the oil. Oil level's good. Give us some revs. White smoke, and I'm like, I fucking blew my motor. And I'm going to Sturgis in four weeks. Go home, Jason Quigley. My dog. Yeah. I go, hey, man, I know my two years here is coming up. I don't want to raise. Will you just front me like a whole top end and, like, figure it out and I'll pay you for it? Like, I don't give, like, money to me. Yeah, you need money to survive, right? But the wealth of friendship and the knowledge of friendship, and it's, like, who you fuck with. That really fucks with you. If, if you're hungry and you ain't got a homie that's going to buy you lunch, you got to find new friends. Yeah. But it's not because you're not hustling. It's not because you're not trying. My motor, I mean, it, it, it's it's who you fuck with. Jason, I'll buy you lunch any week because I know you're a hustler. I know you're on your shit. Like, you know, like, we, you got to take care of each other. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's in life. Life is fucking hard. You find the people that fuck with you and you fuck with them. And you don't fuck them over. That's 100%. as simple as it gets. Gary. I don't. I would never fuck you over, dude. Come do a podcast with me, <laughs> Gary Queen. It's like customs to <laughs> to the loading gate. Chase wants to talk to you. I just want to fucking. I dude, just want to talk to you. I just want to fucking like love you, know. baby. Anyway, no, I know what so, you're saying. Like so, if you if, if so you, I blew his motor up, right? So I hit up my Jason Quigley, owner of Dream Machines in Texas. If you guys need a deal on a fucking used bike, hit up Quigley. Telling you, motherfucker got fire. So. He hooks me up. He goes, get whatever you want, put it on put it on your fucking ticket. We'll figure it out later. So I order all the shit that I want for my motor, force pistons, SNS shit. I hit up some dude at SNS and I'm like, hey man, I used to be cool and work at a cool shop and now I'm lame and I just do my own shit. Send me some free shit. They don't send you free shit when you're doing your own shit. 
Yeah. Sometimes they do, but they didn't me. Whatever. And I, I'm being a hater right now because I'm drinking. So, <laughs> so I get my shit together. Shout out SNS uh, sponsor of this podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> they are. But, hey, we gotta get feeling on here because they sent me some shit. Yeah. <laughs> SNS, <laughs> hey, holler at your boy. Those adjustable push rods, they're 100. <laughs> they're the great. SNS shorty, quick, quick, quick release. Everybody has SNS in their shit. It, it, oh, yeah, my, my shovel head, all SNS. SNS cam, tappets, rockers, yeah. great shit. Um, anyway, they haven't been around for 100 years if they they sucked. You know what I mean? SNS is great shit. He's got to pay for it. And uh, <laughs> my buddy Aaron all, Oliver, he does random shit for us. He goes, hey, I ran out of cabin out in Fredericksburg. We're going to go ride there. I just rebuilt my motor, and I know I'm going to Sturgis. And I was like, well, fuck, man. I don't want to just take a rebuilt motor to Sturgis. If we're going to go to Fredericksburg, let's do it. Fuck it. Aaron Finnan, my boy, he fucking, we, he's on his bagger. I'm on my FXR. And we ride down to Fredericksburg to just, I just want to see, I just want to break this motor in. And, man, he took, like, you ever get a homie that takes a picture? I love when pe- people take pictures of me on my motorcycle riding it. Because no matter how many drugs you do, no matter how much weed you smoke, coke you do, drinks you drink, whatever. Yeah. The pure, we're, we're, we're biker motherfuckers at heart. The purest form of ecstasy to me is when you're on your motorcycle and you're in it. Like the vibrations through your wrist, your hands, you're breathing with the fucking motor. Yep. Like, one, like it, it, I'm not a musician, but timing with the with you know one two three four one two three four, yeah. and when your cam's hidden and you know when your carb's hidden, you know your push like you 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 can like visual like I'm I'm a mechanic and you're a painter so it's different, but I can visually see the push rod going up and down the valve opening and you know you put those valve keepers in and like it just it's just it's 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 a fucking euphoric experience to me man and you're just riding this bike but buddy aaron took a picture of me in my fxr when i'm riding it to fredericksburg and it was it's glory to me i want like shit man you got amazing pictures of yourself here in your shop and it's it's, i want that picture of me on my fxr like printed out because i'm inspired by your shit and that's what it should be. Your yeah. friends should expire. Your friends should impress you and ex- and inspire you to do greater shit with your own shit, you know? And so I took that bike to Fredericksburg. We had a great time. And I rode that bike to Sturgis. <clears throat> rode to Yellowstone, you know. I remember went that. Went to JP's house. JP, JP Rodman, shout out, homie. Like, JP let me fucking Raton. stay. Raton. Raton, hell yeah. Fucking, uh, what's up, Steve? Young jock dance. <laughs> so, you know, I say, JP, let me stay in his house. And you know, JP, yeah. that guy's a fucking animal. But he builds. He's some a the, pioneer. What he did. Dude, he built some of the craziest yeah. shit. Like that dealership they got. If you guys have never been to Run Over Tone, please go there. Check that shit out. And if you haven't been to Yellow Rose Canyon either, and he's sexist, do yourself a favor. Go check that shit out. Yeah. Um, Speaking of Yellow Rose Canyon, I. So, Michael Lichter, you know who he is, right? The guy that fell off a motorcycle? Michael Lichter? <laughs> he did fall off a motorcycle. <laughs> I'm sure he has. The I've photographer. Been, uh, yeah. Riders. I, Every goddamn picture I had on my wall, Lichter took when I was a kid. Yeah, you know? man. Like, uh, I'm a little bummed right now because... <laughs> oh, Patty. Talk that shit, baby. Is Patrick talking shit right now? Yeah, it says Robbie. Robbie joined. What's he saying? Rob, Patty said, "Talk that shit." <laughs> so, Hi, Rob. Uh, Lichter, Lichter, allegedly Eddie Farrell, allegedly. <laughs> so Lichter, uh, you know, oh, me, me and Lichter have been talking about doing a podcast for a year now, right? And uh, I hit him up and said, "Hey, man, uh, I I will did drive." You do one for, did you do one with him? No, here this is the story. Okay. After gonna- Sturgis, I said, hey, he's in Boulder, Colorado. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I said, hey, if you're down to do a podcast, I will come this weekend. To Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. After Sturgis. It was like Dude, August. Dude, gorgeous, man. The weed's legal. Dude, I have family in Boulder. It's not a big deal. Like, I'm just, we're going there, right? All right. So I hit him up. I was like, hey, I want to do a podcast with you. You're, I'm a photographer. I'm a painter. I'm in the motorcycle industry. I'm a huge. 
Huge fan of you. Right. Lictor uh, should know who you are. He does. He knows who the fuck did I he, am. Did he did he big doggy? He did big dog me, dude. He big dick to you. And I and I was like You should have went to Henderson. He was out shooting Randy shit. Fuck Henderson. <laughs> I'm here in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> and I have more followers than he does, so he can fucking suck my dick in that situation. I got to shout out Andy Tattoo. That's my boy, Randy Adams, man. That's Dude, I hit him you up. You know Andy, Andy Martinez? No. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm talking Go about ahead. fucking... Michael Lichter. So what happened? He fucking hit you up. He fucked you and fucking Henderson. He didn't fuck me. I just like... I'm like, dude, like I'm a as a photographer and a guy... You take great pictures, too. As long as a lot of you don't know, you got to follow Jason's... <laughs> Look at my boy double cup and ah, you gotta follow Jason's fast life shit, man. Like he does great shit. As a photographer in the motorcycle industry, all I want to do is like show love to Michael Lichter because he is the OG in all this photography shit with motorcycles, right? And so my thing was, hey, dude, I will leave Dallas and drive straight to you. All I want to do is fucking share your to story. Go to Boulder. Yeah, I want to share your story. What was he doing in Boulder? That's where he lives. No shit. Yeah. Out of all the places. I would live in Texas. He's liberal as fuck, dude. Oh. You didn't know that? Oh. Talk is to Dan he, about that. You see Beto's running for governor? I'm like, you fucking loser. You couldn't yeah, win good a fucking luck. center. Good race. luck with that <laughs> shit. But shit. no, I... Hey, I we're going to lose all our shit. <laughs> I love, I love Lichter. Lichter is a... Uh, he's a mentor of mine. Um, hey, did you get a chance to talk to him? Uh, we've talked quite a few times. So are you guys friends now? No, not yet. So, so, hold on, I'm sorry. So you never see so went out to Boulder. You never went. No, not yet. Um, this is this is the thing that fucking sucks about being in this world, right? Look at me, my while I'm telling you this story. <laughs> Take your pants off. Uh, okay, that's the only way I can look in your eyes. So, unfortunately, with this industry, um, <laughs> Beto couldn't fill a Denny's. Hell yeah. <laughs> The world we live in is uh, the world I live in is Legos, waffles, and motors and FXRs. I don't disagree with you, but uh, when you uh, anyway, I'm sorry. When you're trying to bridge the gap between a guy like Lichter and the guy and, and the industry that we're in right now, what happened? Okay, what happened? The industry we live in right now does not know who Lichter is. They know who really? Chopsky is. Chopsky is the fucking. Photo guy. I don't even know that. I don't know who that is. Yeah, I, guess what? You know, I'm too busy watching porn. Up. <laughs> exactly, porn up is a fucking addictive thing. You're probably following James Dean, uh, but who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I know you Rebel. follow his fucking channel. <laughs> only because what's her name, man? Fuck the two that got beat up. She's so fucking hot. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea. I don't follow porn up that 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 heavy. It's because I'm married and have a family nearby. Exactly. Loves me. Yeah. I go home, smoke. <laughs> Walk right when into that get- trap, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you like a little fly trap. No, but, you know, like uh, everybody. What's her name? Chrissy Mack. Chrissy Mack. Yeah. She's she's not even relevant anymore in the porn hub game. She ain't even the top 100, 100 anymore. No shit. No. No, dude. We did we did a Patreon podcast the other day. We like dive down deep. <laughs> Patty said, "Oh, um, Christy Mac." <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. We did a deep dive and find out who was uh, popular and uh, the fact that Patty, like, you're right. <laughs> yeah, Chris, Moose, yeah, Moose, Christy Moose, Mac. I'm glad all our homies. Are we get Christy it. You Mac. jerk off. Yeah, we get it. You know Don't be mean? mad, dog. Chris I'm not Mac's, mad. Hey, Christy Mac's so fun. Who the fuck jerks off to like? 2019 bitches. They were still fun in that era, in that time. Dude, I'm I'm into the new era chicks, dude. Like, if I'm a jerk off. New era chicks? Yeah, dude. You on Pornhub lately? I'm a 5150 kind of guy. No. Danica Mori? No, let me get a pen out. Write this shit down. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta get get with the fucking Anyway, Michael Lichter, fuck him, right? That's what we're saying? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, Michael Lichter is the OG in the game, and all I want to do is... uh, I want the younger audience that I have to understand his relevance. Oh, dude, go to go to fucking uh, go to old bike shops. Go to go to swap meets. Go to swap meets. Buy these old magazines. Nobody's gonna do that. Why not, man? Because nobody's fucking gonna do that. I would do that shit. You know how many people listen? I still do that shit. 
He just wrap, like wrap your head around about this. Like wrap your head around this real quick. Okay. The people that like what we do, they don't live in a world where this shit's available. Like Dallas Fort Worth is a very different different market. We have Oh dude, it's 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 insane. If you've lived outside of Dallas Fort Worth and you come back, it's insane. It's like live, laugh, love and biker shit. Like it's in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> so People that want to get involved in this thing, like you look at like uh, we we have a very diverse world right here in Dallas Fort Worth, where we have guys like Rick Fairless, who has been uh, a staple in the chopper community for forever. I but appreciate what Rick does for the motorcycle community. I one hundred percent. He's got a place for us to go hang out, and it's crazy he won't do my podcast because <laughs> some weird reason uh, this guy named Gary Queen. So. <laughs> He's not lying. <laughs> Patrick, I'm not gonna re, re, I'm not gonna re say that, but that's fucking funny as fuck. Hundred percent. You're right. You're right, Patty. You're right. <laughs> One time from when we pack, go Saints. Hey, but, what's up, uh, Gabe? You know. I'm trying to, uh, you know, I, I'm not trying to do shit. I'm just trying to fucking do this, right? No, but I'm I, trying to bring everybody that's willing to do it. Dude, you're doing a great, you're doing a great job. I, I'm trying, dude. You know what makes sense? You know what's weird is I'm I can. Like I, I, us. Yeah. Okay, we get it. You're from the hood. <laughs> Three sixteen was just. Kidding. <laughs> hey, follow this dude. He's a fucking. He's from the hood. Uh, you want I do up? a podcast and I go to fucking Phoenix and I sit down with dude, guys. Dude, you do like, an interview. This is how we're stirring shit. Look at these microphones. I see motherfuckers do podcasts like tape recorders and duct tape and shit. This is legit shit. If you ever get a chance to do a podcast on fucking Jason shit, do it. He will treat you like royalty and it's a fucking good time. I won't treat you like royalty racing though. <laughs> I wish you would because Patty treats me great. But and anyway, wrist guards. But we. Uh, <laughs> We've uh we we've done fucking uh we I, I've sat down with people in the end you know it's funny when I, I I went to Rick Fairless I was like hey man uh Robbie you're a beast I've airbrushed a lot of Rick Fairless's shit his bikes his yeah cars. but if he paid for it he did it right exactly uh, Rick Fairless actually airbrushed that I'm not talking shit about Rick Fairless but also uh, you know I became as we talk shit about Rick Fairless. <laughs> You know, we, we became this kind of thing in Dallas Fort Worth where we, we brought people on Harleys together to do events. And Strokers is a Strokers is a place that has a dope opportunity to be a much bigger player in our game. I th- I think I think the time is I don't know, man. Dude, you know, for the people Let me ask you this. Let me people, ask you this. If people are still listening to this. He offered me a job there, right? My buddy Jeff Milburn. Who Why would you go there? You know who Milburn is? Jeff yeah. Milburn? I know all about him. I don't know him personally, but I know all about him. Jeff's one of my life coaches. They go to him when I have, like, shit. And I go, uh, hey, Jeff, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about going. To, this guy offered me a job. I mean, he wants me to go build bikes and shit. I think it sounds like a good idea. And he goes, you're going to go work at a bar? And I was like, damn, dog, I never looked at it like that. But you're right. Like, real motherfuckers that build shit. Jesse ain't got no fucking bar. Like, Patty ain't got no bar. Chopper Dave's shopping ain't got no bar. Like, they're bike guys. They do bikes. You know? <clears throat> and I was like, fuck that. Yeah, I'm not going to do that shit. Mil- I don't been a he-go hit. Mil- Jeff Milburn, he... He's an OG in Dallas Fort Worth. A lot of people don't know about that guy. Exactly. They need to. I I want I, I want to I want to reach out to him. Uh, one of yeah, my close friends, dude, Matt, I got you. Jeff has Matt uh, North Texas T bars. He's a good friend with Milburn for sure. Milburn and, is the uh, fucking man, dude. Like he's a saint. Like he's he's like he's brought me he's brought my fucking shit to like a level to where where like you think you're the shit and then you go to Milburn's. And then you see his shit. Yeah. And you're like, fuck, I haven't even, like, scraped the curb of this shit. But we went to, me and him, we, me and him used to see the movies all the time. And we still, sh- he's still one of my best friends. Eatsies is our place, right? I love Jeff. Eatsies. Eatsies, yeah, dude. What's, the the, the, the one pizza, off Lovers. The pizza spot? 
No, eats is a pizza spot. Eats is off of lovers. Yeah, it's like they got all kinds of shit. They make sandwiches. I, I'm, I'm, I'll take you there. I'll take you there. <laughs> Jeff, we uh, we went to go see what was that movie with Tarantino with DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. Uh, once upon a time. Once upon a time, Hollywood, right? Yeah. So me and fucking me and Milburn, we brought our shovel heads. We went to one time at the Texas Theater in Oak Cliff. If you've ever been to Oak Cliff, Texas Theater, go there. We go there, and I'm sitting there watching a movie, right? If you've never seen One Spot Time in Hollywood, sorry, it's a spoiler, but it's about a stunt guy and the Charlie Manson era, all this shit. I'm yeah. sitting there, and I go, holy fuck. I'm sitting here watching a movie about a stunt guy in Hollywood with the stunt guy in Hollywood because Jeff was on, like, four. Ford vs. Ferrari, like, he's in that movie. Like, you see him in, like, the shit. Yeah. And sometimes I take advantage of the, of the shit that I'm in. Or, like, I don't I don't seize the moment as much as I should. And that's one of the things that, like, that I want to iterate really bad. Because stop and smell the roses, man. Stop and smell the roses. Appreciate, like, this moment that we're in. Dude, I'm yeah. having a fucking blast right now talking shit. My boys are on the fucking live talking shit. My boy, our, our homies are on this shit. Like, message, Michael Lichter is the reason. Come on, Moose. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, and, and we're just talking shit, having a good time, you know? But, like, this is the shit that you got to cherish. Yeah. And so, like, with Melbourne, he ain't going to be around forever. We're not going to be around forever. So, you got to take these, like, little fucking entities like little fucking oatmeal cookies, man. You eat those motherfuckers, little Debbies, and you love them. And then they're gone. Yep. Dude, I don't know, man. I should have like, took uh, all the shots. Thanks, Eddie, for real. Take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> We're drunk now. No, uh, Loaded. Wait, wait, you're, you're preaching the gospel, man. Like, uh, we have this rich culture here. I don't want this to Jeff end yet. I got to piss. I'm sorry. <sighs> We're on a good turn right now, right? We're, yeah. We're, yeah, we got like we got a couple more minutes. Hey, uh, we we have so we're at. Uh, hey, hold on, I'm gonna go pee. Don't don't leave. I'll be right back. We have a, we have a maximum of thirty more minutes to talk. Okay, I'll be back because this is going so good. Right now. <laughs> look, look, look at this. Look, look, look. Ah. <laughs> Hurry up. I'm being serious. Did you leave your shit alive? Hey, what's up, guys? Are you having fun? Twelve of you. Where are you guys from on on the Instagram live? Where are you Where are you guys from? What made you like a was? Is it his? Uh, is it his uh, charming personality, or is it his like way with working on things, or like where's it at? Hell yeah! Dude, I agree. Who pisses in the middle of a podcast? I've only had to do it once or twice now, but hey, whatever. <laughs> He is a great dude, and I've, I've had so many great conversations with Awas at Bike Nights. And uh, bringing him on the podcast has been something I wanted to do for the longest, but I just wanted to make sure that we were able to do the best podcast to show who he is 100%. He is a, he's an awesome dude. Uh, uh, Patrick, you don't get to chime in on this. <laughs> he's a great dude. I just wanted to have him on the podcast. You know, he's, he's somebody here in Dallas-Fort Worth. It is making our scene better, so. I never understood the 60 and pregnant thing with uh, you, Patrick. I, di I didn't get that. I want that story. He's coming back. He's coming. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! We didn't piss some people off on us. We didn't. Who, who are we gonna piss off? <laughs> oh, Matt! Hell yeah, Matt! The cat on the lawn. Watch is real deal. Hell yeah, bro! Thank you, baby. 
He is <laughs> When people say when people put something on the on Thank the, you for joining the live, man. I appreciate you guys. When people put something on the YouTube and it says, and it says message, message retracted. It's because they talk shit and like to you. I feel like it, like there's something the worst. I feel like they said to fuck my mom or Nick, some shit. Nick, come Nick, on. Nick, what's up, but, dude? What's up, bro? Nick. Oh, shit. Matt the Cat. You, you ever listen to 1100 Springs? Who? 1100 Springs. It's a band, country band. No. Fucking, they're, they're retiring this year. Matt the Cat, the lead singer. We got They should probably not time. retire if they just. Dude, they've been around for like, they've been around for a while. He pulled a gun on me one time. But <laughs> oh, shit. What's up, Chunk? Hey, you know Chunk? What's up, Wazzy and Jay? Senior Pendleton out in the town there tonight. Hey, shit. Let a homie borrow it. <laughs> Andy Tattoo. Bitch, did you have to go squat? <laughs> Lane Hayworth. He's on a sick one. I'm a sick-ass fool, dog. <laughs> Man, uh, that's dude, never happened. What, what do we got to do with Dallas, man? Like, how how do we how do we? Uh, I don't want to say save because Dallas doesn't need to be saved, but how do we take Dallas to another level? Me and you, how do we do this, man? Dude, we just keep doing our same shit, man. Because like the guys that are gonna be around, they're gonna be around. Like, <clears throat> I fucking love it that we could meet up at bike night. I don't talk to you all week. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. I don't know what kind of week you're having. But I know I'm going to see you Tuesday. Yeah. You know, like, I look forward to It's lame as it sounds. Like, I look forward to that shit. Even if I don't go out fucking drinking on that shit. <laughs> oh, Patty put, y'all ain't at T-Bar Tuesday. <laughs> hey, it's a good time. They he should have fucking only know been me here. Sonny. Oh, shit. Uh, hey, Sonny says hi. Sonny, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay yeah. says hi. Sonny's but, a dude. But, like, you know, like, I love Bike Night, man. I love that we have, like, a little community. Because, like, even after, you can post as much shit as you want on social media or, like, talk as much as you want about it or brag about it or whatever you fucking want to do. But only a certain motherfuckers are going to come to the, to the shit. Yeah. And the guys that come to, re like, it's Reno's. It's not like it's a biker bar. It's a metal bar. Yeah. But that doesn't fucking matter. Like. It's a spot where do, it could be a donut shop. It could be Taco Bell. It could be whatever. Yeah. But like, 100%. man, if I fucking if I put a chrome pulley or a new wheel or like I'm stoked to go to bike night to go show you like that's that's one thing like old like I'm not an old guy, but I know older dudes like that's what bike night was for. You go show your homies like what's up like yeah. you're it's not competition. It's It's just like. It's a place it, to go show what you yeah. just did. Jace, I saw your road glide at bike night. Fucking killing. I love your road glide. Yeah, I'm not a bagger guy. I will I'm not gonna buy a road glide, but I appreciate the fuck of what you're doing with your bike, and I get to go to bike night and see it. What's up, Chad? I get to go see that shit. Roaster shop, holler at me. You know, I get to go see that shit. And I'm stoked to see it and fuck with you and talk to you about it because I want to talk to you about something you're passionate about. You see my FXR, you see my Simpson, you see I see the shit you painted. Like, there's only so much shit you can talk online. Yeah. You know? But bike night has always been sacred to me. Like... It's a sacred place, man. It is. It's it's weird, but it is. People, we grew, we're growing I up... I love it. We're growing up, and we are the last generation... You're right. You're absolutely right. ...that experiences right. what it's like to go to a, uh, a parking lot... And, talk and have shit. a night of their life in a it, Walmart parking lot. It's just or like, a Whataburger parking dude, lot. It's it's just like going to it's just like going to like the the street race night when you go to when you go to yeah. any of those parking lots. But now it's like like I love Valence <laughs> had her dad. <laughs> but I like now I love like like your you know, one of the homies got a road glide. I can't I don't know his fucking name, but I know his bike. And that's what bike night's about. I know who rides the purple Dyna. I know his fucking name off the top of my head right now, but I know his fucking bike. Yeah. You know, and you know the homie rides the fucking FXR with flames. Like it's 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 about that shit. And you, and it's not a competition. It's not a bike show. There's no fucking trophies. You're just checking each other's shit out and it's mad love. And I think that's what the industry is missing right now. There 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 are parts of the country. Uh, and, and trust me, I know this because of uh, what we've been doing with the podcast. There are parts of the country that are trying to figure out how to create 
that buzz that we have here. Like the the like minded bikes. Like if you live in fucking let me just Rock Springs, fucking Wyoming, and it's you a want, beautiful place. It is. I've had good times there. You know, there's a lot of strip clubs there that I didn't go to. Uh, Did you go? Yeah. Did you go? No. <laughs> I wanted to. Rock Springs, uh, I got Wyoming, Air, great, I got a, great time. I got an Airbnb in Rock Springs, Wyoming. I got a shitty fucking hotel next to a fucking bar in Rock Springs, Wyoming, and it was a great time. Damn it! I you, you don't have DM me. you don't have a fucking bad time in Rock Springs, Wyoming. I did not had a great time. <laughs> I had a great time as well. I listen to Bruce Springsteen and fucking smoke some weed and shit. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like. There are people that find what we have going on in this in this, in this world of motorcycles, and they're like, "Man, it'd be so fucking rad to be a part of like what's going on in Dallas or what's going on in L.A. or or uh, San Fran or New York or you know, name your city and name your scene, right?" But people that live here, dude, have you ridden in Frisco? Yeah, a lot of times. It's amazing. Anyway, go ahead. Too many people don't realize how important uh, their effort into a bike scene is. Dude, no, it's major work. It's major work, and it's easy to get shit on. You can be a shop. You it's, can be a brand. You can be an individual dude, that, that, that works. But. That's why That's why I fuck with you hard, man, because you put the work in to – because, dog, you live 40 miles away from the shit that you're trying to – you go to a bike night. Like, I went out of my way to come out here tonight because I fucking wanted to, you know, because I fuck with you. You go out of your way to go do that shit because you fuck with us. Like, if it wasn't for guys like you and people that wanted to push it on, there would be no... We'd be going to Stroker's on Sunday. That ain't our shit. I ain't trying to eat fucking five or fucking hamburgers with shredded cheese. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to fuck with real shit. Like, if you fuck with the streets, the streets will fuck with you. And that's, like, goes back to hood mentality. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's real life shit. Like, you putting bikes out on the streets that motherfuckers are going to ride. I'm going to build some shit. I'm going to work on shit. If I build you some shit, put it in the fucking streets. Your helmets, your paint jobs, they're in the fucking streets. The boulevard talks. End of the day, you can build show bikes. You can build shit for magazines. You can build shit for Discovery. All that Fuck all that shit. That shit's garbage to me personally. If your shit's not in the streets and you ain't stunting and you ain't out there fucking repping your shit and you ain't out there trying to be better than next week, if you're an asshole about it, fuck you. But if you're fucking a homie about it and you got a badass bike and some dude's like, hey, man, nice bike. What'd you do to it? And you take the time out to fuck with them and be like, hey, man, this is this is from right here. This is where I got this shit from. This is the guy that did this for me. Like, that's the shit that I'm about, man. Yeah. I used to be about you can't get on my level. Fuck that shit. I'm, I'm untouchable. Fuck that. That's a bullshit mentality. And for the longest time, it doesn't help anybody. Fuck yeah, it doesn't, man. It doesn't. And like, we all you, we all you, build we all build from a level of like. But you got to build from love, man. Because we like do build from love. But if you think about it, like, no matter how much I can do myself, I'm still reliant on absolutely. other bad motherfuckers. Shout those motherfuckers out. Show them love. It's not a one man game. Share man. them before you share yourself. Exactly. It's not a big dick competition. It's not about how. Look, man, I can lace wheels. I can bleed brakes. I can't paint. I can build a frame. I can do all this other shit. But it doesn't fucking matter. It used to matter to me. You know, my boy Drew, you know, Selena's boy, he shot me out. And he goes, what's it fucking matter, man? If you, if you, At some if, point. If your boy paints your shit, you know, and, like, you did the front end on your homie's shit, like, this, this it, is it brings it together. This is one of the biggest questions I have within myself and with I, I ask fucking Patty, the Boulevard talks. Hell yeah, it's three socking, homie. What's up? What's cracking, Patty? This is my biggest question. And I and I asked this to talks. Oops. <laughs> I asked this to uh Jesse James. I asked this to everybody. This this world that we live in right now is is legacies for you, for me, for James, for everybody. Like Patrick, Royal Chi, uh, uh, you know, Carlos, uh, Milburn, and that's everybody. our circle. That's a fucking trip, right? It's crazy, right? But we are those it's a legacy, right? How how much of a – does that matter? Hey, Luke came on. He said, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Does it or does it not? It matters to us. 
so this is this is the contradiction because we can't play this game of of like when it matters and when it doesn't matter because if we're not if we're not out here to uh to create a legacy that people uh grow their their world on because it doesn't uh, abide to us and who we are at the time but then we want to be remembered for what we did like you have to put your arrogance up front and I, I say that not in a bad We're way. We're all cocky motherfuckers. Though. That's what we get We along. earned it. We earned it. I'm we, not going to disagree. <laughs> we earned the fact to be a little bit fucking cocky. But I, I hope that someone that meets me remembers me for being genuine and not cocky. Cocky, I'd rather be cocky is when you get an opportunity and you don't shed love. Right? Cocky. Okay, let me get straight. Cocky is when you get an opportunity and you don't show the love. I agree. You agree? Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. I get a chance to shed the fucking thing I've dreamed my whole life to be at this level, to fucking put my work on this level, and everybody's, like, stoked about it. I'm on a high because I'm finally getting recognized for my fucking work, but then some dude comes on and goes, man, fucking you are the shit. I love where you're at right now. If I don't fucking treat him, I just now made it. I just made it. Right. Now this dude's on my shit like, hey, man, how do I get there? I'm like, dude, I just fucking, I just made it, dude. That's can I fucking, trip. can I, can I get my Super Bowl trophy for a minute? That's, that's a trip. That's though. how quick it changes though, man. That's a trip. Cause the same guy that's asking you like how you made it, like what it took to get there. It's like, I don't know. I've just, cause we've been, we're going to keep the shit that we've been doing and the shit that we're going to keep doing. It's the same. Yeah. We're not going to stop doing it. It's everything else that changes. Like, we've been at car shows, and I've been at car shows, and this was, like, relevant after I worked at West Coast Choppers, was, like, like it doesn't, like, people are going to recognize you, and then they're going to ask you the same fucking shit, but, like, it's up to you on how they perceive you. And for the longest time, it didn't get, I, didn't, like, I don't give a fuck about that shit, but that was my own ego. Yeah. Until you grow. Until you get mature, and then like you fucking, that could be that dude could that could be his only opportunity to meet anyone that's ever done anything. Yeah, you know. And if I'm the guy to crush his fucking dreams and be an asshole, let me to ask him, you this question. I never want to be that guy. Let me ask you this really hard question right now. I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> Not that question. Uh, our heroes were put on a pedestal. To us, we put them on the pedestal. Mm, no. We didn't have to watch gonna, that shit. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm going to go with you. Ask, okay, I'm going to go with let you. Me, let, me, let me finish my story. Okay. Our heroes, hey, Tanner. Hi, Tanner. All right. I'm, I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> our heroes were put on a pedestal. Our Jesse Jameses, our Billy Lanes, our Jeff Milburns, our all these fucking badass fabricators and builders and, and all these people of our, in, our industry. But we seek those guys they out. They were put on a pedestal by a brand, a, a, a world. Milburn kind of wasn't, though. You got to kind of seek him out. Mm. If you Which follow, I, if you follow the story of the the thing, those channels put him on, right? And then those channels went away because social media became a thing. So now social media comes around, and uh, there's no there's nobody to put a was on a pedestal. You got to keep living the the Jesse Dream, James thing. I gotta keep getting. I gotta keep. I'm not saying it in a bad way. No, I'm no, not no, saying I, it in a bad I, no, way. No, no, no. I'm saying you but get to live the opportunity. I'm always that gonna he be created. connected to it, right? Always agree, and that's fine. I'm never gonna shy away from it because it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. The guys that I worked with, the bikes that we built, the shit that we went through. Hundred percent. It was. It was like going to college. It was like no, LeBron going to no Miami. No former fashion you know? is that a is that a. No, I, I, didn't, a I, didn't, dig. I didn't take it that way. Absolutely I think not. it's a it's an amazing opportunity that like I'm jealous of in a sense. I'm jealous of the fact that you got to. You should be jealous because your boy did it. Yeah, you know exactly. You're, you're doing fucking Simpson helmets. I'm jealous of you because I want to be sponsored by Simpson too. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm not jealous of well, here's you. Here's the deal, man. Here's I'm, you, I'm not you know, jealous you of you. It. I'm fucking stoked for you. I'm stoked for you too. But you know what I mean? Like I fucking applaud you for that shit. The thing is, that's real is that shit. All these fucking OGs, these people we revere as uh, really, really fucking that bad are motherfuckers. There's no, there's nobody out there. There's nobody out there to promote us. The game is to be told. You know what I mean? Like the, it will get told. It will get told. But yeah. 
There's nobody out there, Jace. You know what's promoting also? you and me. No, you're and right. People in you know our industry. You know what's fucked we, with our generation too? Magazines are out of print. My buddy Rob Forty Eight, he's doing his shit with classic trucks and trying to promote that magazine. Yeah, but the print is out. You know, like back then, you didn't need social media because, like, you had magazine covers, you had centerfolds. Like, that's what promoted it. Like, that's what you looked for. You went to the stands and you saw this shit. Now, like, you're right. You're absolutely right. There ain't shit but social media now because everything's digital. When's the last time you went to a digital magazine site? Yeah, this is what's fucked up about it, right? Never. Like, I'll go that shit. This, this is where I'm, I'm fucked in my head right now because right. I'm in a world where I am influenced by Jesse James and all these fucking builders of the 2000 early era. And and now, now, now I'm a fucking man. I'm a fucking grown-ass man with the skill that you, even they can't fuck with. You know what I mean? I'll fuck with any painter from the early 2000s, and I'll fucking pull my dick on the table and say, fuck with me. <laughs> Give me a hammer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying that with respect. For I'm sure. I'm saying with respect. For sure, but that was like, your chip on your shoulder, right? That's my chip, right? Yeah. And now I'm sitting right here now, and there's no fucking Discovery Channel coming to look. Like, they will me. if you wanted it, but no, fuck them. No, 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 They're not. I've already tried. I did the pilot. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, they ain't they don't trying pay to fuck with it. me. They don't want. They don't want real. No, they want me to be a fucking. Hey, I'm a fucking biker and fuck you. And yeah, that's not who yeah, I am, yeah, man. I get it. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. No, I've I already it. tried that I've shit. Been there. Yeah, that world. There's nobody there. There's nobody there to promote me and you. We, we have don't to need it. Our work promotes itself, right? We don't right, but that's how I feel. We're the first generation that had to promote ourselves. I don't think we need to, man, because I think our generation, we had such a chip on our shoulder that we just worked harder. And so, like, our product that we put out, put our name out there. Without the work that you do, this shit wouldn't be possible. You didn't do a podcast first. You fucking busted your ass, you paid your shit, and you made your name for yourself as your craft in your industry first. And then this is an offset of what you did. And now I'm here because of the work you put in. I'm not here because I want to I'm talk about I'm myself. I'm speaking on the fact that uh, I'm speaking on 100 percent of the fact that there are people. I, I, me and you, same boat. We've been in this industry for 20 years. Yeah, 100%. and our, I don't think our goal is ever to get famous. It's it was not just, to get famous, but it was just to be respected. The more the more fame I get, the more I feel bad about the people that I feel like should deserve it more. Yeah, but then you put those guys on. You talk about them like Lil John yeah, Butera yeah. when Lil when, Gary, when Gary comes on the podcast. I hope he does. I hope he does. <laughs> That's my thing. Like I, yeah. I feel so guilty. And I took a chance coming on here because Gary might delete me and say fuck a loss too, yeah. you know? But as of right now, one thing as a man I can say for myself, I have no ill will towards anyone. I got mad love for everyone. Yeah. Even the motherfuckers talking shit about me. I love you. Keep my name in your mouth. It'll make me famous. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, but I don't give a fuck about that shit. When I die, I want my legacy to be... That dude was a good fucking dude. Yeah. That dude helped people out. Fuck motorcycles. I want motorcycles to be down the list of the shit that I did. Yeah. I want to be a good man. When you when you start to think about your legacy as you grow older and you yeah. think about the fact that I you're... I want to be a good man. You're Dallas-Fort Worth, right? When you think about I want to rep Dallas. Dallas. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 Absolutely. When you start thinking about, like, that, that's, one, that's a new thing for me, man. Like, I just got to this point... In the last couple of months where I really started, we started doing hood rides here and bringing people from all over the country to fucking do yeah. debauchery here in Dallas. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I have the biggest names in the, in the fucking bike scene coming here to fucking ride bikes. It's all perspective too, though. You it know? is perspective on me. I'm thinking like. It's guys you respect coming out of fuck with you. And that's a win for you. But I also want the people that fucking laid the fucking concrete to be getting some love. Like, we, we started our last hood ride. We started at Strokers. And I wanted right. ended at Strokers. So, I wanted to do our, our event. And I wanted to end at Strokers, right? All right. Strokers, uh, Rick Dude, but Fairless. you guys brought out a bunch of people for that shit. We did. Uh, and our, our, demographic, our demographic is younger. Irving Firefighter, shout out, man. You guys, thank you guys. I, I'll... I don't want I don't want Rick Fairless's business business. No, I, I what I want to do. I definitely don't want his business. Yeah, I don't, I don't want, want a bunch of big dog mother. Big you know what I want to do? <laughs> I want to be the guy that helped Rick Fairless.
keep his bar open and his bike shop open for the next 20 years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Need some more? Yes, please. FOT Harlow, fuck yeah, man. I want no, that. Absolutely, because I res- Rick's not a bike builder, you know? And that's not talking shit. He don't build shit. Yeah. He's not a bike builder. But I respect him for what he's done for the industry, you know? He's he's put motherfuckers on, and he's kept the he's kept the place open where guys can go fucking hang out on Sunday. Yep. And that's phenomenal. Down went to high school with his daughter. You yeah. know, Rick hit me up for a job, man, and I and I was. I used like, to have a crush on one of his daughters. Which one? Uh, Lena. Uh, all right. Yeah. yeah. She used to give me lotion in like eighth grade when I was starting getting like hand folk tattoos and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, I I painted a. A truck for him. Uh, actually, I painted for Gary, but uh, he Gary paid me to paint it instead of Rick knowing. And Which it was truck? it was a uh, uh, like an '85 suburban, all red. Okay, this it was is like before. A, it's like oh seven oh six, and uh, at the time, like hey, I was, Kenzo, I love you. I was really into a uh, Lena, and uh, oh, six seven, Okay, I was. I don't know. I was like. Right when the whole biker build off thing happened, and then before you know the TV- Scully and shit, yeah, yeah, he does he still work Jack, up there? No, no. he doesn't still work at uh, uh, no, no. no, what was it? What was the thing called? There was like a team that, that used to be Rick Ferris's team, it used to be a name for I didn't it. Know there was varsity and JP, <laughs> he had a team name for his fucking bike builders at the uh, shop at Fairless. It used to be like the uh, something, something. Did team. you know Trent? Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace to Trent. He was a good dude. Yeah, it's it's a wild one, man. Dallas, Dallas really hey, has. Sure, what's up, Pompa? Shout out to the blue collar workers, dirty hands, clean money. Hell yeah! Cheers. Man. Dallas has a lot of fucking uh, people, man. Like we we really do have a lot more involved in the nationwide fucking spectrum. But yeah, we need to work. T- I mean, not even work together. Like I'm glad we're fuck with each other. Like this is respect, man. Dude, all Thank I want to do, man. All I fucking all I want to do, do is zoom, 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 in the boom, boom. You know what I mean? Uh, all I really want to do is like put everybody. Oh shit! What's up, Chuck? Everybody, I can, man. I asked Rick Ferris to do this podcast. You know, he wouldn't do it because he's friends with Gary. He didn't want to fucking ruin that relationship. I started hosting events and I would Damn, do them. Really? I would do them at Gary. I, I would. Uh, I started doing events and I would uh, start. I tried to reach out, reach out, reach out to Rick and say, "Hey, I, I want to do like, this there." I feel like if people saw how much effort you put into what you're doing. You don't need to do this. That's what I love I about it. I gain. Here's the deal. You don't make it you, for the people in Dallas. Like, here's the deal. When, when, don't get me wrong. When you come on, when anybody comes on this podcast, it helps me hundred percent. I, right, right, I right. benefit from you and your fo- following and the people that fucking fuck with you. Because if if they enjoy the podcast, me and you do together, they're all in fucking loose terror. <laughs> loose terror right now. Yeah. Shout out to Huntsville. Well, but if they that? if they enjoy this and you're like, oh, hey, you our know. average watch time went up when we started talking shit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> when uh, when when people see, oh man, maybe I like this podcast. I gain from the fact that maybe you had a few people that that are into what I'm doing right. with this podcast, right? The thing is, is that it's crazy that I can call people. I'll wait. <laughs> Pat said Chase making that OnlyFans money. <laughs> the fuck did you say? Patty, go Saints. <laughs> what did you say? OnlyFans money. Yeah. Hey. I'm trying to get an exhaust, dude. <laughs> fuck with me. I got that OnlyFans money. Um, <laughs> the thing is, like, when you start, like, doing podcasts with people in the industry, like... We were going somewhere serious. I'm sorry. It, it, when you... Just the way you said that is like it's not serious anymore. Because um, Patrick, it makes everything yeah, hilarious. And Patrick, right? Um, when I sit down with people in the industry, from from Yaffe to Ness, the you know Corey Ness, Zach Ness, uh, everybody that I've had the opportunity to sit down with, and then I come back to Dallas and I'm treated like a fucking peasant. I hope I've never treated you that way. You haven't. Okay, good. And I'm not saying that I want to be treated differently, but when I am like, hey, Rick, 
I want to do a podcast. I want to show the world. I want to expose the world to your real story, the the one that you haven't sold yet, the one that you have. He's a paint salesman. Exactly. You know, we're for Sherman Williams, and then sell motorcycles. Yeah. That motherfucker ain't built shit. So he, <laughs> yeah, he he did I mean, a podcast with Dan. Truth. He did a podcast with Dan. It was great. It was a great podcast. Here's the deal. Me and Dan, Dan Dan's a fucking amazing podcast guy. Dan's right. a great writer, too. I figured He's that a great out. writer. Dan yeah. is, I think in the podcast world of motorcycles, it all came out of Dallas-Fort Worth. Me and Dan. We we're the best. Dan. Yeah, because um, who else is doing one? On our level, nobody. I'm very picky of who I fuck with, right? And I respect your shit. And I don't know, man. Like your vibe, I vibed you out, and like your vibe is great. Cause like we, cause like there was like mutual shit of like the guys that we know that you know, like you said, like I, you would love to have Gary on here, and like I fuck with Gary, and you fuck with Gary, and a lot of the homies that we fuck with fuck with Gary. And I was like, man, should I do Jace's Jace's podcast? Should I do this shit? And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I fuck with Jace. His vibe is fucking 100 with me. We're at Ferris Wheelers eating, breaking bread together. If I break bread with you, if I eat a meal with you, like, that shit means, that shit holds fucking water with me. Like, we I, had some good conversations. That absolutely. I'm just now remembering that shit. Fuck yeah, man. Cause I was fucked up. You were both <laughs> fucked up. Fucking but, fucked like, up conversations. But, but we talk real shit with That's each really other. when we met, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you know because <laughs> you put remember it, that shit because you put it on the table. I put yeah. it on the table and we t- we break bread together yeah. and you talk shit together. But that's what led I to wear, this I shit. I wear my life on my sleeve though, dude. Fucking all the way, man. Yeah. Like it, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna die one day if I go home and ride my motorcycle on the way home from this podcast, or whatever, and I get smoked by an eighteen wheeler or whatever. I died an honest motherfucker that told the truth that didn't fucking bullshit. You know when we met and I got your vibe. You're one of those dudes. You're trying to better yourself, and you're about your family. Family means a lot to me, man. Like Toretta. <laughs> going back to Fast and Furious. <laughs> we going to space, motherfucker? No, bitch. You, you brought it up. Like, you're off. Uh, <laughs> it's your... <laughs> Stacey! Okay, okay. Big mom, Stacy. Okay, this is my homegirl. She works at Ratty Adams. She's married to my boy, Andy, right? Stacy Martinez. I was at her. She has a ranch in fucking Grandview, Texas. I spent the night out there one night. Me and her husband, Andy, he's a tattooer, Randy Adams. We're playing PlayStation one night, and I fucking crash out. I fall asleep. I wake up, and there's nine fucking pink dildos around me. And I'm like, God damn, what the fuck? And it was goddamn Stacy. Me and her have matching tattoos. Hold on. Go alive. Still got it, baby. It's like a dude fucking a chick, doggy style. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, big mom. Thank you. That's awesome, man. No, but like, it's fucking ridiculous. But no, but we, but I fuck with you, man. Cause like, you're right, man. Cause like, you're like, cause you told me about that other homie that like, you put her on and another guy was like, fuck this. I'm not fucking with her no more. And I knew about that shit. Yeah. But I always. My pimp daddy surfer. And I always, and I always like fucking took it to like, you know what? If I'm gonna fuck with Jace, I'm gonna do it wholeheartedly. I'm not gonna fuck around. I'm not gonna go bullshit. I'm gonna be one hundred. But we vibe each other out. And I was like, you know what, man? This dude's trying to do some shit for the community. Like yeah. the the Dallas community. If you weren't doing bike night there, who the fuck what would we do? Go to fucking the cottage? Fuck yeah. out of here. I mean, okay. not that it's a bad place. <laughs> it's a fucking horrible place, by the way. <laughs> not that it's a bad place. That, I just cottage, don't want to face the some cottage, girls in like, cocaine dude. and wash my body. <laughs> you know what a utopia is to me? Um, yes. <laughs> so we, we have you a couple. Co- no, you got it, bro. You want, Big Mom, Stacy, here's to you. Love you, baby. <laughs> We Cheers, have a, uh, we have you know we have uh, the 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 West Dallas thing with the Jackson, or 
Jefferson Street going on. That's Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff. If you guys are in the Low Riders and you want to go, if even if you're not, but the Last Stand, the the Taco Joint, I love they, those guys. They yeah. do they good. They do a great job of making it uh, welcome to bikers showing up on their bikes. Nah, great guys hanging out, get some tacos, get a good vibe of the fucking scene. Um, we just we you know the thing is like I got to a level where the Rick Fairless. Uh, lineage, lineages, uh huh. And when we're here in Dallas, I go there. It's like, hey, I'm bringing people to your establishment. That's right. all it is. Hey, I'm showing up here with 20 people. Like we're drinking your beer. Right. Like, hey, I'm. You're welcome. Right. But then next thing you know, I'm sitting at a Michael Lichter show in Sturgis, and I'm like, oh, hey, Rick. Hey, Lena, the girl I used to fucking crush on. <laughs> 15 years ago that you thought was a piece of shit and would never Aww. be never be attractive enough for you blah 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 whatever I'm still probably not yeah but your wife's smoking hot now so yeah, yeah, yeah yeah fuck with and that and she's super nice Brilliant. I am is a fucking angel your wife I got I got a fuck I definitely fucking you you knocked it out of the park dude, dude I'm, I'm I didn't know she shit. was I didn't know she was married to you and I was at the fucking uh, the last day and shit, and she was working the the place. She was cutting hair, brass sacks. Yeah, and she was just a genuine human. We bullshitted. We talked about Elliot. My boy Elliot was working there and shit at the time, and like she was just a genuine person, man. You know, like you, you did good. My wife is uh, and she was like super she, nice to me. Anybody that's really nice to me and doesn't know who the fuck I am, I hold them at a higher standard. It's it's really weird, and I it, it's not weird. It's weird for me because I never saw my wife this way, but she really is a, uh, she's a staple a hundred percent. Like she's, uh, she's yeah, like, yeah, she busted her ass, man. That's a strong woman. Like that's one thing we take advantage. I mean, not that we take advantage of is like, like I'm single. Like, like I don't have that backbone. Like I feel like not that I'm envious, but I respect you more because, like, you like Dude. y'all take care of each other. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. my boy Manny and his chick, Ashley, like, they fucking Ashley's, bit hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Manny and Ashley are fucking Dude, staple Manny in the Dallas Manny is, like, scene. my fucking life coach on a lot of shit. Ashley's a fucking saint. Like, whenever I need advice about chicks or whatever, I fuck with Ashley. And both those guys fuck with you and Britta. Like, that's what you guys got going on. And that's what makes me respect you guys more. Like it's it's a, like, but all that revolves around motorcycles, and it brings it in. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Shout my, out to Manny Rojas. Love you, brother. Manny and uh, Ashley are the shit. And you know, my wife is. Uh, she doesn't get the she doesn't get the due respect she deserves from. She doesn't. She's me. a fucking angel. I love um, her to death. Like she has been so kind hearted. My my, uh, my life. Has been so. Uh, how do you look at it? Like a, a roller coaster, goddamn no. gravel in a fucking mosh pit. I, I I don't know if I did this in a podcast recently. Maybe a Patreon podcast. I talked about the fact that uh, I when I met my wife, my my career. You went, guys are married, right? We're married. How'd you propose to her? First off, I met her on Instagram. Oh, he DM, he slid her DMs. Exactly, and uh, I actually sent her a meme of a fat kid sliding down a slide. Your first introduction to your wife was a meme. Exactly. Shout it. I am not even lying. This is like podcast history right now. Yeah. So I'm with you. Um, I shot my shot, man. It was uh 2013, uh, and she fucking bit, if you will. And, uh, dude, I, you know, the thing is, like, I've I met so many people in my, my situation, right, that are, what do you mean? struggling to become who they are as a, as a creator, uh, whether it's fabrication, paint, or whatever the case may be. What's up, Cousins by Jason? And I feel like it's when I met my wife that really... That it pushed you, like, it kind of solidified what you were doing it canceled out things in my life that i have to worry about anymore so i could focus on harder things absolutely like my wife made it possible for me to uh focus on being a better painter because you uh, have to fuck with the bullshit anymore yeah 
No, I totally get that. Think about it. it. Think about this, man. When you're single, you're doing you're going to work every day, but then that's when you fin yeah, fucking slayed that fucking bike. All right, what kind of pussy is available for me right now? See, that's the difference. That's the difference. When I when I, like when I when I do something badass, like I I put the best B down. I finish a bracket, right? Like I get to a stopping point on a bike that I'm like completely satisfied with. I don't need anything else. Yeah. That's my d- some of us are fucking uh, from it's not the gods. A knock. It's not a knock. You know, like, that's yeah. how I work. Like, if I don't knock it down like how I want it to, and then I'm like, all right, let's go to the bar. So, ma- so many people. Man, just think about like this. Think about how much how much energy it takes to fucking court yourself to go. Oh, it, absolutely. Every day, if I'm going to work and I'm focused on being the best guy, the best custom painter, the best bike builder, the best podcaster, whatever the case may be, if I know all I have to do is be that guy and then I get to go home to this. We're not those guys. I am. I, I fucking am. No, we want to be the best person. I want to be the best for you. When I think about myself as a podcaster, I don't. It, it, do you ever think of yourself as a podcaster? Recently, yeah, I have. Okay. Um, because uh, as as in the podcast world, like uh, in the motorcycle scene, there's a million people. Be like, seen, not the scene. <laughs> in the podcast world, the only people that uh, not not the only people. Uh, there's a there's a ton of really great podcasts. Yeah, but your podcast it's is all, the shit because your podcast you you interview it's all, real motherfuckers. Yeah, but everybody does. But the not thing really. is about podcasts is that uh, there's you're the only one that I went on. There is uh, deep dives in everything. If you want to be, sure. in, if you want to be in the like the the club culture, you go for the four for the road. That's four a whole for the road world. Yeah, the club culture is like whole it, it's world. it's difficult. It's difficult. So there's a podcast out there, and four for the road is a bunch of motherfuckers that understand it, and you're gonna get to understand that world I'm way better. There's even a podcast about that shit. It's cause... tough, and that's why I bring them up because these motherfuckers. These motherfuckers, they do a fucking fantastic job. Of walking that line. Of walking that line and sharing the information and being respectful. And it's much love to all the club guys out there. You guys Dude, you guys are doing gnarly shit. If I would say, it's other not, than, other than Danger shit. Dan, other than Danger Dan, Four for the Road is it's 100% mine. the other podcast What's up, Wes? that you guys, you guys got to be listening to. Okay. It's a good podcast, 100%. Danger Dan... Um, like myself, because I, I shaped my podcast off of dance. All right. Without a danger, Dan, I'm definitely going to FaceTime you when me and Dan are cruising through fucking New yeah. Mexico or whatever. I've been asking Dan to come back on the podcast dude, and you uh, should definitely do it. Dan's a fucking dude. I ne- we got time. Are we doing that? I got a pee too. I'm pee sorry. Too. I'm sorry. You guys are. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. It, it happens. You drink whiskey, you got to pee. So.
four souls. I'm sorry you guys are still here. What's up, Wes? How you doing, dude? You got to be on the podcast sometime. You're tripping out. Customs by Jason. Who are you? Give him a shout on the podcast. Customs by Jason. Jason Smith. Do Wes, uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready for your fucking wild ass stories, and even the stories I know with you would be wild as fuck. So I'm st- I'm stoked. We do got to do it for sure. What's up, baby? Wes? Oh hell yeah! What's up, baby? Oh shit! <laughs> hey, hell yeah, hell yeah. dude. You should definitely do it, Wes. What's up, Re- what's up, Re- oh Rebecca Davis? What's up, baby? Do Wes? Hey, Rebecca Davis. She's a producer. She's uh she's filming me next weekend to do a to do a. I'm sorry you joined right now because we've been drinking, but she's doing a doc. She does the explain documentaries on Netflix. Uh huh. I hit her. I, I guess I think I sent her your shit for her to come fuck with you. Remember I told you about that? Yeah, but I say fag. <laughs> So, she's never gonna be okay with that. <laughs> they can they can censor most of that shit. No, it's not gonna happen. As much as I would love the opportunity to be on a place like that, hey, I want to get a Simpson helmet. I want you and Logie to collaborate on one for me. That'd be fucking sick. I right. dude, if I could have a chance to collaborate with Loki, um, dude, I have a I have a distorted idea of like Loki's. Beginning, and I feel like my distorted idea is not the truth. To meet him, uh, I feel like we. You met? You fuck with him? You met him? Dude, I I, I don't know because. Dude, we gotta go to lunch <laughs> one day, man. There's this weird thing that took place in Hear like late two thousands, where hey, the sound went out. It's that's on your live. Hey, can you hear me? I like when uh, you're drunk. <laughs> Moose, you get that he should like <laughs> drunk ass. <laughs> hey, this is legit still. We're not no, not too fucked up. Um I, I do fuzz. It's all fuzz. There it goes. Is it good? Can you guys hear it? My live guys, what's up? Can't hear you now. Okay, thanks, Patty. Uh Loki Loki's one of those things that like uh I I feel like I have right, a good. perception of his, of like his my, style? no, 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 my, of we came around in the same time. And I think my idea of, of when he came around and when I did, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it because it might be out of turn because I don't know if it's hundred percent the truth. It's up to you, baby. But I feel like, uh, we came around in this time when Gary jumped on a, uh, a sport bike chat room called Dallas Stunt Riders. Okay, that's beyond my shit because I never fuck with Way that. beyond. And uh, I was, I, I don't want to say the word I'm famous. I don't want to say I'm famous on that, but hey, I was pushing my, I was pushing my brand on that. Okay. And uh, Gary made a lot of people hate me on that, and I probably helped him. In my uh, very young arrogance. Um, what era is this? 08, 09. So you're what, 23, 4? Yeah, 23, fuck. We don't even know what our dicks are doing yet, you know? Yeah, well, I was shaking the beast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, that crown apple's good Ooh, shit. I'll tell you. Hey, put that Topo Chico in there, motherfucker. Hold on, baby. Keep talking. Here's the deal. 100%. Hands to God. Uh, as much as Gary hates me, I would never let that dude starve. I would never let his family starve. I would never... I only get... Do you I would it's... never... I would never ever in my life, if I known that he needed my help, Turn an eye to that dude. 
Yeah. No, absolutely not. No. And uh, I don't know. I, I have no other idea of how to show my gratitude for the fact that if I didn't you meet just Gary. You do what you're doing. Like if you're, I didn't meet him, I would. this podcast would not take place dog, without fucking Gary. Dog, that your Pimp C helmet, your airbrushes for Simpson, you're fucking with industry hitters. This is because of Gary, you know, like Gary, like not. You think if I do is if I do my next helmet, those are my helmets behind you. I know. If I do Gary on my helmet next, you think you'll do a podcast? (laughs) Dog, I think honestly, bro, it's gonna come to a point where you're not gonna fucking need his acceptance anymore. You know, like my fucking dad, man. Yeah, but my dad died. You know what I mean? If he would just die. I'm not gonna say I, I. I'm saying that jokingly right now, and I'm not. I don't mean that. I don't want him to die. Uh, but don't, I just don't die, Gary. I don't but want him still, to. Do, but, but still, you're killing it, man. You're doing your own shit. You don't need him. You know how fucking fuck. Uh, just how crazy it is. Put Gary on a helmet for Junior. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that'd be. Hey, shout out to Gary Junior. Gary Junior. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up with that motherfucker, man. Dude, shout out to Gary Junior. Hundred percent. Cheers. The Queen family. Absolutely. Da- Dallas I, would not be Dallas without the Queen the, family. Absolutely. 100%. Matt the Cat. Deadbeat Tag Club. Bro. Matt the Cat. Dude, if you haven't heard Matt's solo album, These Bones Could Talk, fucking, it's good whiskey drinking music. How are can we, we, how can we, we find that? Yeah, Where, it's on it Spotify. At? Spotify? Yeah, Matt, what's your Spotify? Matt, what song do you want me to play? Matt the Cat? Yeah, uh, it's Matt Hillier. M-A-T-T space H-I-L-L-Y-E-R, I believe. It's my name. Yeah, bitch, I know. I don't know how to spell it right now. Uh, Kill that bottle. Which one? Keegan A. Adcock. I like it when you're drunk. You know that fool? I have no idea. He's like, probably... Dude, our stream's been on for fucking minutes, homie. I'm going to have to cut I, you off here pretty soon. Hey, whatever you got to do, man, but I dig it. Look, 400 playbacks. Dude, the average watch time, I, will, I don't watch it for more than two minutes. That's good. <laughs> so what we usually do about uh, three Sounds out. Is the sound out? Is it good now? This is Matt says the sound was out. Wes says the sound was out. That's on that's on your fucking Instagram live. Is that what it is? Hey, is it, uh, You've been sorry. going Instagram live for like an hour now. What's yeah. it say right now? Hey, is it sound good now? Maybe if I sound What good. does the Instagram live say you've been on live? Uh shit, I don't know. Oh shit, it's going crazy. What if we uh I I can uh I can keep the live going, but yeah, I yeah, yeah, watch the live. If you're not, fuck it, we're good. I can keep the Instagram, uh, I can keep the YouTube live going, but uh, I probably have to. Hold on, I say watch the YouTube. But then, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel the uh, I'm gonna stop the. Uh, <laughs> you recording. broke it, Paul. I'm uh, gonna stop the recording. Do whatever you gotta do, yeah, because we have you. like a three and a half. 345 minute uh cap but i can yeah. keep going on the youtube but then i have to take the other audio and we have to put it somewhere else jace whatever you gotta do i gotta smoke a cigarette <laughs> you can smoke right now fuck you should have told me that earlier i would have brought him up here because you would not have i, I don't you would fuck my my studio up but if you do one or two i know i, I want to respect your shit so we're at three hours and 36 minutes dude how I told you. I said that before we started. <laughs> People like to hear us talk shit. All right, we're back live. Uh, this is a new podcast going on right now. Okay, absolutely. So this right now, it'll be on YouTube, but it's going to end up on Patreon. All right. Oh, All right. we're getting sponsored now, baby. No, you're not. Sound <laughs> is working now. Sound is working now. Come on. <sighs> Jace, somebody's getting paid. Dude, what are we doing, man? We're drunk. Shut up, bitch. No one knows that. <laughs> we are fucking drunk. You're, you're, you know what? I was at the fucking liquor store today in Jim Beam. Just getting started. 
So I Hell bought yeah, I bought right. a bottle. I bought this thing at Jim Beam. And I've never had it. I don't know if I like it or not. Oh, kill the bottle of Crown? Fuck you. This is a lot still. <laughs> kill the fucking Jim Beam. That's where it's. Let's see. Start counting. Let's see how, how long I can go. All right. Go. <laughs> that was a fucking weak ass fool. Yeah, bitch, I gotta drive home. <laughs> I do too. I don't live here. <laughs> you got a little bit further to go. But you're going to the hood. They don't fucking. I do. I know. I know. They don't I pull had, over fucking. Bro, uh, I had a cop. Man, I had a cop. I was smoking a joint. I'm sitting there on Lake June and Jim Miller at 7 Eleven. High as fuck. Smoking a joint, puffing. I look over deep. As an officer from a police department of the city I live in. I look over at this fool. He looks over at me and he goes. And I'm like, no seatbelt, playing Boosie. Uh, actually, I was a little wheezy. I was playing Webby. I was playing Webby. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm lying. I was playing Webby. You're so hood. I'm just saying you're so hood. You get it. I don't want to be that guy. You're hood as fuck, brother. So hood. I don't wear my pants around my... <laughs> so, and then, hold on. so I look back I go shit Cause I, I, I chiefed it bro Hit that shit And I go You know when you I mean I don't know if you smoke weed and shit But I fucking burn like a motherfucker and I, Hey what's up Josh Hey Josh Ask me some questions about Wait, your Wait are you I don't know. Did so you I do fucking, that when you were No no no, no, no. I was, I'm hollering my boys on fucking oh, live okay, yeah. So I fucking hit this shit right I look over It's this fucking PD guy and he looks over at me, he goes, and I was like, and I kept going. I was like, well, it wasn't a murder because the week before, there's a Malone's cost plus in my neighborhood. And so full got fucking like sh- choppered down, right? Because I was going to get tacos at fucking Don Jorge's best I was caught on fucking Berk- Buckner. <clears throat> I'm coming back, and, like, there's, like, ambulances and all this shit, and I see Eric Jordan's, like, sticking out from the air of the fucking, like... Under the, the sheet. little street, yeah, right? There was no sheet yet. And I was like... And I'm, like, a super helpful Oh, those baby. are eights. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me get those sixes. Let me get those... Dude, no, no, no. Those are fresh as fuck right dude, now. Dude, so, like, I see, like, this dude laying down, right? And I'm like... And I didn't see the blood draining out yet. And I'm, like, coming back on my FXR, and I'm coming back, and I'm like, y'all must stop him to help as much. Because, like, I'm one of those guys... If there's if there's a car broke down, this is going to be a death of me. I swear to God. I always stop. Change. I've changed more flat tires for motherfuckers that never appreciate it than I'll ever admit in my life. Yeah. That I'm admitting right now because I'm fucking loaded. But I turn around because I see this motherfucker laid out, sprawled out, right? I turn around and come back, and, like, the EMTs just pulled up. And I was like... Hey man, are you gonna help this guy out? Like, what's going on? We got we. They're like, nah, homie. Like the EMT told me, nah, homie. Yeah. Like that's the neighborhood that I live in. The guy that works for DF DFPD Dallas Fire Department of Dallas or whatever was like, nah, homie. And then at that moment, I knew that motherfucker fucked up, and he yeah. was not gonna come back, and he was dead. So at yeah. that moment, when it, when an EMT says, nah, homie. I did the West Dallas prayer, the little up, down, left, right. I'm not even Catholic, but I knew how to go get some tacos tomorrow. So I was like, up, down, left, right. Put it in the air. God bless you. That That's that's the world we live in, though, man. Dude, it's fucked up. I ain't trying to kill nobody. I'm Hold not what trying did to kill. Say? Hold on. What's this shit going on? I can be drunk, kill a lot of crown, eat some mushrooms. Age, but hold it, hook it up with some mushrooms. Nick, that bike is going down for dates. I feel like Moose is like tagging like all his sponsors right now. Like, <laughs> hey, we get it, dude. You, you're fucking famous. <laughs> Calm down. What is? My dude Eddie is trying to come here and do pot. He's trying to do mushroom podcasts. Which yeah, let's do it. We Eddie, are actually what's up? Let's crack so we're, we're it. like we're doing an end of the year podcast with the fucking. Hey, you're on my crew. live right now. Hit me up with some questions, man. I'm, let's do this shit. We're doing a. Uh, we're doing a ugly sweater mushroom podcast. Hey, should we do? Are we doing a Christmas party? Is there a fast life Christmas party? There is, but I'm uh, not invited. Uh, <laughs> but 
<laughs> no, we we just like like that's figured cool, it out. That's cool. That's cool. And I was like, that's uh, cool. I get more famous people to come to mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, we, Jesse, uh, come to my Christmas party. Fuck Chase. Yeah, fuck me. <laughs> hey, Carlos wouldn't even hit you back. And look, he's on my live, and you got to talk to I, him. Dude, fuck Carlos, right? No. Look, Patty. Look, these are builders. The, the, homies, the homies that I fuck with. Yeah. They hit you and, and Cause like, you don't ask got, for it. Like I brought bridge the gap. I literally, I, I literally, I literally text Carlos and say, "Hey, I Chase, want an exhaust. Chase, I will pay you full retail." Chase, I bridge the gap. We said shit. You ain't talked to me in months, and look what happened. I put it. On, I put you on, homie, and now you ain't trying to invite me to your Christmas party. <laughs> It's all about a Christmas party. We talking about Christmas parties. We we talk we talk drink. Drink. This is about a Christmas party. Oh, what, what did he say? Post Malone edition. Man. Yeah, he's talking about the the mushroom trip that because Post hey. Malone did the. Uh, that white but, boy from Grapevine, he ain't done shit. Yeah, right. Let me know when he smoked cocaine out of a fucking You know he got his butthole. fucking name out of a... Uh, yeah, uh, of a generator? A generator, yeah. yeah. Listen, 36 Chambers, homie, and holler at me. Yeah, get the fuck out of here with that shit. Eddie, uh, Ed's from uh, Temecula. He's a he's Oh, a dude. I'm not mad at Ed. I'm mad so at Posty. Eddie, I'm mad at Posty. <laughs> so, Eddie... He got uh, a cereal named after him. We did a helmet for him, and uh, it was like a... He, he's a conspiracy. Yeah, we'll have a good Christmas party. Hell yeah, homie, we're going to Oliver's Christmas party because Jason ain't inviting us. Fuck that shit. I'm not famous <laughs> enough yet to have more in, invites. Yo, you make, you make, hey, we should get Travis Barker on this shit. What? Yeah. You know him? Yeah. Hey, uh, where's my boy at? My boy fucking uh, Brent. Brent from Majestics. They were homies. My boy Brent. Man. If Travis Barker hasn't been on the Joe Ro- So here's the deal. Hear me Gee, out. A six degrees. Hear me out. Three degrees. Hear me. Three degrees. It yeah. is. This is drunk talk. Brent, hear, hear, hear me, me out right now. Justice Car Club, shout out straight up. Brent, Primo, my homies. So, I love you motherfuckers. I'm talking shit right now. When Rogan came to Texas, when he, when he came to Texas. To Austin, yeah. 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 So, to, Rogan. <laughs> oh, Eddie. Okay, I get you. Temecula, hey, go to. Yeah, you're right. So when Rogan came to Texas, go get tattooed in a fucking Shamrock tattoo. Hit up fucking my boys down there. There, there are guys like when when uh, I saw that Jesse. Uh, hey, I can smoke in here for real. Yeah, yeah. Go I'm ahead. gonna get Sarah real quick. We're I'm gonna keep talking. Shit, I'm right? telling a story. God damn it! And okay. you're gonna walk away. I'm not. I w- can I finish it before yeah, you go walk away? Yeah. No, 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 I'm listening. All right. So I know you're not caring, but uh, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> Look so at all, look, when, look 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 four hundred nine playbacks, motherfucker! It right. keeps going up. When, uh, Sixteen eleven watch time. When Rogan started hanging out with uh, everybody in Austin, and then next thing you know, Jesse James was in some of the pictures. Yeah, with Chappelle and all this shit. With Chappelle and all those guys, I was like, "All right, well, as much as as somebody is in love with the motorcycle industry as I am, I don't want to break Jesse's story." Like Jesse needs to do Rogan. He needs to do Rogan no, story. No, no, he, no, no. Jesse's done a podcast. Uh, no, he hasn't done a podcast. No, he's done a key. Who? He's done a couple, man. I can't remember. Exactly. When Who? I was when I was working for him, Jesse couple, James is a like when when he'll never he'll never do like a real one. When when you know why? When you want to uh, know why? What's his name from fucking uh, Gas Monkey Garage? Uh, Aaron. When no no when Rollins. Richard. When Rollins did Jesse's podcast the first time, Richard did Jesse's podcast. The, he's done it twice. The first time he Which did it, which podcast was it? Uh, Jesse or uh, Joe I, Rogan's? Oh, Joe Rogan. He did Joe Rogan's. So, he didn't do Jesse's. I was like, what? Just what is Jesse? Yeah. Do? So when when Rollins did Jesse's podcast the first time, that was one hundred percent our closest thing to ever being the motorcycle scene that we live in on Rogan's podcast. <laughs> And uh, when he did that podcast, like it, it really spoke to a lot of us in the uh, in the industry because we haven't had a dude speak for us. In that, Richard was the dude. Unfortunately, yes. Fuck him. Agreed. 
Agreed. Yeah. But See, those motherfuckers busted her ass on his stupid ass fucking bike build. And what's he bring to the goddamn party? Did you go to did you go to that party at fucking uh No I didn't. A twelve pack of mineral light? Fuck you. Exactly. I mean, I shouldn't say so that. So this world is full of fucking dudes that that, that like to and say. And they built a low rider. No, no, no. The seventy nine. Co- let me let me say this. This world is full of. They could have done so much with that fucking TV show, and they fucked. It. I'm sorry, Jace. Go ahead. There's so many fucking dudes on this level that are willing to say fuck you. You don't deserve to be there, but they're not fucking doing shit. But I would I would help them. No, no. Why? Why is Jesse not doing more? Why? Why is Jesse's fifty fucking years old? Who? If I was fifty, so is Rogan. So is Rogan. Yeah, but that fool just got his shit. He just got famous. So did Jesse. They've been famous for three years. You gotta talk to Pat. Pat just got famous. (laughs) Pat just got famous. (laughs) There's no fuck. And we're gonna sock chick some food. You got it, you man. You you in it? You doing this thing? Doing great. Look at you over there. Oh, big man. There you go, brother. Ah, uh, all tattered up. The hey, responsibility. Do you like that song? You huh? heard that song? That bodega song? No. Why not? Because I have no idea what song you're talking about. Are you serious? You haven't even said it. You haven't hit a lick. Dude, Pat hates it too, and I like it. Um. They want to talk because it. Oh fuck! How's it go, dude? Help me out. The bodega, the fucking like the the fucking. Hey, does anybody know the bodega song? No one, anyone? Yeah, you got it. Damn, gotta. can't finish it tonight. Connect my boy Ben. Come, I can't read right now. You were talking. Don't it's, worry about them. If you want to fucking, you ever you don't listen to radio? What do you listen to? Uh, Spotify. Okay, what's the last thing that's on Spotify? So, uh, Spotify. I right now I'm in a Kid Cudi. Okay, I'm off. I fuck with that heavy, heavy. Fuck with that. Just a bit. Heavy. I started listening to him, and then uh, uh, an Amazon original came out with him on there, and it made me want to listen to him more. Dude, his shit. I fuck with that. Yeah, one hundred. He's got he's got a vibe that's uh, one hundred percent. I get. You it. listen to Oasis? Yeah, Oasis. Do you karaoke? No. Have you never karaoke? No, I'm too famous for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the funniest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Would I do karaoke with you? One hundred percent. I'm a f- okay. Hey, hey, I'm alive. My homies, I'm alive. What's the bodega song? Sing some brace against Matt. I don't know what the fuck that shit is. I listen to rap, nigga. Oh shit. I listen to rap. I don't. I don't know what the fuck that shit is. Okay, we'll karaoke one. I. I can't 100%. believe this went on for three hours. I feel bad for the people that are Longer than three hours. Yeah. They're fucking, like, not getting. Oh, dude, okay, so Nicki Minaj is on this song. Sing some brass. Oh, BMC. Sweat. What's up, man? It's Motorcycle Club. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> I put on my bodega to go to the bodega. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's super monotone. If it doesn't have a lotes hey, or a fucking hey, is there a taco spot in Waxahachie where you guys? No, in? they just fucking uh, closed. We have Waffle House in Buffalo. Do you got a B Dubs out here? Yeah. Oh, it's on. A, okay, so my my homegirl Alexis, she races, she's race Patron, whatever. When she, what's up? What's up, Sway? You only a Lester Peabody? Hell no, Von Harlow. I don't know this shit. Why did we let this go on this long? I'm giving you the opportunity. <laughs> this is not an opportunity. <laughs> Dude, I'm just here for you. I, I am at your service. Dude, people are talking shit on our... Damn, can't finish the thought. No shit. No shit. No shit, Donnie Hill, you fucker. I'm sorry, Donnie Hill. I didn't mean Donnie's that. Donnie's a good dude. Donnie, I'm sorry. You're right. We can't finish the thought. We've been drinking. And, Should we uh, go to Buffalo? Dog. 
<laughs> hey, Liz, I'll never sing around you. I'll never sing around you again. <laughs> Eight. Oh, thank you, Patty. Bia. Bia. You know, some, uh, the, bodega. the bodega song is Bia. No, no, no. When I when I go get street tacos, what happened to our live? Is shut off? No, it's there. Uh, uh, you shut it off on the. Phone. No, it, uh, the world is a. It, I have a, the world I, is a vampire. We should shut this off. You ready? We should. We, we should cut it off. All right. Hey, <clears throat> Jason, it was a pleasure to be on this podcast with you. <laughs> I absolutely enjoyed every second minute of it. Yeah. Look at my hat. Looking like Ti right now. Fuck that shit. I appreciate every one of you that joined me live. Please fucking check this shit out. It was a good time. Uh, check out my boy Jace, Fast Life Garage. He does good shit. Fucking amazing paint. Get your helmets painted by him. He does good shit. Bobby, thank you. Matt the Cat. All my homies. Patty, well, thank you for my boy. All my boys, we've been. I'm sorry. We've been partying. Thanks for joining the live. We're signing out. Love you, baby. Is what it is. Dude. Dude. That was a good one. Fucking stoked, man. That was a good I, one. I, I is it off of that shit? No, we're still going, man. I, I, I'm a... Uh, All right, let me... Hey, keep, keep that shit going. No, I got to fucking stop it. Oh, let's stop it. Tell tell everybody how much you love motorcycles. Look, look how fucked up I am. Is this hilarious? <laughs> okay, I'm stopping right now. Yeah, stop. Look it. at the camera real quick.